Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? How are we doing today? Um, well, I was gonna play a little bit of Helldivers, but since we do need to do Corrupted Weapons today, I'm like, let's just do Remnant 2. Helldivers is also having a lot of issues right now, so we're gonna wait for those to get fixed. And I would like to rank all the Corrupted Weapons. I mentioned that I wanted to do that, and I think I'm finally gonna be able to. I got the Corrupted Nebula today, and since I have all of them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fight three bosses... With each corrupted weapon, we'll, we'll we'll select builds for each, and we'll test it, see how it works, and then at the end, we'll try and rank them. This is a really, really hard list to rank, because they're all either really good or really terrible. <laughs> so it'll be fun. What's up, Broken? Good to see you, man. I haven't seen you in a while. What's up, Limpy? Just eating dinner. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. So yeah, we're going to try this out, and uh, I, I'm i probably going to use the completely busted and broken Energized Net Coil for the areas, just to get to the bosses, because that's what I want to test on. It was really fun anyway, too. But uh, I need to test Corrupted Nebula real quick first, because I just got it. I haven't been able to do anything with it, and uh, I just wanted to see the damage real quick, because I know it was, it, people were saying it was completely broken. What's up, Chia G? What's up, Oblivion? What's up, Jamie? How's it going, guys? Good to see you. Um, the blast thing was what we were doing, I think. It was just upgrade blast damage real quick. I don't know if it was better to go crit or not. Oh, where's my detonation trigger? Ah, there it is. Okay, burn of the gambler. Um, singe drink. And then burn of destroyer. And I don't know what the last one is. Ah, oh, I can't remember. I don't think it matters that much. We'll just do mod damage for now. And then mutator was, I think, fail safe repeated. People were saying that was good on it. All right, this is my first test with this gun. Acid damage and feedback. Oh, you want to put feedback on Nebula? I mean, I guess that's a good one too. What do you think about the hour two trailer? Seems to me they've changed the art style. Okay. For those wondering about the art style, they I watched the full stream. I have all kinds of notes that I'm putting in the video. The Outward 2 trailer looks different in terms of art style because they are taking the game from Unity and they are now making it in Unreal Engine instead of Unity because Unity did that stupid uh, policy change and so now they can't use Unity. That is why the art style looks slightly different. It looks, it's very similar, but it looks slightly different. Any news about DLC 2? Uh, they have not released anything yet. Not yet. Dragon's Dogma character? Uh, I, I do have one, yeah. How does this work, though? How do I know if it's going to create the bug? Oh, no, it needs to deal weak spot damage. You can't run Burden of Death. Okay. So do I run, like... Because I think it has to hit weak spot damage to do that, doesn't it? Detonate active nanobots. Weak spot hits create nanobots. That's what I thought. Alright, so I messed that up a little bit. And I think that should work. <laughs> okay. Well, that was freaking dumb. That only works on bosses, though. You're not going to, like, spam this on ads. Blimey! That's crazy! <laughs> what the heck? Oh, wow. Huh. I gotta try this on a boss. What's up, Ains? How's it going? The corrosion stacks? Okay. Hey, that's so stupid. All right, well, we'll definitely try that out. Um, let me save that build real quick. All right. Anybody have a preference? What boss do you want to start? We're going to do adventures. We're going to do uh, full adventures with each weapon. And I think it'll do them Winter King first today. What am I doing? Game's one of the best games ever made. What's up, Daniel? I think so. I like it quite a bit. We'll switch back to status until we reach the boss, though. Because it's going to be super easy to get to the bosses. Start with cancer? I can't do that. Can't do that. 
We'll do Once Your King. Everybody likes Once Your King anyway. Hopefully we get Sunken Witch. That'll be a decent test for the Corrupted Nebula. So, I, people were telling me it's bugged out, though. What's the bug? Like, so I can avoid using it and then use it to see the difference. I don't know if it's... They were saying it was bugged out and doing more damage, but I don't know. I've got at least a generalized plan for all the weapons. The only one that I'm going to have trouble with is Cube Gun because it just straight up sucks. So I don't know how I'm going to do that one yet. Oh yeah, and I don't have Nebula. That sucks. Bummer. I got to get that again. Maybe I'll do Talrotha next. What's up, Endless? We're going to wipe the areas. Test on bosses. I was going to do a full run with this build here, and then I was like, ah, it's just going to be too easy. It's going to be too easy. We'll, we'll save it for another day if I want to do it. We'll save it for another day. I already know it's going to be a joke, so. Let's see what, uh, can I even, I can't do it on him, though, can I? Because he doesn't have a weak spot. So what's the mod do if I don't have anything? Oh, it just don't work? Okay. Dang, bro. Cubes does not play around. Alright, calm down there, buddy. What's this is going on, Unreal Engine? Oh, I was talking about Outward 2. Yeah, Outward 2, they, uh, they, I believe they made the first game on Unity. That's what it sounded like from what he said. And, uh, they can't make it on Unity anymore because of Unity's bad policy changes. So from what I heard, they're putting it on Unreal Engine instead. Hence why it looks slightly different graphically. All right, let's get Sunken Witch. Everybody cross your fingers for Sunken Witch. It's the only one. Blow King would be terrible. I guess Blow King might work. I haven't had Blow King in a while, though, so they'll probably give me Blow King. Yeah, I, I, I knew it, dude. I was like, it has to be Blow King. I haven't had him in a while. Come on. Had a cube vortex drain Corrupted Boy earlier. On Yasha? That sucks. Did they ever fix, uh... Did they ever fix Vortex? I know that one day it was straight up bugged and it was just infinitely sucking you into the enemy. That has to have been a bug. I'm convinced. I'm just worried about... I really am worried about Cube Gun, dude. I have no idea how we're going to make a build out of that. It's it's easily the worst corrupted weapon. Like, it's, it's zero, right? It's the bottom of the list. It has to be. Top of the list is probably, like... Corrupted Savior? Maybe. I don't know. Meridian's pretty good. It's not fixed. I was suckered into it. Ah, oh, is that fixed? That sucks. Yeah, that needs fixed. That's a really bad bug. It makes uh, Vortex almost unbearable. It's about the Hour 2 announcements. Uh, they have a trailer for the Hour 2. I would recommend you go watch it. It's pretty awesome. The will not be out for a while, though. It's pretty much guaranteed. They're, uh, Nine Dot Studios is making three total games currently. I don't think... Uh, no, they're, they're releasing three total games. I think one of them they weren't actually making. They are just helping to release it or something like that. And uh, Outward 2 is the last of the three that they're releasing. The first one is a roguelite. They said it has similar aspects to Remnant 2, funnily enough, in his stream. So that's very cool to hear. That'll be kind of neat. He said you could at least compare them in some ways. Which sounds very interesting. And he it said it is a roguelite. So. He has peaked my interest. I think that was the first one that was releasing. 
All right, first build. Let's do... Uh, we could try and see if Nebula will work. The problem is One True King doesn't really have weak spots. So is this a good test? We might want to pick a different weapon. Yeah, let's pick a different weapon. What other... We need like a... Uh, oh, you know what? Corrupted Arbalest would be really good for One True King. Let's, uh... Let's do that one. That's just like really, really good. What's up, Six? What's up, Gabe? How's it going, bro? Give you a bill for the cube gun. It's not really for it. But it can help with the bone saw. That's what I did with it, too, is I used it with the bone saw. But I don't know. It just felt really bad. Alright, we'll use straight up Archon. And we'll go Summoner just for the explosion damage. The mod explodes, I think, right? Power of the issues corrupted, increasing fire rate. Each disc will explode. Yeah. So it explodes. And we're going to use Detonation Trigger for this one. Instead of that, we'll use... Blasting Cap Ring, obviously. And... Explosion, Explosion. Singe Drain would be good for Explosions. If I can get Mod Regen back. Hmm. How's this on ammo? I don't know. Ooh, uh, Burden of the Gambler. Yeah, I don't think this weak spot's so Burden of the Gambler. That's pretty... That's actually a pretty standard mod setup. Um, we'll do Void Heart, because that sounds like a cool idea. I don't usually run that very much. Mod cost decreased. Mod damage. And... Mod duration, actually, with this one. Funnily enough. I already have Amplitude, so I keep that. Um... I do need Endurance. And then we'll take off... What do I need to take off? Helmet and... Take off that whole set and we'll run the standard... Beautiful armor that I like. Alright, I think that's a pretty set up build right there. What about... Mutator? I might want to put Harmonizer on this one, actually. No, put Harmonizer on the other one. Feedback. I bet you that works on here. Oh, I bet you that works. Um, Explosions. We're gonna run... Starshot? No, 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 no. Helix. We're on Helix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harmonizer. Helix. That'll work really, really well. We'll do explosion build on that. Alright, that'll be our build for one tricking. What did I miss on that trade point? Oh, Siphoner. No, no, no. Do I have fitness? Good. Where's my uh, stone? There it is. What's up, KP? How's it going, bro? Are we having a good weekend? I am indeed. I wonder if it'd be cool if they allowed us to double up on the archetype, use the same in both slots. We talked about that one day. We were talking about if they could, uh, like, give us an item that did that. Is this Void Heart bugged? That's interesting. That is a visual bug with the Void Heart. I've never seen that before. I wonder if I just fixed it. Huh. I guess we get a purple aura. I mean, I don't really care. Doesn't bother me at all. Alright, what's he got? Alright, I cannot get out of that. Ooh, it's a good spot. Well, I, my mods came back okay. And then if I use Helix, they come back, basically. Yeah, that's not bad at all. It makes it a little bit more difficult to tell when my... Immunity is active, but it doesn't matter that much. Oh, that was really good right there. It's running low on ammo a little bit. Watch this. Can I hit him? Oh, I missed. You know what's weird, though? 
Uh, I didn't like this gun at first. It ended up being one of my favorite corrupted weapons. I really, really like this one. Gosh darn, I keep falling off the dumb. It's like really, really good. Dude, what the heck? <laughs> my guy keeps falling right off of it. I don't know what the deal is. Stand back. Okay. I wonder if I can hit him from up here. Uh, kind of. If I aim at the ceiling, can I hit him? Need more ammo. Kind of shoots a little slow. I remember it shooting a little bit faster than this. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's fitness. I have fitness on. I keep dodging off. I was going to say, usually I don't have this issue of dodging that much, but... Fitness will do that to you. Oh boy. Watch this, ready? Oh, I killed myself with the the explosion. Okay, I need to take uh kinship. I don't I didn't realize I didn't have that. That's fine. I wanted to do redo that anyway. That sucked. I uh was dodging constantly. I need to take off fitness. Every time I dodged, I was almost off of the whole map. Kinship and well, the, the build feels really good though. Like, my ability to get my mod regen back is really, really good. Alright, that should fix it. Let me save it now, because I feel better about that. Been enjoying the mechs and Helldivers? I have been, yeah. I've been trying it a couple of times. They're terrible against bots, but they're pretty fun against bugs. They're pretty fun. This actually seems relatively good for Blow King's fight because no matter where you hit the thing, it just bounces and at least it's one of the enemies, you know? It'll hit the, the orb or it'll hit the big bloater guy. Look at this. It's doing a lot of damage. Does run out of ammo pretty fast, though, because of that. This is crazy. I had no idea it was this good for Bloki. I'm gonna just shoot the orb a little bit. Ah, oh, my word. I fell off again. Fine. I'll probably actually do more damage here then. Definitely shoots very, very slow. Very, very slow. That wasn't an issue the other day when I was using its ads, but. I already know Helix is busted, so that's cool. Wow, that's actually a really good Blow King gun. Like a really, really good Blow King gun. I'm going to try this to get some of the adds. This feels pretty good. It does a ton of damage and it gets the mod energy back fast. Just runs out of ammo so quickly. Do I have anything on for that? I wonder if I could take uh, ammo reserves. Probably help a lot. Playing R2 100 plus hours with mostly glass cannon builds. Just starting to mess around with this tank build. No need to dodge. Yeah, tank builds are a blast, man. You can get into a whole nother territory in this game when you start going into tank builds. There's so much you can do. Like, you can do mod regen with the tank build. You can do straight up mod damage with the tank build. All kinds of really weird, wacky stuff. Yes, uh, Summoner actually provides a mod damage buff as well as an explosive damage buff. Unfortunately, the summons themselves are still incredibly weak. 
And so, funnily enough, after the latest patch, they tried to make summons better so you can use them for damage. And they are now just a waste of space. <laughs> you just don't even summon them. Yeah. I mean, they still do a lot for your build. Like, you can mess with them, summon them, and get... You know, they still batter. They can help out, but you don't need to summon them. It's the passives from the the class perks that we actually need, not the summons themselves. Now, occasionally I will use them for aggro. They can be very helpful for aggro. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. It should be fine, though. Maybe not. Don't have the stamina to dodge as many times. Might be able to kill him, though. Helix is doing a lot of damage there. That's kind of scary. Looks like as long as you dodge three times, you can avoid it, though. Feedback is nuts right now. Yeah, feedback got a crazy buff unintentionally because of Archon's changes. It's on, like, every mod build that I've seen. Build is much less effective. Not against bosses, it seems. Because you can't get your mod energy back as fast whenever the enemies die. Where'd you come from, nerd? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't mess with the, uh, the puker. Yeah, boss fights, it's crazy, because the mod comes back so quickly. Alright. I can't hit him. That's cool. Good location for him, I guess. That's why I needed that kinship. This thing is incredibly inconsistent in where it hits, so you have no idea if it's going to hit you or not. We're running Meridian with a great mod regen. Not having to shoot actual ammo in days. Yeah, that's pretty nice, huh? I'm going to use, uh, I think, Corrupted Meridian. I, I have no idea what boss yet. I haven't decided. <laughs> What's up, Esteban? Void Hard's weird, man. Look at this. I just have a natural purple effect on my character. It actually looks really cool. Look at this. I kind of wish it was here normally. It's pretty fun. wonder if fire rate would have been better than mod duration. Can't tell. I don't think it matters that much. Basically, one use of Helix gives me my mod energy back and my other gun, so that's cool. So, like, essentially how it works is if I fire a full clip from Corrupted Meridian, or Corrupted Arbalist, I get half my mod energy back. And then I use Helix, like, two or three times, and then get it back the rest of the way. Or I could shoot once or twice of this, too. How crazy is that? That's a lot more effective than I expected it to be. I guess I hadn't really tried this with Detonation Trigger yet. I was only using it as support on my uh, Sorrow build the other day. Used all my shards to get other guns during the event, so waiting to see how to run uh, Corrupted Meridium. Oh, it's crazy good, dude. Corrupted Meridian is actually just crazy good. Helix is straight up nuts, though. Haha, <laughs> I didn't even see that guy there. I like the buff to Chaos Gate, but also... The one reason I didn't run Chaos Gate most of the time is because of its effects. It's kind of weird. But now I have to run it, you know what I mean? I'm forced to enjoy it. Wonder, see, the thing is, I can't kill the green orbs with the Corrupted Arbalist, though. That part I'm not a big fan of. I wish it would bounce to those. 
I guess it doesn't consider it an enemy. I need more ammo again. I literally need to buy more ammo out of boxes. I haven't bought any in multiple runs. It's been a while. Just destroyed him. It's actually easier to just aim at a wall because it hits him better. Look at that. What the heck, dude? The crit is crazy. That's nuts. That's insane. I don't even need that, really. Be nice for my ammo, though. Earlier, I was using a tank healer and fought Nightweaver with Empathy Apocalypse for 35 minutes. No way, dude. Did you really? Oh, I guess because she could heal herself by uh, grabbing you, can't she? But she could survive it. That's funny. I think it heals her, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I got grabbed by her. I don't understand this gun sometimes because it does chunks of health all the way until they have zero health and then it doesn't kill them for five shots. It's very, very odd. It's It did it last time I tested this weapon too. It does so much damage and then they have like three health left and it won't kill them. I don't know why. They should die anyway because they have DOT damage on them. Yeah, it does? Okay. Don't need to understand the gun, you just need to shoot with it? This is a very fair point. That's, uh, the majority of my Remnant 2 experience is just not understanding things and just shooting. You, you'll figure it out second. You just start blasting, bro. He not dead. Oh, I was about to say. Having the same glitch with other guns as well? It's only been after the latest patch, is the thing. Watch this. Ew, ew. Oh, you guys gonna come in and do some damage? I don't think so. I need ammo back. Nice. At least it's not just me, huh? Shoot first, ask questions later. Fair enough. What's up, Magneto? Cool Sheen, my favorite corrupted gun. Oh, you like this one a lot, do you? I wasn't sure if there's a lot of people to use this one. Thanks for the donation, man. Uh, I like it quite a lot, too. I mean, I like the change to the regular Arbalist, is the thing. Like, before, Arbalist really sucked. It was definitely on the lower end of the totem pole. It just didn't feel very good. This mod was kind of... They changed the tracking on it, so now it actually latches really well. And the mod on it's very, very good for uh, explosion damage. And then this one is basically the same gun, but with more ammo, which feels way better. I like a lot of ammo. Annoying frog. There's no chance. No chance that she just shot me straight through that wall. She definitely shot me through the wall, right? Like, it wasn't just me that saw that. I got shot through the brick wall. Alright. I mean, if we're gonna cheat, I got, I got some cheating builds I could throw on. What armor are you wearing? I got the uh, the red crimson guard armor. It is the best armor in the game. With the bandit gloves, gives you a medium weight. It is my favorite fashion. That and full bruiser set are the only two I've been using lately.
I'd like to use Engineer Bore, but... The problem with Engineer's Armor is that it only looks good full Engineer Armor. You know? So... I just don't have a lot of builds that use that. Unless I go, like, Engineer Class Main, <laughs> I don't tend to use it that much. Alright, give me, uh, Red Prince. They gave me Red Prince. As I said it, too. Awesome. Finally got Savior today. Awesome. No payoff. Congrats, man. Kind of miss set bonuses from R1. Yeah, I do, too. I do, too. They made that game pretty unique. Uh, yeah, the technician. That's the engineer armor. That's what I was trying to say. <sighs> that stuff right here. Yeah, technician stuff. Not the not the space worker. Not that one. Full bruiser superiority. Exactly. Exactly. Let's see, engineer chest piece, little helmet. I it did little helmet and engineer chest piece and legs do look really good. I like that. I do. I've used that once or twice. I'm struggling with hardcore veteran runs. Always use ritualist and tank. Uh, yeah, that's the best way that I did it. Um, it's still tough. It's still tough. But, uh, Ritualist makes it a lot easier, for sure. Yeah, Hardcore, unfortunately, is like... Y you just don't know. Because you could die to anything at any time. Falling off a cliff. Getting hit one too many times when you weren't ready for it, you know? Things like that. I've gotten really lucky, and I've never had to do Hardcore... Or I've never died in hardcore, but I've also only done hardcore twice. I did it once in co-op, the first time I did it, and then I beat it right before the patch in solo. I came really close to dying in that one, though. The Red Prince almost stunlocked me to death. I had a really weird interaction with him where he hit me with his sword, and then he hit me with the sword like four more times. And I just couldn't get out of it. Uh, that's the pots over there, I think. Which means I need to go this way. Set bonuses were good, but with the addition of the three returning sets... Yeah, yeah I mean, you don't want too many stats, but... I did, like, uh... I just... Okay, guys. The Helix mod does not activate instantly. I don't even know if it was Helix there that was messing me up. But I switched my gun, and then I, I think I have low casting speed. Yeah, I might want to put on a relic for that. I activated the the mod, and then I couldn't shoot it because I, I wasn't scoped. Otherwise, I would have had that. Tried the black hole build I made? I have not tried it out. I did look at it, though. Closest I got was the last map. Would you die to in the last map? The last map of Root Earth is such a pain sometimes. There's the flower enemies that can easily just insta-kill you. They're, they have such a painful moveset. There's the twisty vine dudes that'll throw a black red orb at you that just insta-kills you as well. Those guys are tough. The service pistol reminds me of when I made a build around. The service pistol's fun. It's not one of the better sidearms, but it's a lot of fun. Just a cooler one to shoot. I get tired of running Tech 22 every time because that's my favorite, so I try to branch out a little bit here and there. Look at Helix just pop off, dude. Helix is so nuts. If I was to take a mod for every explosion build, that would be it. It would be in every single one. There's a lot of guns, a lot of, like, boss weapons that have really good explosive mods. That is the best non-boss weapon explosive mod. It's so unbelievably good. They're hiding on the chandeliers a lot right now. Oh, it's because it's Gilded Chambers, that's why. 
on the Bruin dungeon, they don't usually hide up there as much. I see a lot more on the ground. You can use Anguish? Yeah, you can use Anguish too. That one is very, very strong right now. After the change, the explosive damage might actually be better than Helix. The regen definitely is. Because Anguish's mod regen with feedback is just stupid. It's just infinite. It just stays up forever. Crazy. There you are. See, what I have to do is I have to switch weapons. Then activate the mod, then shoot it. It's like a three-step process. Versus where I was just sticking to the Arbalist and I was just spraying. So I choked, is what I did. Definitely the most annoying thing about this gun is that you're going to hit yourself with it a lot. Just because of the bouncing projectiles. I'm eager to see what it does to Red Prince, because it's actually a pretty decent fight for bouncing projectiles. Yeah, Anguish is... has been terrible since it released. Uh, I just made a build. I posted a video a couple days ago about it. I would go watch that if you want to make it good. There's only one way to make Anguish good in my mind, and that is to spam its mod. It's They finally fixed its mod damage, so now it's crazy good. It's crazy, crazy good. We did a full run with it, and it just annihilates everything. It might... I don't want to say it's bugged, because I can't confirm that. But me and Sorrow were noticing something really weird, where on dummies, it gets a max of 652 damage with the crit. But on bosses, it does 652 damage, and then all of a sudden, spikes to 1600 damage. Makes no sense. It just all of a sudden goes up to, like, thousands of damage on the crit. And, uh, I believe it's because the more spikes in the enemy, the more damage it ends up getting. But that's not actually a mechanic of the gun. At least it doesn't say that. But that's how it was working. Haven't played Remnant in a while. Are the bows still good? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're great. Crescent Moon's still the best, man. Yeah, it just exponentially makes it do more damage, which is really weird. It makes it super powerful, obviously. What are we doing? Yeah. He's on me like crazy. Tri the trouble here is that if I blow the thing up, I'm going to hit myself in the face. I didn't think about that. Pretty darn good start. I mean, if I hadn't gotten hit, I probably would have gotten really, really fast. So. I wonder if I can hit him here. Stunned him. Watch this, watch this. Ready? I was trying to stun him, but... <laughs> wasn't working. You can kind of use it to find him. Amplitude doing me dirty in this fight, bro. Amplitude doing me dirty. I just instantly kill his minions. That's awesome. Yeah, he just instantly kills minions. That's so cool. 
It's actually really good for Red Prince. Anywhere you shoot, they just bounces to him and insta kills him. How awesome was that? That was so good. The problem is, is because of amplitude, when I'm in the fire phase, I just get blasted over and over. Red Prince, when you walk in with his armor, should say nice fit. Yeah, he should. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Your opinion, what was the most annoying item to get in this game? Now, for me, I didn't have to get Anguish. Uh, I had somebody who already did the quest, and they invited me to join them. So I didn't have to do that. I would say that probably is the most annoying item. But pretty much anything that has to do with Nightweaver's web is pretty bad. And I think for a lot of people, Nightweaver's grudge can be a real pain in the butt to get. Because you have to get Nightweaver and Yesha to spawn. And then if Yesha spawns... Or not Yesha, but you have to get one specific dungeon to spawn in Yesha. So it's not... Like, it's very doable, but it can be real annoying. And I know a lot of people have been struggling with that one. I know Six was trying to get it the other day. I don't know if he ended up getting it. Oh, Tarnish Ring, though. You're right, I forgot about that one. Yeah, Tarnish Ring is the worst. The RNG on that is really bad. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely go to Tarnish Ring then, wouldn't it? I just now got Tarnish Ring, and that's only because Sorrow helped me get it. I've still never had that guy active. Not one time. I got Tarnished yesterday and nearly had a heart attack. Nice. What's up, bottle of whiskey? Yeah, I completely forgot about that. I just blocked it from my memory because it was such a horrible... And checking that guy so often. Savior and Bandmate? Yeah, Savior can be a pain to get to. That is the, you know, the hardcore one. Did he just kick? That was so disrespectful. See, look, right there. 59-59. Three times in a row, and he has one HP. There's something weird going on in the game. Enemies can have one HP and take zero damage. They, like, get an immunity phase or something. It's a very consistent at this point, so I, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Did he die? Yeah, he died. This game have DLC? Yes, it has one DLC at the moment. It has two more that'll eventually be out, but that's not out yet. Saw the hour two trailer from your Discord today. Went nuts. Yeah, dude. It looks so good. It looks so good. If we get time and anybody's here at the end of the stream that wants to check it out, I'll go, uh, we can go talk about it. Cause it's, it looks so good. It looks so good. They did confirm for anyone who like is excited for hour two, there is no fast travel and there is no mounts. They confirmed both. There are pack mules to carry your stuff for you, but there are no mounts. They are keeping it almost identical to the first game. Just adding a whole bunch more mechanics like dual wielding, uh, stuff like that. Which is great to hear because that's what I like about the first game. They are making the game more dense though. It will be way, way more dense. Uh, you can already tell from the trailer. I did see your Spore Balloon build, yeah. Yeah, Richos is straight up OP. It is straight up OP. I have the build that I'm going to be clearing areas with. It's just... I don't know if status will ever be balanced again because of how dumb Ritual is. A lot of it has to do with Energized Net Coil being completely broken right now. But yeah, look, 59, 59, 59, zero HP. Something going on. I don't know what it is. Dragon's Dogma 2, no mount. I like a game that has no mounts, though. You know, like, we've talked about it a lot of times. Is like, it'd be cool if Outward had mounts, but at the same time, 
It's fun because it doesn't. You know what I mean? The runes look awesome in hour two. They do. They do. Hope they nerf it. Makes the game a joke. It does. <laughs> that they can't really nerf it though. It's a thing because there's just so many items in there to buff it. It does make the game pretty easy at times. This man dodged my bouncing bullet. I don't even know how you do that. It's your pay to win class? Yeah, exactly. Buy the DLC, pay to win class. Dragon's Dogma 2 looks so good. Yes, yeah, see, I did play the first. Dragon's Dogma 2 looks great. Uh, it's it's going to be crazy. The, what they've already shown gives you enough gameplay to play that game for over 500 hours, I think. From just what they've shown, which is nuts. Notice they didn't show any dodge rolls? Mmm, that's a good point. Uh, there will be dodging, like, in the first game, though. You could already tell the stagger worked the exact same as it did in the, did in the first game. I assume the dodge roll will. Yeah, I don't like Firestorm. Um, when running co-op, I've run Firestorm solo many times. It's you know it's really strong, but I, I agree. I think if you're playing co-op and you're not specifically on comms with your buddies, being like, "Hey, I'm gonna run Firestorm for this," just letting you know, you're being a jerk. You know what I mean? Like you know that it, they're gonna get caught in it. It's pretty frustrating. No, I haven't. I haven't looked at it. No, I probably will soon though. If I see a firestormer in co-op, I join Rude Doctor. There you go. Nice. No, I have not messed with that at all yet. I've been busy with some other stuff. I'm working on my outward trailer overview, and then I was finishing up that uh, tier list video the other day. Did not get time yet. Then mechs dropped and held Ivers and I had to check those out. Man, this is such a crazy weapon for one true king. The bouncing off his hammer just makes it so easy to kill him. Amazing ag clear on top of that. And using its mod reloads its gun. Or the bullets. Perfection. What's up, Frederick? And that, my friends, is the beauty of Corrupted Arvalist. I don't know. I don't know how to rank that one because it's so good. But it's, like, situationally good, you know what I mean? It's, it's not going to be good in every fight. I feel like that's an easy A tier. It's a very good weapon.
Just a very, very good weapon. Oh, it's so much fun, too. The armor's so good? Yeah, the armor looks fantastic. Very, very good. It's weird, because, like, all of the mods that are duration-based, they last a long time, weren't that good up until this update, and now they're all pretty good. Funny how that works sometimes, I guess. Bullet Weaver and Arbalist? I have not, actually. That could be a very good idea, though. What's up, Hunter? Saw you live. Don't know if you were talked about it yet, but what are your thoughts on Hour 2 reveal? Are you hyped? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hyped. Uh, I made a announcement about it on the channel, and I posted it in my Discord. I've not been able to make the video on it yet, but I am working on it. It is very exciting. I am honestly kind of angry because I can't play the game yet. <laughs> it's not out for a long time, and I'm very upset because it looks awesome. Let's do either Ravager or... Yeah, that works. We'll do, we'll do uh, Corruptor. Um, what weapon, though? That's the question. I guess it depends on what boss we get first. Okay, there's Corrupted Arbalist. What a bomb. Really, really good. Or what a what a banger. Not a, what a bomb. Alright, let's just wipe everything. Get to the boss. Easy peasy. Yeah, it, it looks absurdly good. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Whenever it drops, that's the only thing I'll be playing for... Probably a year. Not even kidding. It'll be interesting to see if it gets more people covering it. You know, more people playing it. it. It literally looks almost identical to the first game. So if you don't like the first game, I I doubt you like the next one. But it's so exciting. Like, Trey Montaigne, the ice area, Wendigos are back, Yetis that are, like, with the Wendigos. Enchanting is going to be crazy since we're going to Trey Montaigne. They have, like, really powerful enchants. It's going to be so cool. Passive mod regen ring also works with duration buff. Oh, what's it called? Um, gosh darn, I don't know the name of it. It's the little bejeweled thing. Yeah, they said from his live stream the, that the CEO did, but they, basically he said that it's very, it's, it's outward too. It is outward, a sequel. Um, and the main changes are going to be to try and get it to be a lot less janky than the first. And character customization is greatly improved. That was one of the biggest things they were working on. What'd you say about uh, status being OP? I don't. I don't know what you were talking about. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand what you were saying. That just confuses me. Clearly, it's it's too weak. It needs to be buffed. Not even strong enough, dude. If it requires any amount of effort to play the game, it just needs a buff. It just, honestly. It just needs a buff, man. Energizing that coil is always all all over the place. The only weapon OP is anguish? Yeah, totally. Five K crit! What? How'd he do that? Guess we were 50 years in the events of Outward 1. Yeah, he confirmed that in his live stream as well. It's just 50 years in the future. He did say this. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. He said in his live stream that because of the consequences of the first game being 50 years in the future, the Immaculates from the first game are actually trying to integrate themselves into society because of Soroborians, and that is part of the story. How cool is that? So we'll get to see all kinds of stuff like that. Well, at least that's over. Will we ever find Ford in R2? Yeah, it'll be in DLC. Yeah, that'll most likely be in DLC stuff. 
Why does it make me do that? Yeah, very... I have a whole bunch of stuff written down that I wrote down from his stream. That he was talking about. All kinds of really interesting things. I will say this. He's very excited for his roguelike game, though, too. Probably more so. He was acting like that was going to be super cool. Like I said, he said it, he compared it to Remnant 2, which I was very surprised about. I'll see if there is an actual comparison, but who knows. What rings you running? I can show you. The rings are Burden of Destroyer, Ahane, Bisected, and Timekeepers. Timekeepers with Energized Net Coil is not any more bugged. It's not bugged. But due to how it works, it increases the damage the Energized does. So that's how you get those stupid high numbers right there. I just gotta get to a boss and figure out what I want to use for it. I, I was thinking Corrupted Nebula, but the problem is I need weak spots for Corrupted Nebula to be good. So I may actually have to use, like... Sorrow's always good. I do have that Sorrow build. So Nine Dots Company is... They're the ones who made Outward. Um, that was their, their first big game. Oh, it's Chantry? Nah, I have no idea what I'm gonna use. They are designing their going to release three different games soon um one of them is he called it a roguelite essentially I, I don't know how roguelite it is but he's at one point someone asked if it was somewhat similar to remnant 2 and he said it it has similarities yeah i think it was called uh crap it's in let me let me look it up it's in my discord someone sent it to me i can't remember exactly what the game is called It was like ever ever fall or something like no that doesn't sound right um where is it at wither bloom it's called wither bloom i think that's the one i believe that's the roguelite one uh the problem is the trailer they showed for it gives you zero information so i have no idea if it's going to be good or not it's just not it's a nothing trailer it's all cinematic so you have no idea which is fine. It's, like, way too early to know anyway, but... I was kind of interested in that one, and there's just nothing in the trailer. There's a link down below in the description, and my, uh, my Discord is down there. Need a way to farm Corrupted Shards. Need 20, 23 of them. Dang. Yeah, they're really hard to farm when the event's not here. I know a lot of people were complaining because the event didn't last very long. I kind of agree. It was only here for... If you... Like, for me, I was busy with other stuff, so I really only got to play it two or three days. I assume most people didn't have time to play it more than a couple hours. What do we use on just a chantry? I guess sorrow. Sorrow would work. None of the the main weapons are gonna work that well. Richest Prime triggers the cooldown of Energized Net Coil, but not its effect. Um, I think so. Let me think about that. Triggers its cooldown, but not its effect. Yes. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Now we're defending the stream and the eve of the release. Yeah, probably. Probably. I'm not going to lie that I watched a trailer and it made me excited to go play regular hour again. Or not regular, but the first one. I was kind of pumped. I do need to do that modded gun run. That sounded fun. We'll do it eventually. I can't start anything new until Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out, though. That'll be, uh... That'll be on the schedule for a, a while. I imagine several weeks we'll be playing that in a row. Bad thing about the event as well is that you're locked to only holding the tent. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. Why didn't they just let us have however many? I don't know.
Got to finish Liza P. Dude, that game's good. I, I raged so much on that game. Most games that have a deflecting system, I end up raging on. So I'm not very good at it. But it is really fun. Hype Forever 2. Heck yeah, Crash. Basically, it spreads the DLTs, but you can't do multiple explosions. Yeah, yeah. It, it used to be where you could, I think. It used to be where you could. All right, let's figure out what gun we want to use. We have Corrupted Affiliate, which is going to suck. So let's not use that. Corrupted Savior would be fine. Let's save that one as well. Actually, Corrupted Savior would be really good for this. I do have a Corrupted Savior build already. No, it wasn't that good for Twisted. Let's do... Let's do the Sorrow build. How about that? It's already it's already up and running. What happened to my Sorrow build? No, it's one of these, I think. Corrupted Nebula? Service Pistol? Here it is. Corrupted Sorrow. The cube gun? Nah, dude. Cube gun's gonna be the last one we do, because it's so trash. It's gonna be so trash, dude. I'm trying to make things easier, not harder, man. Reminds me of Bloodborne a lot. Yeah, pretty much everybody compared Liza P to Bloodborne. I, w I would as well, at least in some aspects. Theme-wise, it's pretty similar. Well, yeah, the initial cast does the proc. I got you. He said a trash gun versus a trash boss. Well, see, the problem is using a trash gun makes the trash boss really hard. Which sucks. He took, like, no damage. Oh, I must have closed at the last second. That sucks. Not keeping his face open very long, is he? Yo! That was kind of crazy, though, wasn't it? Did I not just delete half his health bar in an instant? That was kind of wild. Unfortunately, you got me with madness, and uh, it's killing me. Hey, Sorrow's nuts, man. For bosses like that, yeah. You know what the weird thing about Sorrow, though, is? It's mod actually hits weak spot. So I kind of want to get Mother Mind, and if we do, I want to try and take the, uh, the Gambler Ring off and see what the heck happens, because I bet you it's crazy. What's this build, Sheen? Oh, this was the Sorrow one I did the other day. We're just- we're testing all the corrupted weapons, and this was the one that, uh, I was doing next. After this one, I have no idea. If we get Nightweaver, I feel like I could make a pretty good, um... Pretty good run with Corrupted Aphelion, maybe. Alright, we won't run- the unfortunate thing is that Corrupted Sorrow is not a ad clear. It's just nearly impossible to do ad clear with it. When's the DLC dropping? I don't know. They've been working on it for a while. The last DLC we got, we got the trailer like a week before it came out. So the good news is when the trailer comes out, it'll be soon after. But my best guess is that it's a big DLC. I assume it's either the new mode, like survival, or they're going to add... A uh, bigger part of the storyline. I just don't know. Make a bitter memento build? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Elden Ring DLC is pretty soon too, isn't it? June? 
I think it's June. My brother's been playing Elden Ring. He said he's getting his character ready for DLC. I think survival would do a lot of good for the game. I really do, because... It's not to... The thing is, it's tricky, because I, I could play this game forever, right? I could just come up with new builds and stuff. But it comes to a point where you are getting a little bit repetitive. And adding a survival mode would... You know, it's not ever repetitive. Because every single survival mode is different. They change things, different bosses per run, different boss order, different weapons you're using. So that would be really good for the game. I just said, uh, I don't know if they're going to do it or not, you know? Because they never said... They were or not, but it was very well received in the first game. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Hey, look at that, I got an aberration. Where's he at, though? Oh, this guy? Watch him instantly take over half his health, just go beep, deleted. Machine used the worst of everything? Oof. What do you mean would that be? Explore. What is the worst ring in the game? I don't know. There's a lot of rings that aren't super useful, but there aren't really a ton that are useless that I can think of. There's a couple of amulets, though. There's some really bad amulets. Joker's Idol? That's the worst amulet. That thing is garbage. Garbage, bro. Too many games dropping too close together? I know. It's, just, it's one of the rare times for me. It's actually the first time for me, ever, that multiple games are dropping that I need to cover. Because I only cover specific games. I don't cover what's relevant. I cover games that are... They appeal to me. Uh, which have been remnant to Outward, Dragon's Dogma, stuff like that. And so this is the first time ever... You know, my channel's not that old. Only like two, three years old, I think, at this point. That just three different games that I could cover at one time. Helldivers, Remnant 2, and Dragon's Dogma 2. Crazy. Wouldn't mind a boss rush type mode? Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping they do instead of survival, actually, is just a boss rush. Just give us... Uh, what they could do is literally, like... Dark Souls 3 had this mod. I think it was Convergence mod. I, I, I tried it out. What they did was every time you killed a boss, you could then refight that boss by going back to the first one, and it had, like, all these statues that you just input... And then you'd get to fight that boss. I think it'd be really cool if we get a mode in here where you could just... Excuse me. Walk up to, like, a portrait on a wall or walk up to whatever. Just press a button and you go into that boss fight. And if they want to literally do a boss rush, then it's just, you know, it randomizes it every time. And I think it'd be really fun. What trace do you run this build? I don't remember. I think I ran Amplitude. Amplitude, Fitness, Siphoner... Um, Fortify Flashcaster are the big ones. You don't need Endurance because you have Bisected Ring. But Amplitude and Flashcaster are a must. Flashcaster really helps with... Both of these. Your mods don't really need too much, but it really helps. And in Fitness, I always run if I run Bisected because it helps me stay alive. Worst of Ring Set's going to be Devourer's Loop, Anti-Root, and Suppression. And Master's Game Pride. Oh, yeah, because they don't do anything at that point. Yeah. Game Master's Pride is weird because it's pretty good in a team. Uh, but then any this. other time you run it, it's just a waste of space. 
Yeah, the Convergence mod. I didn't try Elden Ring's Convergence mod. I I just didn't. But I did try Dark Souls 3's, and it was very cool. I I liked a lot of what they did. The biggest changes that I enjoyed were just adding more cool weapons. There were just a lot of really interesting weapons that you got to use. I think I need to go this way. If four rings that make you take more damage. Oh, really? I didn't even think about that part. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Oh, give me Kehula. Please give me Kehula. This has to be. I will destroy Kehula with sorrow. Mother mine would be better, though. That's Cathedral. The Ghosty RPG came out the other week. I I don't know anything about that one. I don't remember hearing about that one. More focused on magic, but they did a lot of what? Well, the thing was they added a bunch of weapons that did magic. They had like magic tied to the weapons and stuff. You could do, essentially, if you didn't want to use magic, you could use infinite magic weapon arts or whatever they were. I think they were called weapon arts in that game. But yeah, it was very magic oriented. I took one magic class in that game. It was the in the cathedral. Over there, there's this, like, faction you can join up, and you can take the magic there. And it just casts massive light. And <laughs> the problem is, they did way too good a... Like, they did a terrible job with uh, not making the effects blinding. Because if you actually use the full class to its max ability, it just puts a white light across the entire screen. You just can't see anything. It was so unbelievably powerful, but every time I was fighting a boss, I was like, I can't see anything. It's just a bright white light in front of my face. Here they come. Corrupted melee? I know I do want some corrupted melee weapons. Like, corrupted spectral blade would be cool. Corrupted, um... That's a good one. Corrupted anchor spear. Or uh, anchor? Is it just the anchor melee? What is it called? Anchor Hammer, maybe? Hey, oh, Abyssal Hook. That's what it is. Give me a Corrupted Flail, bro. I'll take that all day. What's up, Batroot? Or Batoot? How's it going? Dual Axes would be sick. Dual Wielding Melee. Give us some Dual Wielding Axes that, uh... The more hits you hit the enemy with, the more damage you do. Yes, we got freaking Mother Mind. Let's go! It's gonna be such a good test. If my theory is correct, I need to change one ring on my build. And I could do half her health. Now, usually when I say stuff like that, I'm wrong, so... Hopefully, I'm correct. The Corrupted Steel Katana make it happen? I mean, honestly. Daredevil's charm and the three rings that make you take more damage, no armor pieces. Oof. I could do it. I could do it. That's very... It's not very doable. It's doable at best. I mean, Daredevil's charm is actually a pretty significant buff, so that is at least something. Should we be doing a new Elden Ring run closer to June? Uh, yeah, I'll do a new one. Nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna play an older build. That's lame. I'll do a new one. Whenever it comes out. Probably like the week it's about to come out, I'll start a new run and I'll work my way up. I'll do like a, a faith build or something crazy. Strength faith, maybe. I don't know. We could do whatever. Like anime sheen? I like uh, some anime, yeah. What was the one I was watching the other day? Jujutsu Kaisen, I just finished season two of. Um, that was really good. Black Clover, I never finished, but I like that one. I like... Um, Scissor, does Scissor 7 count as anime? I think Scissor 7 on Netflix counts as anime. I like that one quite a bit.
Yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen's... No, 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 Jujutsu Kaisen's unfair, though. It's not fair. The animators... Just straight up... Never slept. Like, it's... And the animation in that show is unbelievable. It's so good. It really isn't fair. To any other anime. Have you seen Solo Leveling? I've heard a lot about it, but I've not seen it. I have actually recently been hearing a lot about it. But yeah, I finally sat down and watched uh, the rest of Jujutsu Kaisen with my brother. And I gotta say, it was fire. It was absolute fire. Must use the paper heart. Dude, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Why would you hurt me like that, man? Does anyone use the paper heart? Like, seriously, come on. Why was that even added? Highly recommend Overlord. Love Overlord. Have not seen season three. I think they came out with it last year. The first two seasons were absolute fire, though. They were so good. Okay, it doesn't hit our weak spot. It should, but it did not. I know it does against Venom. I've seen somebody do it. So I'm wondering if I need to... What I need to do here. Maybe I need to angle it properly or something. I bet you I can. I just have to angle it. How dare you. Did I just heal her? Yeah, I did. I think I don't know how to play the game. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. If I have all my buffs, I can deal half her health, I think. I don't know what angle that was, though. Was she angled down? I'm not sure. I can do weak spot, though. I think what I have to do is angle my camera upward. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got this. I got this. Watch this. This is about to be crazy. That was pretty crazy, wasn't it? That was fire, dude. I don't know how I do it. I'm pretty crazy. I'm I'm actually busted at this game, dude. It's all, I'm so good. It's nuts. What's up, Kahuna? I'm so freaking good at this game. It's crazy. Sometimes I baffle myself. Okay, round three. <laughs> that was not how I meant for that to go. Alright, was it half her health? That was a lot of damage. That was a lot of damage. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Let's see if I can get a... Uh, the thing is, it did 2k... For every one of those. What the freak, bro? That's nuts. On oh, a boss that has a weak spot, you can, as long as you abuse the angle, you can literally one-shot every phase. That don't seem right to me. Okay, you're ready to add. What kind of malarkey is this? I told you this would be a good boss to test this on, though, did I not? I was like, Mother Mind's gonna be it, man. Just gotta take off Gambler. Run uh, Xanius instead. Oh, come on. You're a piece of garbage for that. Almost had her. How about that damage, though? How about that damage, though? What? The thing is, on a lot of bosses, weak spot is not consistent. That's why I put on Gambler. But it's literally one ring. The build doesn't change at all. It changes one ring, and you can switch back and forth. That's pretty... It's pretty good. 
What's up, Tobias? How's it going, bro? <laughs> Howard, do you think it was pretty left field? I know. It was out of nowhere, wasn't it? It's exciting. Very exciting. Try this on Ravager. Could I do it on Ravager, though? I'd have to really angle it up. That's the, the thing I'm worried about. I don't know if I could, I could pull it off. I could spawn Ravager and we could test it on him, too. Uh, the Corruptor, maybe. I think Corruptor is doable. Corruptor's another one where I have to get the angle right. He has way less health, though. Corruptor Arbor is for a tank build? Mmm. I don't. No, I guess just feedback to get it back faster, maybe. Why are you running Corrupted Arbalest on a tank build? Is there a specific reason? I think, um, it'll be a year. Yeah. I don't think it'll be more than a year, but I think it'll be close to a year before 2 comes out. Where the new corrupted weapons? Uh, I can, I can show you at the stone. Let me, uh, just give me a second. What's the best starting class? Best starting class is Challenger by far. Challenger as Prime, Medic as a subclass, as soon as you can get it, is easily the best starting class in the game. You could also do Dog Primary, but Dog is... I don't know. Not my favorite. I like Challenger better. I, I'm just a Challenger fan. Just a big Challenger fan. That's what I ran my first time. I had such an easy first run through. I actually ended up with a melee build because I was so just unable. I mean, I was on Survivor because it was my first playthrough, but I was just unable to die. It was fun. Yeah, the new Corrupted Weapons are far better than the previous ones. Far better. Overall. Okay, so Corrupted Sorrow. What it does is it launches Wisps. You have to get 10 bolts into the enemy, and then you activate the mod, and it sends out a bunch of damage. If you activate a high crit with this thing, it slaps. It does crazy good damage. We've got Corrupted Nebula. I don't... I haven't used it too much yet. Basically, you need weak spot hits to create nanos. When they do that, you activate the mod, and it explodes. It does crazy stupid damage. It's actually the most broken thing in the game right now, other than the status. It's the Cube Gun. Corrupted cube gun. It's worthless. Um, shoots out giant cubes that do no damage and don't work correctly. And then its mod summons a large cube around you that reduces heat regeneration, which you don't need. It is useless. It's a useless perk in the game. So it's a pretty pointless gun at the current moment. Hopefully it gets fixed and then we can at least build around it. Corrupted Savior. Really crazy for crit builds. It's the exact gun from the first game. It's awesome. Love it to death. Love it to death. It's a uh, mod is also a fusion cannon, which is sick. And then corrupted arbalist, which turns the arbalist from a one shot weapon into an eight shot weapon. And it's mod makes all of your projectiles explosive for uh, 15 seconds. Very, very good. All of the new ones are good other than the cube gun. And then all of the old ones are situationally fine. Yeah, Saber is nuts. It's so, so good. Go back to Arrow for a playthrough? Oh, heck yeah, man. Might as well. Might as well. Yeah, it makes Savior worth getting, because Savior before was just not worth getting. It was a worse Crescent Moon. You cannot convince me otherwise. Ah, oh, I was trying to hit his head. I wondered if it worked. It did not. Oh, 
All right, ready? I thought I got the projectiles on him. Apparently, I, I stuck more of them to the golem than I thought. I thought I got a couple on him, and that's why I didn't run. I was just going to kill him. Uh, we could try and do better anyway. I think I might be able to insta-kill him with it. I was pretty close there. I was pretty close. I almost got to it. With more distance between me and the golem, it should be easier. Alright, yeah, this will be way better. Ah, the tough part is the butterflies. I, I have to get rid of them with the arbalist, and... I don't know if I can do that. Ugh... That was a bad one. I literally got insta-killed by butterflies that time. All right. I thought I killed them all with that. I, I, There was no angle. I couldn't see him. That was really bad. Oh, I screwed up and my mod is useless. Nope, it's back. That was weird. He didn't do anything to me. Never seen that one before. Okay, let's try and survive the birds this time. Last time I kind of had a, a good angle on this time. Ooh, there we go. I can shoot him from afar. That fixes a lot of that. There we go. We did it that time. <laughs> we did it that time. I got a really good angle and I got rid of the butterflies. So That is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I would, I would run Zanias instead of burning the Gambler. That's a, that's a big difference for a lot of weak spot bosses. That, that's a big difference, dude. That's... Yeah, Sorrow is nuts. It's got insane burst damage. Just really, really stupid. I'm so glad we got Mother Mind so I was able to see that. And then anything that has no weak spot, you just throw on Gambler and you get more damage out of it. Alright. There's that one. Um, that is Sorrow and... What was the other one we did? Oh yeah, Sorrow and Carpeted Arbalist are done. Um, I need a boss... For corrupted deceit and corrupt savior, we could do Shahala. Uh, I didn't get to try corrupted savior on Shahala. Let's do let's do that. Our blood seems so much better as a corrupted too. Yes, it's quite good. The extra amount of ammo makes it really really fun. All right, Narud, Apocalypse. Shahala, first form. We won't do the second one. Any other weapons got buffed in the update? I read through... Yes, yeah, so regular Arbalist got buffed. Its tracking is way better. Both Arbalist and Corrupted Arbalist are now very good weapons. Very, very good weapons. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. Anguish got fixed. Anguish is really good. Mod. 
Energized net coil got fixed. It's busted now. I think that's it as far as weapons goes. Deceit was broken. Deceit is now a bad gun, which is unfortunate. Uh, corrupted Deceit is way, way better. I never thought I would see the day. It's pretty disappointing, honestly. They didn't actually mess with the gun itself. They messed with the mod regen, so now it just can't regen its energy fast enough. And maybe if you use feedback on it, I guess it might help. I doubt it, though. So, you know how you would use Favor and Sigil and Deceit would just regen all of its mod energy? It doesn't do that anymore. The change to mod regen made it so that it doesn't get enough to loop itself. And so now you have to take uh, too many am too many shots. You can still do the same thing, but it's, it's far weaker and it's way harder to get the mod regen back. Corrupted Aphelion? I've not tried. We'll test it and see how bad it is. I imagine it probably got nerfed pretty hard. The only thing it was good at was spamming mods, and I don't think you can do it near as well. Melee builds, the only thing they changed was Spectral Blade. They nerfed Spectral Blade's range to the ground. It does not have any range now. They got rid of its ability to be increased. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can show you when I get back to the testing ring. I'll show you. It is still possible to play with the seat. They didn't actually nerf the gun. They nerfed the mod regen. So now it just it doesn't loop like it did. Basically, before what you would do is you'd use your melee. You'd shoot six bullets. You'd use your melee. You'd shoot six bullets. All of your bullets are hitting weak spot, and you crush the boss in about three rounds. Right now, you shoot six bullets, or you throw your melee, shoot six bullets, and then you have hot, half of your mod energy back. So you need a full other six bullets to get it back. Then you can do that again. So it's it's a lot weaker. It's still very good because it you know it guarantees weak spot on half the hits. But the problem is corrupted deceit has half the mod requirement. So you can basically just do the exact same thing with an inferior mod. The problem is corrupted deceit is complete garbage. Its mod sucks. It's very powerful when it works, but it works. 38% of the time. It's it's such a bad mod. I don't actually know if they ended up fixing that mod or if it's still running into projectiles. All I know is it just it sucks as a mod. What is this? Uh, Shahala? That should be on the right side, I think. Thankfully, they didn't nerf the Steel Katana. Yeah, dude. You can still run uh, the amazing Steel Katana. So many... So many good applications for that, you know? So many good ways to run that. You technically didn't need the ring if you built it right, yeah. Now you, uh... I was running that and Burden of the Follower, and I still couldn't loop it. They fixed the DOT ring? Yes. Yes, the Timekeeper's Jewel now does not increase damage for Shock. Shock was completely, completely fixed. It was all jacked up and doing way more damage. It is fixed. It's still very powerful, though. It just doesn't instantly kill everything in the game. We got Abomination. That should be fine for Savior, I think. It'll be better than Hatchery, which we used last time. Did Sheen run a tanky DPS build? I don't like tank DPS is the thing. If I'm going to go tank, I want to take every hit in the game and not die. I run tank or I run DPS. I, I, there's never a middle. I know Chaos Gaming has a couple of middle ground builds that he did. He did like some tanky DPS stuff. Yeah, the, up uh, the upcoming Helldivers bonds look pretty cool. There's a... Uh, Laser pistol, there's an electric shotgun, there's a, like, plasma score, there's a plasma rifle, auto rifle, looks like. Some cool stuff. The emote fall damage immunity, I don't think it's fixed, no.
Crow Axe is still the, the best melee overall. Yeah, just for to have extra damage, but... If you're never going to use melee ever, it's just the best option to have, just so you can at least use it if you randomly want to, you know? Well, Adam Splitter is quite good, yeah. Adam Splitter is very nice. I've had a lot of fun with that one in, in the past. I got 10k damage on Mother Mind which it, with it, which was really awesome. That was a really fun moment. Also, yeah, Huntress Spear did get buffed. I forgot about that. I haven't tested it out, though. I should check it out. It got uh, Corrosion damage added to it. Pretty significant buff, actually. It was already a pretty decent melee weapon. But they also increased its melee speed, its throw speed. Because it was utter garbage. It was literally unusable. It took a full three seconds to throw it. Versus the Krell Axe, that takes one. It was a massive, massive difference. It was really, really bad. Thing is, it actually did really good weak spot damage, too, so it was, like, worth using, but it was just awful to use. Okay, I'm in combat. Alright, here we go. Uh, Death Wish was fixed. You can use it now. It's just that... A lot of times, if you're going to use Ritualist, you want status damage. You know what I mean? And if you just want damage overall, depending on what you're using... So if you're using mods and you want damage overall, it's going to be better to go Summoner and Archon now. Like, every time. So mod builds out of the question. For ranged gun builds, there are a couple that I could see using Death Wish to maximize certain gun damage. But it's just like, you can get very similar effects without damaging yourself, so... It just doesn't feel necessary a lot of times. But it is viable now. It was not viable before. Which is the only thing I care about. As long as it's viable, I, it's perfectly fine. Oh, I didn't even see that. My luck on this RNG of his attack really now is really bad. That was a really bad RNG on his attacks. Yeah, it's very similar to Plasma Cutter. It is very similar to Plasma Cutter in a lot of ways. It just does a little bit... It does a little less DPS and uh but doesn't have the overheat mechanic. Death Wish is amazing with ENC. Yeah, but at the same time it's like, eh. I mean, I guess, yeah. Is 
Yeah, Corruptor Savior is definitely overpowered. They, they It needed to be overpowered because the first version is so bad and so difficult to use. Guesses on what the next archetype's gonna be? I have no idea. I'm hoping for a uh, Ice class. But I don't know, man. I'm hoping for like an Ice based class. I'll pair up Ice and Ritualist to be so much fun. Ice and shields? Ice but here's what here's my thing about ice. This is why I like ice so much, and I love ice in every single game. But here's the problem, okay? Ice is never done correctly. Never done correctly. Has so much potential to be the best in every game, and it's never done correctly. For example, Outward has a lot of ice abilities. They're not that good. They're, they're very strong, but they're not that interesting in terms of ice. Here's how you build ice correctly in a video game, okay? You have one ability that creates a wall of ice. This can either be a wall or a spike wall, right? So the, and when enemies walk into it, they're not only slowed, but they're deal taking damage. Or you just create a wall that cuts off a certain area of the map, right? That's how you do at least one ability right off the bat every single time. Because it's both fun and usable almost all the time. Um, number two, the other skill that you would do is you would do some sort of attack, right? You get like a mist where you could summon it on top of the enemy. It does frost damage over time, or it does just in general, just some ice damage, right? Like some ice spikes or ice lance, something, something along those lines. You need at least one for an attack. And then the third, you have some leeway, right? You just need an attack, a defensive option, and then you can do whatever you want for your third one. It's pretty easy to do ice. Ice is just never fully... It never feels perfect to me in video games. And I feel like that's that's all I need from it. Like in Outward, all you have is attack skills. You have some really good attack skills, but you don't have anything defensive-wise. Me, personally, I think ice is a defensive class. The way that it's set up, you know, you've got frost, which can slow enemies. You've got DOT. The frost can deal damage over time. Um, and you've got walls and things like that you could create. It's just and Remnant from the Ashes actually did a really good job with ice, but they didn't have walls. They had really good damage uh, attack. They had both a frost lance and a frost mist, but we're both over. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen did ice good. Even that, I didn't like that much. I didn't like any of the ice abilities in that game. They did uh, freezing enemies pretty well, but I didn't like any of the actual spells that were ice-like. Other than the High Guy Seal, that was the only one. That one was incredibly good, but like, Frigor was terrible. I hated that thing. Yeah, Froststorm. Froststorm was crazy awesome. Focus got reduced from a 1 second duration to a 0.5, so it is much more usable. Much more usable. What about making an ice ground that makes enemies slip? Or like, uh... Here's another cool idea, right? You can, you can use ice as if it's... as if it's earth as well. So you could cover yourself in ice and then gain extra defenses, like... Just, I'll, here's a really cool one that I like a lot. Diablo did this, I think. Diablo 3? Uh, there's an ice ability where you literally encase yourself in ice, right? And you're immune to any damage. Uh, Divinity Original Sin did this as well, I think. There was an ice ability that did that. You're completely 100% immune to any sort of damage, no matter what it is, for a certain number of seconds. That's a really fun one as well. Because that's a really another really cool ability you can use defensively. I love that. I love it so much. It's really, really cool. Giving the player options to use skills for defensive purposes is always really, really fun. Like um, the shield in this game, the shield mod summons a shield. It's really cool. It's not that great because you don't need it a lot, but it's a very fun uh, item.
I simply could just have an ability that's an aura, make everything around you slowed. Yeah, that always works too. There's there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's very true. There's a lot of things you can do with it. I always like being able to affect my environment with ice. I want to be able to set up walls. I want to be able to stop enemies from moving. Um, caught, you know, stuff like that. I like being able to affect the area. Same with earth. Earth magic is very similar in that word. Earth abilities. Both earth and ice kind of can work very similarly a lot of times. Usually if earth and ice are in the same game, earth is used... In more of like area of effect, tremors and things like that. Oh, corrupted savior's reload speed is actually not that good. I increased it greatly. I have gunslingers on, I have haste on, and I have gunslingers ring on. My specific savior build, corrupted savior build, has very fast reload because I built it for that. Because I did not like its reload. It doesn't have a bad reload, but it's just, it's slightly slower than I want it. So I made it as fast as I could get it. Play with Eruption since it got changed? I've not. Uh, it did get explosive damage though, didn't it? Yeah, I made it to where it instantly reloads because I really, really like it this way. All my hardcore runs ended the labyrinth. They, they can be tough. They can be tough. I know a lot of people are in the same boat. The class that deals higher damage to the lower your health is. Barbarian style. Barbarian's another super cool one. I hope a uh, barbarian class is really fleshed out in that word too. Because barbarian doesn't feel... It, it's possible in the original outward, but it doesn't feel right. It, it doesn't feel perfect, you know? Barbarian's pretty doable in this game. You could do Challenger, at least. As long as you just take Challenger, you're at least starting a Barbarian build correctly. Yeah, I love the Rage. Because you could do uh, Rampage, and then you actually kind of just go crazy. I'm telling you what, though, I'm worried for Corrupted Aphelion. I have no idea what we're going to do with that. I feel like Corrupted Aphelion and Cube Gun, Corrupted Cube Gun, are both going to be real low on the list. Like, a close. A cube Gun, honestly, F tier. Like, straight. Is that, that's how bad it is. It's F tier. The Corrupted Cube Gun is so bad. Corrupted Ar or not Arbalist, but the uh, Aphelion might. I mean, a DC may. It depends on how it performs. I'm feeling D right off the bat, but... Oh, I shouldn't use that. Well, now I feel like a big dummy. Watch this. There we go, I solved my problem. It's the wrong ability, though. I think hexes will be an hour or two. They did say uh, magic is going to be in. I know sigil magic's in. I don't know what else, though. With only eight skill tree trainers, you know, half to have to be melee, the other half to have to be magic, so it's real toss up. I. I. I just don't know. Corrupted Savior's mod is a laser beam, it's just an instant laser beam. We got a cool build we made with it last time that was all right. It did a ton of damage. It just... The gun itself is way better than the mod.
I guess they just spawn in infinitely. I didn't know that. Issue with the corrupted cube gun is that you, the fact that you need to build around overheat and it leaves you with two options for your primary gun. But also that and overheat is not important. If we take a look at overheat, what do we have that overheats in the game? We have plasma cutter. The mod on plasma cutter fixes the overheat issue. So pointless. The LMG. Just don't build into fire rate and the overheat is not that bad. Run one ring and you can fix the overheat. Then you have the cube gun. Uh, I believe regular cube gun overheats, right? I think so. Let me double check. I don't think it matters is the thing. Um, where's that? I think I need to buy it again. I don't have it yet. And then you have this gun itself. It doesn't overheat? Okay. This one overheats. This one overheats in four freaking shots. They just didn't balance this gun. I don't know why they... I don't know who designed it, but I don't think they did a very good job. It's a support gun that needs you to build into it in order to even use it. So it's useless. Like, you can literally solve its over the LMG's overheat issue with that one, the microcompressor. That's how good that microcompressor is. It's that good. The OG cube gun does overheat? Okay, yes, it does. I thought it did, but usually even that doesn't matter. You just throw on the mutator, and then you use it as a support gun. So it's great. It's a useless item. I don't know. I would love to know what the devs intended it for. Because e maybe then we can make a build out of it. But it just seems pointless. The only way I could see you running it is if your buddy, like your friend that you're playing with in co-op, specifically has an overheat issue and wants to build entirely into damage. Then you could run that and then the, the shielded, the mod on it is going to reduce his overheat as well, I believe, is what it does. So maybe then? But even then, it's still not worth it because you just throw a micro so I don't know. Use it with one of the mutators to load ammo in the mag? Maybe. Oh, yeah, with the cube gun? Yeah. Like, literally, the, like I'm, I'm saying, the only way to run the Corrupted Cube Gun as support is to actually do right there what I just said. Like, you have to just be fixing overheat issue, because that's all it does. And the overheating's not an issue, so I don't know. Don't you know? <laughs> I think they wanted five weapons and just sent it with the Cube Gun. <laughs> <laughs> they had they had the intern design the the corrupted cube gun. They're like, they had the intern over there like, dude, just do something. We need a fifth gun. Get it in there, man. Get it in there. And he's like, guys, I got an idea. What if we ruin the cube gun? Go ahead. I like the idea though. The projectiles are actually really cool. They're very very cool. But I mean, three seconds of using it, you see the flaw of the weapon. Number one, it overheats so fast. It just overheats too fast. That already makes it useless. You have to use its mod just to make it usable, unless you want to, like, mat deck out, you know, overheat. Corrupted Rune Pistol will be a fun one to test. That's pretty good. Trying to figure out where I want to use this. Ravager? I could do it on Ravager. Not a lot of other bosses, though. I mean, if I did one true king again... No... Phelan. It wouldn't work on Talratha. I mean, it's good, but it has to hit weak spots, doesn't it? Yeah. But Talratha was overruled. The seeker saw in the this is basically for Annihilation. And that's about it. An annihilation, Mother Mind. And now, this doesn't work on very many bosses. I mean, I guess some bosses do have... Like, a Nightweaver, you could technically get it to work. 
owns anything with a weak spot. That's what I'm thinking. I, I feel like it'd be crazy, but I'm just trying to think of how many actually have an easy weak spot. May, I mean, you could do Fei Lin, I guess. We could try Fei Lin. That might not be too bad. It might not be too bad. I don't have an easy way to heal, which is unfortunate. Just save my skill for this phase. I probably could have roasted him if I did, but I just didn't think about it then. He <laughs> left again. Miss the ability to sell store equipables. Oh, that you don't want on your person? I will say the biggest thing that I'm really happy they changed from one is the whole going and buying consumables. Remember how was, you had to literally travel around the different merchants to randomly get them to spawn and buy the consumables? It was so annoying. Nah, regular, regular Merciless still has really slow reload. You have an instant reload with 8,000 DPS. My favorite one. Alright. I guess I want to do... Corrupted Nebula next. Didn't I save a build for that too? No, I didn't. But I think it'll work with this one too. Yeah, I'll, th I'll throw it on this build. It's all explosion, so it should, it should work. We'll do nano. We'll do... F I, you guys said feedback, right? Feedback with um How's this one work? I'm gonna I'm gonna test this real quick. I just want to see something real quick. If I take off Singed and I run Stone of Malevolence, does it still regen its mod? No, it doesn't. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, basically a worthless piece of crap now. It, it, it's not worth anything, dude. It's so bad. It's so bad. That was barely worth anything before. Oh, we could run regular Arbalist, I guess. That does mod damage. It'd be kind of fun. Dauntless! Hour 2 is here? Heck yeah! I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Oh, I gotta take off this, don't I? Here's the question. What on earth do I replace this with? I guess Zanias? I don't know if they were hitting weak spots. They're hitting acid damage. Acid damage means... 
not really status damage per se. I'm not sure what to run with this. I'm kind of confused, actually. I just need one more ring, but it really doesn't matter what ring I use. What about increased duration? Let me let me see something real quick. Does this matter? Maybe? I don't think so. Okay, duration does nothing. So, that was not worth it. Corrupted duct tape. Let's see, combine two guns. That's funny. Hmm. Just straight up mod damage? Could be good. Increase mod power generation. That could be good, too. Reload speed. Actually, reload speed if I'm running Twisted Arbalist. I don't hate that. Let's do reload speed. Or we could do probability cord. That's what 12%? That's so low. Let's do probability cord. Nope, I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. What about uh, acid stone? Let's see how much damage it does first 1386 1386 Got basically a 60 60 damage increase not that high really That really ain't that high. I don't want to run burn to this the Silas. That's pretty bad for that. I guess I'll just go mod ring. Try energize net coil. Okay. Nah, there's a lot less damage. I think that's the way to do it right there. Alright, let's try this out. We'll probably run Rituals for crit chance, I guess. What to do? What to do? Phelan? What are my options for Phelan? Sunken Witch would be really good. And I think Phelan is doable. So we can hope for that. Ring of infinite damage. Uh, would upping fire rate matter for this gun? I mean, yeah, a little bit. I'd say the most annoying thing about it is that they changed it from an automatic gun to a not automatic gun, which is always annoying. Any more DLCs for the game? They plan to make... Two more DLCs for this game, but they are not out yet. It's gonna be really hard to try it against enemies in this area, though. <laughs> Regular Arbalus is so crazy you now. Unbelievable. The only issue you're going to run into is it runs out of bullets fast. Very, very fast. I think maybe I could try it on this Elite. I might be able to pull it off.
That apparently doesn't count as a weak spot. I thought his head was his weak spot. Why am I already thinking that? I guess you don't have one. The sword hilt? Really? I'm glad that's over. I always thought it was his head. I guess I was wrong. Yes, Hour 2 will have... It's already been confirmed. There are four regions in Hour 2. There is Haboob, Tremontaine, and the third one that is on the map. Aroshi, which is the Kazite town, is not there. Um, the fourth one is a new area that we... It's not on the map. The map of Ari. There's only one that's not. So the Arosh the town of the Kazites will not be in the game. Still. From what I'm assuming. Also from what was shown. But you never know. They could do whatever they want. Like I said, I I have this in the video that I was gonna make. It's, it's a trailer, so they could literally do whatever they wanted. They could switch it up at any time. But I'm assuming that's the case. So I don't like Corrupted Nebula, way too dependent on weak spot. Yeah, that's kind of frustrating. I mean, it looks crazy good, which that does make sense why it'd be crazy good. If it's it only works on a couple of things, it needs to be pretty darn good. It's fun. It does make a really cool sound when it hits, I guess. I think it pairs pretty well with this gun right here. At least for ad clear, you know. For bosses, it's going to do its own work, but... I don't know what happened there. He wouldn't take any damage. He wouldn't take any damage and wasn't giving me my mod back. I hit him like four times and never gave it back. That was really odd. I just got no mod energy from attacking him. I hate when I die this area. I die this area so often, it's the most annoying to die to. Because it takes 30 freaking minutes to clear this area. It's a very annoying, tiny area to clear for no reason. What's your opinion on the trailer at Hour 2? Some changes? I like, uh... Second field in the game. Uh, it looks really good. It looks really, really good. I have no complaints and only likes. It literally looks like Outward, but with more stuff. So, I'll take it. What well, vacation are you looking forward to in Dragon's Dogma 2? Uh, the Trickster, I believe is what it's called. Buffs your pawns and makes them do more damage, as well as distracts the enemy with illusionary... Tricks. Seems like a really cool class. Is there a cap to the amount of corrosion stacks? There's no cap, but there is a... limit to the number that you can apply with. So, like, there's no cap. If you have three people, you can reach, I think, 16. But you're not going to be able to get above nine solo, I don't think. Because there's not enough ways to apply it. Uh, it'll release in probably... A safe bet would be a year. A safe bet would be a year. Obviously, I hope sooner, but from what I heard him talking about, Hour 2 has a long way to go. Uh, those are still the alpha versions. They plan to release beta soon for people to test all three of their games, so I I'm guessing a year. They're still pretty far out. He did say they need revenue, though. They, d they don't want to wait too long, so... 
Who knows? All the empowered angels on the second ballet. Uh, yeah, they make this area paint. I agree. The like flying bow guy, they suck. They suck. We don't get sunken witch. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my monitor out the window. How about that? That seems very excessive, but that's where I'm at right now. Need some really good weak spots, and lately they've been giving me some pretty crummy bosses for Lawsome. So I'm I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping. I need some good news here. You be a hardcore apocalypse with, with explorer and the only weapon you're allowed to use is a rusty repeater. Ugh. I imagine you can, but I don't want to. <laughs> They made hour too early access. Do you think that'd be a bad idea? Yes. I hate early access games. They can often gain a lot of attention, and then when the game fully comes out, no one comes back to play it. you already played the game. Early access games are really bad. They're, they're very bad for a game's uh, life and sales. They're only good for certain games where you need to do a lot of testing to make the game work, if that makes sense. Certain games need testing in order to just... Like, they need the player base to play it a little bit to see how you're going to like it. Like, roguelites are okay. Uh, the game called RoboQuest was an early access. That's fine. But Outward as an RPG where everything is going to stay the same and nothing changes, you know, you just, depending on the route you take, it would completely ruin, it would completely ruin the game. You would already have played so much of the beginning game. A lot of people would just not come back to it. This place gives me the like Explorer as a starter for hardcore since you get Hero Sword. A little bit more grindy though. Yeah, it's tough glass. Just finished my first ever run of this game. Went back to the wiki to check different things. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's nuts. I don't even think I have... I think I'm missing one ring still. I should be. There's a ton of crap to unlock in this game. Ark is a game that could do it very well. Like, a straight-up survival game can do it as well. But an RPG can't do it. Not like Outward. Not like Outward. I think they are doing a beta. You can do betas. Betas and early access are different, I believe. I, I don't know the exact distinction. For me, it's like... Early access is... The game is done. It's out. For people to play. But... They will be making changes to it up until they... Fully release the game. And then there's beta, which they release the game, let you play it for a little bit, and then they take it down, and they change it and then they release it finally I, I don't know which is which or whatever but that's what it is to me that's my distinction of it at least letting players play the game you test it and then makes changes that seems fine but if you just let the game stay up then it's just very easy for people to quit playing the game so I'm missing band band <laughs> I think it's a pain in the butt dude <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 did it. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is also different, though. Like, Baldur's Gate 3 has a lot of... Baldur's Gate 3 is a... turn-based game. There are a lot more variables that could change in that. So, I... It's, it just is a bit different for that game. Again, it really depends on the style of game that it is. 
usually. Everything does, but... The Spectre Blade build still top-notch. It's fine. It's not top-notch anymore, though. They nerfed the uh, range. But it's still good damage-wise. You just have to have bosses that don't fly. You can't use it on Annihilation anymore. Like, I wouldn't say you can't do a beta. It's just that I'll... There, there are a lot of things you have to be careful of uh, when doing early access. You don't want to just be like... You don't want to hurt your game by revealing too much is basically what you want to do. A lot of what Outward... A lot of the fun of Outward is the adventure and trying to find and figure stuff out for the first time. And so if you do early access, you're going to lose at least a little bit of that. Did say once that once you got the tarnish ring, you would get all the other items you're missing. I did say that, didn't I? I believe I'm missing bitter memento ring from the Nightweaver, and then that might actually be it. I need to check the wiki. If you guys remind me later on that near the end of the stream, I'll, I'll check at the wiki see what I'm missing. Being unable to level talent upgrade my character killed hour for me. Well, it's uh. I could see that. I could see that. There is a point where you stop you stop leveling up, right? But also at the same time, it's not necessarily that kind of game. It's more like a, a more like a buff game. Like you just need to be ready for every situation. A lot of why I like that game was the collecting. There, there's a lot of collecting random items and just grabbing everything in the game that you can. Trying the different builds and things like that. The reason they did that is because they did the whole, you know, skill tree thing. I can definitely see why you wouldn't like that, though. Band Band Captain's Insignia and Corrupted Savior are what I have left. Nice, nice. Yeah, I really do need to check the wiki. I imagine there's only like two or three, maybe. Maybe. There might literally only be one. But I didn't have the, um, one of the amulets we got the other day when I was playing with. Who was I playing with? I don't remember. I joined somebody and I ended up getting an amulet, so. Look how long this area is. Dang, bro. I just need to find the door. Yeah, I was mostly about finding gear. Yeah, exactly. The only thing that hurt Outward really at all in terms of its like its popularity was that it was just janky. It's an indie game, so it had a lot of jank around it, like grass floating in the air. Suck it on, let's freaking go. Grass floating in the air. The combat was not as clean as it could have been, which is one of their primary focuses for number two. They've already stated that. The walking uh, could be a bit long at times. Stuff like that. Is there... Will be added regions there hour two? Or will be totally different regions? There are totally different regions. Totally different regions. Everything from Outward 1 was on the bottom of the map of RI. Everything from Outward 2 is on the top of Outward RI. Yeah, actually, if you take a look at Definitive Edition... From when the game first came out, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. That's very true. The game came a long way since its original release. It was indeed very rough around the edges. Lacking critical RPG elements. Well, it's also a... Like, it was an RPG with survival-like aspects. So they were trying to... They wanted to make you feel like you had to, you know, eat food constantly, sleep, things like that.
What do you hope they put an hour or two? Well, I mean, they're already putting pack mules, which was my number one thing I wished was an hour because I thought it'd be really cool. Actually, one of my, f I think my first 10 videos was a five thing hours needs and it was pack mules because <laughs> I thought it'd be a really cool idea to have like a, like a caravan following you behind carrying your stuff. And they're already doing that, so that's cool. I don't even know. Uh, what do I hope it has? Eh. Some fun weapons, really, which they're gonna do, so. I was never too picky with what Outward had, I just... Needs to be a lot of stuff to mess with the variation, you know? Hope they do a gun class again. I'd like some rifles this time around that we don't have to mod into the game. Some rifles would be really cool instead of just pistols. Never played any ARPGs, but uh, No Rest for the Wicked looks interesting. I don't know anything about that one. Hoping the classes are different. Like yes, they. Uh, from what I heard, the obviously all the classes are going to be different. They're not going to be the same classes at all. None of them are going to be the same because the Cabal of Wind won't even. Excuse me. Like the Cabal of Wind won't even be a thing. So the Cabal Hermit wouldn't even be there yet. Yeah, they're they're all going to be different. I, it seems like the magic is going to be similar yet different and the classes will be just different classes, stuff like that. What was I using, guys? You remember? It was the same build, but I switched up a ring, I think. Yeah, and I ran, like, mod damage, basically. I forgot to save this one because I'm a dummy. A big old dummy. Did I run Corrupted Arbalist with this? I was running Regular Arbalist, which was better. I have a feeling a trailer for DLC 2 will come out tomorrow or the day after. I mean, I hope it comes out soon. Towed around so much crap was also... I know a lot of people didn't like that part, yeah. <laughs> That's why I was a big master trader guy. Always had the biggest backpack. I'm going to say, if you want to look over your left shoulder while aiming, you can activate the mod four times instead of three. Really? so much. So it's situational, really. I mean, it clearly does some stupid damage.
It's a... If a boss has a weak spot, they are dead. It's, an, it's a pretty easy win as long as they have a weak spot. But if they don't, it is just a don't use this weapon. Which makes me not like it quite as much, but it's definitely a really, really big powerhouse. So, very good weapon still. It's just weird that they made it into a gun that only works on weak spots. Because it's useless for half the bosses. I don't want to say useless. It's less effective for half the bosses. Uh, what'd you think of Greedfall 2? I, you know who was playing Greedfall the other day? It was, uh, Liger. What is Greedfall? Let me look that up. Greedfall. Uh, early access? I don't know. I don't know anything about it. What's up, Josh? How's it going, bro? I kind of like this game fix. The pack mule is going to add a lot to the game. I, I guarantee you. It looks awesome. I, they did say the pack mule can die, though. Um, the pack mule in hour two is going to be a... He is going to defend himself when you get into combat, but he will not try to actively help you. And he can die, so you have to make sure you don't let him die. Heard about the Corrupted Nebula today? If you're aiming over your left shoulder, you can get up to four activations. Why would you do that, though? You're saying this way? It's very weird to me. Well, I will give it a shot. You know what would be really cool? Is if we get Red Prince. Or Bru yeah, Bruin, maybe. I don't know. Bruin would be maybe doable. Red Prince would be ideal. Because he has weak spot 100% of the time. Yeah, why would he do the animation quicker? That's so weird. Should also work with crits. Ideally, it would work with crits. Ideally. Anything that requires a weak spot is obviously much less usable. But maybe that's why they made it so strong, is because they're like, yeah, you can only use it in situations where they have weak spots, so just make it a powerhouse in those situations. So at least it requires some aiming. Because, I mean, a lot of bosses do have a weak spot. Like, Venom has a weak spot that's not super easy to hit. Um, Nightweaver, most, at least have one. So if you're able to properly hit that, like, even Shrewd has a weak spot. It's just not super easy to hit. Talratha, you can hit it. Hatchery would not be ideal. Actually, it'd be easier to see if it works on Hatchery. Because you, what you could do is you could shoot it at the big bloaters, and then you could pop it, and it might have enough range to hit the Primogenitor as well. We'll give it a shot. See if we can get the quick animation to work, though. That sounds interesting. Really good gun pairing, though, that I have here. Because I have a lot of really safe ad clear with this gun. And then that massive AoE damage from this gun. If we get Magister, I was so mad. Because I literally can't use this build against Magister. The depths of my anger will know no bounds. That's all I have to say. Why are they delayed sometimes, and then other times they're not? That's what I'd like to know. Only works with feedback on the Nebula, though. Okay, I have it on there, so... That's what everybody told me to run it with.
I literally... Okay, I'm in mid-dodge, bud. Sorry. I have some pretty decent passive regen. I bet you have triage and regrowth on this build. I bet you I do. The regen is quite good. Dude, I know you're there. Just get up. They also shoot pretty quick. They'll, they'll fire their arrow pretty much as soon as they get a lock on on you. See what I mean? Just faster than you can, uh, than you can get your shot off. Just a tad faster. Yeah, Arbalest is so much fun now. It's crazy to see a... <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh... I'm a piece of garbage. What a piece of garbage. Maybe doing that to me, man. Maybe doing that to me. All right, I gotta figure this out. I have ideas. I have ideas. Maybe we're gonna run Helix as well. Run Helix with Harmonizer. That should work with feedback. I'm not 100% on that, but should. Actually, a lot of these are very similar. Just only mod duration. Instead, we'll do what? Elemental damage? Shouldn't be that good, I don't think. Ooh, isn't there like a mod casting speed? That'll be really good. Oh, the other day I was trying to spam this and I couldn't. So let's see if I can get that to work. Okay, yeah, it is properly regening now. The other day I tried this and it would not regen its own energy for no reason at all. It just wouldn't do it. I think my thing was goofy. This will work, though. I don't know if I have... Kinship. I should, considering this explosive build I've been running. We'll find out when I die. That's when we'll find out. You just miss? That's hard. I would have to say Corrupted Meridian's S tier. This thing is so good. It's honestly a little stupid how good it is. I can run uh, Gambler as well. Yeah, Firestorm plus this. That's Chaos's build. It, he runs that all the time. It, it'll run Firestorm and Corrupted Meridian. I've seen him run it so many times. It is basically meant for fire. Like, if you do that, you'll reach an energy really quick. Especially against something like One True King, where you're not going near him or anything. You ever played The Surge 1 and 2? I've never played either. I was told to play them a long time ago when I first started streaming, and I just have never gotten around to it. F tier for co-op? Yeah, no, for sure, dude. For sure. But aren't all explode? Yeah, like, literally, most of the corrupted weapons are explosive, so almost all of them are going to be garbage for co-op. That's awesome. Very end of the dungeon, nothing I can do. Because they just, they're completely invisible. 
Also, I don't know what it is, but every time I get hit by that specific enemy, it's not every enemy in the game. It's that specific enemy, my game freezes for 0.5 seconds. And it's just enough that I can't do anything. It's very consistent. It's every single time I get hit by that armored unit, my game freezes. Am I coping right now? Maybe. Maybe. But you gotta let me have this one, okay? That was a pretty sucky death. Did a co-op with a guy who was running Enigma and refused to switch? That could be pretty frustrating. Like, why do you suck, bro? Get away from me. Any Anybody here a Void Heart main? Not a main, but... I like it quite a bit. I actually hardly ever run it, but I feel like every time I do run it, I really enjoy it. Use enlarged. Get that. I've never once used enlarged. Not one time. I know a lot of people actually run that one. I have uh, never once run it myself. Zero builds with it. What was my go-to before I got tranquil? Very nice. It can save you in a lot of situations. Not getting me this time, you son of a gun. Call up whatever I use, the root doctor helping other player may freeze for no reason. Happened many times. That's odd. Oh, whenever you use the root doctor to help others. Hmm. That is weird. Alright, ready? It should annihilate him. I'm ex I'm Prepared to annihilate this boss. Oh, I got empathy? Didn't see that. Notice how when I fight bosses, I tend to talk through the boss fight, and then when I fight Magister, it's dead silence. It's dead silence, no talking, because I don't want to redo this stupid fight. <laughs> oh, it cracks me up, man. You know what's funny, though? Almost every way to run all of the corrupted weapons is the exact same. You go explosive, archon, summoner build. That is so weird.
they're almost all identical. They just blow up as fast as possible. There's a couple variations. I mean, one I go for crit, the other I go for detonation, but same idea, same principle. Wish Handler had explosive damage bonus. I would disagree. I would say I wish Handler had the melee still, but Handler also had explosive. Keep it the way it is, but add explosive to Handler. Handler needs to be a support in every way. It needs to be buffing several different things because it's just not as good as anything else. So if it if it had just the ability to be thrown in and work, it would be fine. Which one do you have the most fun with? So far, the one I had the most fun with is Corrupted Savior and... Hmm... Corrupted Savior and Sorrow, I would say, would be my, my picks. Yeah, Corrupted Sorrow is pretty darn crazy. I also agree with that, Josh, because Summoner right now is in a bad place because they buffed it. It's great as a passive class. Guess what it's terrible at? being a summoner class. They really just need to redo its prime perk. I think they're trying to avoid redoing its prime perk and they need to just redo it. it it's a bad prime perk. He said no summon summoner. It's amazing. He's like, yeah, it's amazing. Tell us straight. That is just the sad truth of it. I mean, it just needs redone. It's a bad prime perk. Well, the five attacks he did, I wasn't ready for. I'm trying to reload my gun, dude. Chill out. Stupid orb. It works, it's just not going to be great for this part of the fight. Very hard to activate before he does that.
fine for Phelan. You really need a weak... I don't actually like this gun as much as I thought I would. Everybody was making it seem like it's OP and, like, the best thing in the game. It, it only works on weak spots. So it's, like... It's really good, but it's... It feels mid to me. It feels real mid just because of that. Don't get me wrong. When it works, it's going to work, and it's going to put in a just a ton of damage, but... Corrupted Sorrow feels better. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Sorrow. I, I think Corrupted Sorrow feels way better because it works on every boss. You can put on Gambler and still get a lot out of it, or you could just straight up go, uh... Go with the weak spot. I think Sorrow is far more convenient. Sorrow also does both ranged and... mod damage. So... We'll try it against Ravager. What's up, Floyd? Best build for someone who just unlocked all classes? Mod Mage? Oh, definitely. Especially now with all the changes, Mod Mage is like the best thing in the game. I mean, Mod Mage and Status Builds. Status Builds are broken if you have Energized Net Coil. So, like, you could use those. But... Cube Tap? No, we still gotta do... Uh, we have two more bosses with Corrupted... Two more bosses with the Corrupted... Meridian, and then we have one more boss with Nebula. Nebula will be Ravager, most likely. Try the four activation. Thing. Yes, I. Oh, okay, I will. Uh, I did get it to work. I don't know if you've seen. I got it to work one done. Is that word in your top three games? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Probably. It's one of my favorites. What's up, Hyper? Don't that I feel people gauge too much based off the dummies rather than playing in the runs? Well, I, I think that's fine, though. I think there's two ways to play the game. There's... You use the gun for its intended purpose, right? And that's how you use it. If you were to use Corrupted Nebula for its intended purpose, the intended purpose is weak spot bosses. So, for example, Annihilation is going to be great. And, um, things like Ravager and stuff like that. And then the other way to play the game, which is what I've been doing with a lot of my runs, video-wise, is I just play through the whole game with one build. And I show its weaknesses and its strengths. And using them as they're intended is better. Because not every gun is good at every situation. That's just how it is. They're not supposed to be anyway. Um, but I think finding the gun's weakness is also fun. I've start, I've enjoyed it. Just at least knowing that this gun is just terrible at whatever boss we're facing. And I think Corrupted Nebula is that kind of gun. I, I think it's just... If you're up against Cancer, Venom, Annihilation, it's probably going to be pretty good. Put in a lot of work. Make things really easy for you. But then you're going to run up against some of these side bosses. It's just going to fall pretty flat. I mean, even failing, it was pretty good. Look at the low effort it was. I only hit the button a couple of times. I was just kind of trying to get weak spot hit. So It's still good for even a boss like that. I bet you'd be pretty good against Bloat King if you hit the orb and then you activated him. I'd be interested to try, actually, but... Should I do this? I'm gonna try. Is this wait? Uh, this might count for corrupted nebula. I want to see if this works. Are we ready? This works. It's gonna be awesome. If it doesn't work. It's going to be very unawesome. It works. The damage does not work properly, though. Maybe it did that time. 
I like how I instantly took double. Yeah, okay. That's some bull crap. That is some absolute bull. I took double damage from one meatball from walking into his stupid roll. Come on, dude. Let's not even pretend that that was for real. That was just stupid crap. I will not accept that. They ripped me off. End of story. It does work on this, though, which is the good news. Out of here, man. Trying to have a good time. All right, ready? You think they're going to activate yet? Yep. I got ripped off again, bro. Why am I getting stun locked? I'm getting stun locked by stuff in my dodge. Oh, I hate this activity so much. They've irritated me now. Now I have to do it. Now I have to kill them. I was just going to test, but now they made me angry. I hate this activity so flipping much, dude. Oh, calm yourself, bro. What I miss? Uh, use refunder on Nebula to restore ammo for your main weapon with nanites. Ah, uh, can you? I don't know. That weak spot it's kills as well, so it should work well in maps and bosses with ads. Yeah, it's just like a weak spot clearly works better though. You know what I mean? I feel like just hitting that weak spot, relying on that weak spot is just a little bit better. I will kill this stupid thing if it's the last thing I do. How many nanites can you get on there? Both very impressive and very not impressive at the same time. You feel me? It's really cool how he regains his mod energy back. Alright, well we're alive and that's what matters. <laughs> I cooked him. That was cool. I bet you there's like a... A crit setup. And I bet you the crit's better on this one. Because it has so many chances to crit that I just think it might be stronger.
It's possible. I mean, it's it could go either way, though. That's the thing. That was cool. When you can play Dragon's Dogma? I mean... Playing two when it comes out in like a week. Two weeks, I think. All my homies hate meatballs. <laughs> Everybody hates meatballs. I don't know how I got rocked so badly there. I just kept getting stun locked by the meatball and then I'd walk into the next meatball. Irritated me, man. Irritated me. This might be Kayula. Would Kayula be a good test? Kayula would actually be really, really good for this gun. But so would literally anything. That's what I like about this gun. You know what would be fun, too, is a one true king test. Oh, shrewd. The one boss, man. Most boring boss in the game. Nah, I take that back. Uh, Twisted Chantry. Probably still more boring. This guy's up there, though. This guy's up there. Yesha has both the best and the worst bosses in the entire game. Other than Magister. Magister takes the cake and he's in awesome, so he gets that medal. All to himself. I feel like I definitely hit that guy. Where did you come from? No audio cue on that. That was interesting. What is happening right now? What on earth is happening? Hey, Magister with a passion? Yeah, he's trash. Been confirmed. I confirmed it. He's trash. <laughs> it's, it's confirmed. Trust me. Trash boss. The unburnt boss in Lawsome. Is, uh, yeah, that was pretty bad, too. That one's at least kind of interesting. I mean, sometimes you can get cool angles on her and stuff. She's pretty boring most of the time, though. We agree that Nerud enemies are hot garbage. Oh, Nerud enemies can be tough as nails. Nerud enemies are almost always a pain. The thing about Nerud enemies is not even the enemies themselves all the time. It's the fact that they put you in situations where you get swarmed from so many angles at once. And it just feels like there's nothing you can do, you know? Are you playing Remnant, but I want to say I'm pumped for Hour 2. Heck yeah, Catalyst. You know it, dude. Yeah, we've been talking about it all day, actually. It's gonna be awesome! Yeah, the trailer was a very cool trailer. Very, very cool trailer. I did a lot more damage than I thought I was going to. was a boss fight. I think. It's hard to tell. 
don't you know? I don't know, but I think that was just a boss. I think so. I did a lot of damage in the first half. I guess I haven't fought a lot of these bosses with the new... The new mod changes, because... They literally buffed the damage by so much, it's ridiculous. As long as you're in Chaos Gate, your damage is just exponentially... Massive. They also have a very large radius, though. Very hard to not hit yourself if you're in a tight spot like that. Not usually too big a deal, but... Where'd the... Oh, there he is. Just dodge me, dude. I'm so mad right now. That's really rude. Just run Miasma with Energized Net Coil and Swarms just die? Yeah, yeah, it's super easy. Yeah, that's what I was running earlier, but then I, I switched because uh, mod builds can clear stuff easily. When I run those sucky builds where I gotta use, like, Cube Gun, I'm only gonna use those against bosses. We'll just do status for areas. Cube Gun's gonna be so bad, bro. I don't even know what I'm gonna do to it, man. Who am I going to fight? Because it's going to be bad no matter what. I got to pick something easy, right? Tauratha? Tauratha's pretty doable. Pretty doable. Yeah, cube gun and a fillion. Ugh. Advice on how to handle the balls in the second half of Yasha? Status, pretty much. Status, pretty much, man. They're tough. They're tough. Yeah, that is going to be a tough one. Now, the rune pistol will be a difficult one as well if I want to use the rune pistol as an actual weapon. Usually you just run out of support, but might try and main it. If I get Abomination, it's actually a really, really good boss fight for the Rune Pistol. It puts in a lot of work in that fight. Definitely puts in a lot of work. I use either version, really. Let me tell you. It is something. I missed both those guys. Combination event ended before I could farm up all the crystals. So which ones do you have? I'm guessing you have the, um... What, Nebula and Sorrow, probably? If I had to get one, I would have gotten... N knowing what I know now, I would have gotten Sorrow. Sorrow was definitely the best of the, the first batch. Or the second batch. Oh, everything but Rim Pistol Cube Gun? <laughs> you don't even need Cube Gun anyway, so... Rim Pistol's fine. It's mainly just the mod. Use the mod to buff your everything else of your build. 
Oh, Corrupted Nebula. Yeah, I was about to say, you said Corrupted Enigma, and I was, like, really confused by that. I know a lot of people were able to exploit Root Nexus. I tried exploiting Root Nexus before for the aberrations. I've never gotten it to work. I get one aberration to spawn, and then none of them ever spawn again. I don't know if I have bad luck or if I'm doing it wrong. New Corrupted Sorrow? The New Corrupted Sorrow is, yeah, it's probably one of the best. It's incredibly good. It does some really, really dumb damage and is able to hit weak spot, which is just crazy to me. Gives it a lot more power. The nice thing about this gun is that its primer form still does a lot of damage because you're using blast damage. So when its mod runs out, it's like, oh, I'm not completely useless still. Never really use this charge up that much, though. Doesn't have that many uses. Not an exploit as a feature? Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's not even really an exploit. But he's not, he did it. He got an aberration to spawn like 7 out of 10 times. Hmm. Yeah, some people have better luck with it than others. I have always had very poor luck, unfortunately. Yes, we got Kayla. Let's go. Really, really good boss for this. Really, really good boss. We should be able to just demolish her. As soon as we enter the fight, she should just be half dead. Although I said that earlier and it did not come true. There is approximately 1% chance that that hit me. And I'm baffled that that, that happened. Where are these guys coming from? Now you can literally charge this up to shoot multiple per shot, but it's just like, why would you do that? It just feels like a waste of time to shoot them off regularly. Maybe it does more damage? Doesn't feel like it. Yeah, I want to spawn somewhat close to the second Nerud World Crystal. About 90% of the time on Nightmare. The first time the Aberration event happened, I farmed them all on Nerud. I was getting really, really quick. So uh, the second time, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that same method. And I went and tried, and I, none. I got zero. Now while actually trying to farm them out. I was like, wow, this is pretty different. But then I got a bunch while streaming. Yeah, how divers are is mostly positive reviews at this point. It tips it out of farm blood moon essence. It's just pretty random. It's just pretty random. I mean it will change. You can go in and out and then see if it changes the blood moon, but sometimes they can be real finicky and not want to give it to you. See ya. Had it when I didn't know about it. I did too the first time. I did that exact same thing.
When I knew and farmed till I became close to get the archetype, they just disappeared. Yeah, they can be real tricky. Just... They'll re... Hmm. They'll show up quite a bit. Just try and play more in Yasha. You, you should see them more often. I thought it was giving me Star Wars vibes. Yeah, Star Wars like ODST kind of a mix. A lot of people have been saying that. It is a genuinely an amazing game. These enemies are so weird because all of a sudden, there are just a thousand of them. And you feel like you covered all your bases, but you didn't. And then there's 14 shooting you in the face. Summoner worth it or not? Yes, it's worth it. Yep. You can make the best mod builds in the game with Summoner. Is summons worth using? Yes and no. They, they're, they're worth it sometimes. You can make some cool builds with summons. You know anyone that has a bunch of extra Blood Moon Essence and you have Scrap to spare, you can always buy theirs? Yes, that is true. You can buy them from, uh... Ward 13. How much Scrap do you have, Batter? If you're on Steam, we can, uh... I'll hit you up. I'll give you some. And if you can buy them. But the Hunter Spear has DOT damage now. I hate it only being able to use the Krell Axe for my build. I've not used it at all yet, but uh, I do need I do need to try it out. It seems pretty cool. It's a good change. It's a really good change. I have approximately three hundred and forty-two blood essence. So well, you can buy it if someone joins your game and sells it to Cass. That's why I said, if you're on Steam, I can uh, friend you real quick and join you. Actually, no, it's cross-platform now. I guess we could test out cross-platform, too, if you're not. Look at me, multitasking. I be doing stuff. I'll be doing stuff at the same time, man. I'm not a multitasking maniac over here. Spears DOT is unfortunately bugged with Tainted Blade. Oh, uh, yeah, I did hear about that. I did hear about that, which is very unfortunate because that's like the best way to use it. To be fair, I wasn't aiming for them. They got no win. Stupid meatballs. The meatballs are making me get hit by other attacks I would never get hit by. It's it's not even that angering, it's just slightly angering. And yeah. 
But yeah, better wait till I'm after this boss and then I'll, uh... Actually, you know what you need to do better? Is if you have Discord, I have a link down below. In my Discord. DM me your friend code on Steam, if you're on Steam. And I'll add you after this. Have you had an issue with the oddly powerful mini boss in Kayula's Rest? Which one is that? Uh. Oh, yes, the one I just fought. You have to shoot his heart. He'll throw his heart slash brain at you, and you have to shoot that. Otherwise, it takes no damage. Oh, did it get fixed? When was there another patch? I'm about to try it out, dude. Oh, that was the uh, that was the mini patch that they released the other day. Yeah, that did get fixed. I forgot. My bad, guys. Playing too many games. Any trait to raise max equip load? Yes, it is Challenger's main trait. Yeah, it was the same one nerfed the bolt driver. They fixed the bolt driver's bug, they fixed the hunter spear bug, and then there was another one they fixed with that. Soul Binder. That was the third one. Soul Binder crashed your game. We never got to try that. I was I was debating on it, but I hate crashing my games, so. Sub six. Did it fifteen or so times to make sure. I'm glad that you were so thorough with your <laughs> your checking there. It's funny. Kind of a weird weird gun as well because it forces you to not use burden of the gambler when every mod build in the game uses burden of the gambler it's really funny actually now that i think about it well driver is still a good choice for secondary yeah i'd use bolt driver with electric uh bolt driver with shock what is it called Something shock. Like it's not shock round. I don't know. Just found out they're making hour two. Yeah, it's exciting, man. Overflow. I always forget the name of it because it's corrosive rounds, which is acid, and then it's overflow. Man, why you gotta confuse me like that? Hmm. Very hard to use on Ravager. I got attacked twice immediately. You can't activate the mod very quickly. He attacks in between the mod cast, so it's very difficult to get it off. Also doesn't even seem to do that much damage. Oh, 
All right, take it back. <laughs> I just didn't get the cast off. I don't like it. I actually don't like this gun. Uh, it feels too gimmicky. Obviously, it is incredibly powerful, but it just doesn't. It doesn't feel as good as sorrow. Sorrow feels way easier to use. helped an amount of ammo. Why are they not dropping any ammo? I don't know. I can't find any ammo. <laughs> I'm trying to get ammo to get this the thing to work and I can't find any. Star's mod cast is so much faster and doesn't require multiple cast. Yeah, the multiple cast things is what makes it hard to use. You really only get to do... I think that's why it has such high damage. It's because you can only use your attacks whenever the boss can't hit you. What's that purple aura? It's from the Void Heart. It's not supposed to be doing that. It's bug. It's, uh, whenever you take the heart, it gives you that effect. It's not supposed to be doing that 24-7. But it is. Because... Reasons. I, I guess. Magneto, try again. All right, thanks, thanks, man. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> well, I couldn't see. Maybe if Sorrow wasn't given to us, I would like this a lot better, but because we have Sorrow, I just don't even care about this, really. Yeah, it's just really hard to use. And even to get its max damage, it's way harder. I think that's why it's so strong. Ball. 
Meatballs are really making this difficult. Are you using Sorrow because it's giving me a bug where it loop playing into a luminant crystal hum? Yes, the original Sorrow did that as well. It's very annoying. Uh, Catalyst Gaming, thank you for the donation, man. Very much appreciate that. Your outward and remnant videos are fantastic, man. Keep up the great content. Thanks, dude. Glad you enjoy it. I'm very glad you enjoy it. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't like this gun. The times where it would be good is a very aggressive bosses, and it's very bad against aggressive bosses. Mother Mind is the best use for this gun. It's very, very bad for Ravager. Actually, probably the worst worst boss in the game, I assume, would be this boss. Here. I can only use half of its casts, and it's very easy to take damage anytime I use it. I like Sorrow quite a bit better. I have to wait for his combo to be over before I can even try and activate my mod. And then it just doesn't work. Still, dude, that effect is one of the worst things in the game. If you dodge it twice, you should be able to not get hit by it after that. Come on. Yeah, it doesn't last long enough. You need to use it quick, and you can't use it quick with this weapon. Or with this boss. You missed the Corrupted Meridian run? I have one more boss I could probably run it on. But yes, you did miss most of it. I'll, I have one more boss I want to run it on, though. So... Good. It's good. It's very, very strong. Extremely powerful. But it gets a 2 out of 10 in usability. Like 10 out of 10 damage, but 2 out of 10 usability. So that's pretty tricky. Certain boss fights, that's going to be really good, but Ravager definitely ain't one of them. Let's see some corrupted melee weapons just because. I would agree, yeah. Stuck out of using into the trap of using deceit early on. When they nerfed it, I started using the monarch, but I like to try and branch out. Uh yeah, monarch is the best. I would say bows are fun. If you never really get use bows much, crescent moon can be really fun to master. But yeah, I don't like it that much. I don't like it that much. It's situational at best, and not good against all of the bosses. Like, Mother Mind is obviously one of the biggest ones, but that's that's a boss that literally everything in the game is good against. Even Waves, or Atom Splitter. So, that's a tricky one. I think for Cancer and Venom, this would be a pretty decent option, but Sorrow is also really good for both of those. So, <laughs> I think Sorrow just beats it. I think Sorrow beats it. I want to try one true king with Corrupted Meridian. I have one more idea, though. Yeah, 
I need to buy ammo. So imagine shooting that much with a controller. Yeah, the shooting is also a bad part. It should be automatic. I don't know why they changed it from that. Again, I'm sure they have their reasons. It just, it feels like it should definitely not. It should definitely have stayed automatic. Even with the bitter memento, my adventure run has the medallion. Do you really? <laughs> all right, all right. Are you at the boss? Do you want me to help you kill the boss? Because I totally will. It just don't feel as good as Sorrow, dude. That's his biggest flaw. If I hadn't used Sorrow already, I would have liked this more. Also has a very slow reload, but a lot of these guns do. Dude, can we quit with the freaking birds? Why is she spamming so many of them, too? She only supposed to spawn three. She spawned six at a time. Its reload is just so awful. It's not, it's not even that it's so awful. It's that you have to do it so much. It just don't feel good, bro. It, that, that's really all there is to it. You can have a lot of power, but it just don't feel good. That is clearly why they gave it so much power, though. I've seen some people saying it was ridiculously OP, and it's like... They didn't really explain that it had low usability. I think it should stay OP. I think it should stay with that much damage, because it doesn't feel easy to use at all. I'll use uh, Corrupted Meridian if... I don't know if I can use Corrupted Meridian on her, can I? Can I try Nightweaver? I'll try Nightweaver on, on this build. I'm trying to get a feel for the the weapon. Um, You're not online, Crackbot. Oh, I'm offline. My bad. My, uh, it took me offline earlier. No way you're about to get me another item. You're crazy, bro. <laughs> Corrupted Nebula is terrible on Nightweaver. We're about to find out, dude. We're, we're about to find out. Bitter Memento. Set 1% of wearer's max health as gray health. That's super good, guys. Super good. Finally have it. Well, thank you, my man. I appreciate it. Now I really do need to check what I need, because I have no clue now. 
Regular Meridian Smoke Nightweaver the other night. Granted, I used Firestorm also. Firestorm's kind of weird against Nightweaver because it's so good sometimes, but then the second phase, you're just stuck next to her. I may use a curse over here. It is, in fact, pretty freaking terrible. I'm waiting for her to open her weak spot, and then I want to see what I can do to her. So far, it's not working. Worth it? It's just worse than sorrow in every way. And they do such similar things, you know? Dude, I have no lag playing with you, and I appreciate that. Every time I play co-op, I have a lot of lag. Oh, I didn't even get to do anything at time. I got you, fam. Don't worry. I got you. Or I'm gonna get you killed. One of those two things will happen. <laughs> I'm a maniac, dude. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. I'll revive my teammate. What do you think this is? It's not amateur hour. I just destroyed her with that mod. You ready for this? You ready for this? Void heart. I'll take it. I'm gonna eat it. Booyah. Ate the attack. That's how good I am. I can't get any shots off, but... Yo, that's some crazy enemies. It's not letting me use my Arbalest mod very well, and I don't know what that is about. Well, that worked. Okay, that's with... Don't go, don't go near him. Don't go near him. Don't go near him. Okay, okay. I'm not using this gunny. I'm going to switch to Sorrow, and I want to test... I, I know it's going to be way better. I know for a fact it's going to be way better. Okay. Now we're good. The explosion knocked me down and killed me. That, that was weird. Alright, you ready? We can go whenever you want. Have a great rest of your stream, homie. Good luck with the build test. Yeah, thanks, Hitman. No. No, we don't need to restart. We're good. We're good. I was just switching because the second phase, it's going to be useless. She never has a weak spot open. I mean, she does, but it's it's far less, so there's no point. Well, I can't see crap with this circle. aiming at me. Oh, Sorrow's not that good either. Every time she wall transitions, it gets rid of the spikes that are on her. That's not good. That's really bad for this weapon. Also, it performs far better with crit. The 
guess shouldn't be surprising to me. Yeah, it's unfortunate. She gets rid of all the bolts, so it makes this gun way less effective. It still can deal good damage, it just won't most of the time. Double red circle? That looks funny. Ooh. That was cool. I actually always forget you could jump over that balcony. I just want to point out, we're two-person, which means she has more health. She got hardy, which means she has more health. And that just shows you how powerful Curse is. Because it actually doesn't feel like she's that bad. Curse is so unbelievably good if you're able to use it correctly. Missing a lot of needles for some reason. I can't quite figure out why. Literally zero lag, dude. It's so awesome. <laughs> None at all. Like, I, I, no lag whatsoever. It's the best co op fight I've ever had. I, it was a perfect fight. Every time I dodged, it dodged the exact time I wanted it to. That was sick. Okay, both of those weapons are complete trash for that fight. So, that's, that's a thing. Oh, yep, high five. My B, my B, my B. Nice one. My man. Thank you very much. Quick question. Do you know of any consistently good ways to get scrap quickly? Always seem to be running low. You want to go test it? Let me go test my theory. You want to see how to get scrap quickly? This is the way that I think is the best. I'm not sure, though. I shall attempt to show you. Nah, I've never seen anything like this before. How many times I've heard that? Yeah. He didn't drop anything. So, so far my theory is not working out. As you say, I don't know for sure if they drop Luminite. 
Jump scrap. There is a chest here. How much does it give you? Is that worth it? It's only 136. Eh, I don't know if that's worth it. Here's the thing. If you kill enough elites... Excuse me. If you kill enough elites, they will drop Illuminite all the time. And eventually you get to the point where you don't really need a ton of Illuminite. You can just sell it. It sells for a lot. A lot. That's all I got on my scrap. I was hoping these guys drop Illuminite, but it doesn't look like they do. Why they don't, I'm not sure. Uh, the purple glow on my character is from using the Void Heart. It is currently a visual bug. It's just, it usually does this, but only if you use it. Um, but right now it's a little bit bug. It's a, it's just a visual effect bug to where it always does it. So that plan didn't work out. Basically, your best bet is to is to kill elites. You know, you want to gather all the chests you can and stuff like that. But if you kill elites enough, you'll eventually get enough Luminai crystals to the point where you can sell them, and they sell for thousands. Other than that, just playing through the game is the best way. All right, we're gonna fight one true king with corrupted Meridian because I think that's a fantastic idea. He is actually a fantastic boss for something like this because it explodes in a massive radius. And it should be able to hit his hammer and him at the same time. And then after that, we'll test Corrupted uh, Aphelion. Yeah, sorry that method didn't work, Alan. <laughs> I was hoping it would, but did. they didn't drop any Illuminate, which was unfortunate. All three of them that I killed. I think the ones by the boss might, though. If you get all the way to the Corrupted Guardian, they might drop them. I feel like I've gotten them from them before. I just don't know for sure. The one true king. Let's go roast a frog. You guys want fried frog? Get to the labyrinth, the big rock at the start drops him. Oh yeah, you can farm the giant rock character in the labyrinth. That is a good point. He'll drop li uh, Luminai crystals all the time. Hey, that was toxic. You don't see that one very often. Wait a minute. Did he just drop a Luminite? That guy might have just dropped one. Might be able to farm that guy right there. Intriguing. What's his name? He's still here? Uh, did that guy send me a Discord message? I forgot to check. He never mentioned anything about it. I don't think he sent me one. The guy that needed... Blood Moon Essence, I think it was. Freaking ridiculous. This spot right here. Re you could do a redo the DLC over and over. I don't know how efficient that is, but that guy dropped one. The flying swords you were using? That Check the wiki on that one. That one's a little confusing. It is in the DLC, though. It's a little bit confusing. It's actually not too hard to get, but it's kind of confusing. Is your epic username so I can drop it in French press? I... Don't know what my epic is. Is it in here? Might be at the main page. I 
I don't know off the top of my head. If you send me a DM on Discord, though, I can uh, I can send you one sometime. I don't have Epic Games open either, so. Real bad. Yeah, you need like the red pre the red crown, and then you need that dungeon at the end of the DLC. Ooh, these guys don't burn. Is it Pathway of the Fallen? Okay, Pathway of the Fallen. I think you could check your epic username, but I think you can only do it from the main screen. I'm not sure. I never had to do that. Well, this is a very boring sunken haunt. There's nothing here. Yeah, the big rock guy, I think, is 100% guaranteed. So that one should work really well. Well, okay then. I feel like I heard an elite. Now I don't see an elite. It's terrifying. Gray health region gives you a better overall healing. Yes. Talking about the trait? Yeah, it does. You want to make a max health regen build? Yeah, that trait's pretty good for that. Pretty much every time you get hit, you're going to turn some of your health into gray health, so it does always increase healing. Unless you have some... You can do some weird stuff to your builds to make it not do that, but... Usually, yes. Yeah, Tranquil Heart, Regrowth, and then... Can't, just can't avoid shots right there. Tranquil Heart Regrowth Triage. Make sure to take Triage. It buffs all healing. Did the build at some point? Yes. Yes, I'll show it. When I get to the crystal... Interesting to see how this does on the against the witch because this is a very enclosed boss fight and that's not really where Meridian shines. Want them to do curse? You have to build into them. Yes, that is very true. So curse, I can actually quickly explain curse. Curse is a unique status in the game. Okay, there's only one item total at the current moment that does curse, and it is the sword mod. The sword mod, when equipped with no extra bonuses, does not do enough damage to inflict curse. In order to have the swords inflict curse, they need to do a ranged attack, which is very doable. They do it often. And in order to get them to inflict curse on a single hit, they need to deal over 100 damage instantly. So, for example, if I put on the swords right now on this current build, they do 94.5 damage. Why do they do that damage? Well, first off, we're buffing with Archon. We're buffing with Destroyer. And we're buffing with... That should be it. No, we're buffing with the mod damage from Summoner. So what you need to do is replace either the Singed or the Blasting Cap Ring, which do not buff them because they're not explosive. The swords aren't explosive. 
and you instead want mod regen or like mod damage. So, so let's say I put on Burn of the Silas instead of the Blasting Cap. Now they do 101.2 damage. This means that they will inflict curse on a single uh, sword throw. If it's below 100, it will not do it. So you want it over 100 to make it very, very consistent. Hence why I, you can't just use it on any mod build. Because you can't use it with explosive mod builds very well. You try Energize Night Coil build as of last patch. is really great. You want me to see me run it? I'll run it after this boss. I already have been messing with it. Yeah, I think like 90 is where you want it to at least eventually apply, but if you get 100, it almost always applies. I'm doing mod builds, why not use Catalogger's Jewel? Not very good. Eight mod power per second is actually very, very low. It's not very good. Uh, let's see. Helix requires 637.5 mod power. Catalogger's Jewel is 8 per second. If you just use Archon and Feedback, you can get your mods back way faster and it just doesn't really do anything. It's not, like, it's not bad. It can do stuff on certain builds. It's just, it's just not very good because you can get it back so quickly with mutators. If With correct mutator placement, you can do a lot better. What are the perks and actives of Ritualist? But this is the build, by the way. Um, The perks of Ritualist are increased status damage. Any The prime perk is anytime you get a status kill, the status spreads to all other enemies in the area, and then you're... Hmm. Anytime you take a relic, it cures all statuses on you as well. It's status stuff. The purple glow around me is a bug. I need to use a different heart. <laughs> it's a bug with the void heart. Anytime you take the void heart, it does that purple glow. But right now, it's a visual bug where it's just staying active even after that goes away. To get it, I can show you where to get it after this. If you just stay and watch. Yeah, feedback harmonizer is the best the best mutator combo in the game for all mod builds. Almost almost all mod builds. It just gives the fastest mod region. A little close to be activating it. Oh, damn it. Is it over? Yeah, mod regen relics. I I run one mod regen relic, like a the relic fragment. I run mod decrease mod uh, requirement is what I run. 
Visual bug on Void Heart will be fixed next patch. It actually doesn't bother me. I, I think just people haven't never seen it before, so we're getting a lot of questions. I do, don't care about it, though. It looks good to me. I have a plasma cutter and an AoE handgun with blast status. Nice, nice. All right, what did we want to see? I got a couple of questions. Okay, you wanted me to show you where to get the class, which I can do in the next area. Um, and use a status build. Okay. So for bosses, we're using the corrupted because the status build is broken right now and it's it's too stupid. You can insta-kill everything, so. We're not using that one on boss. Also, we're testing corrupted weapons, so I can't use it. But I will run my status build in this area because it's actually pretty good for getting through too. Is there a community Discord server for this game? Not sure if you missed me asking. Oh, uh, yes, there is. It's the Remnant 2 Discord server. My challenger. Challenger increases all damage by 35% when you're up close. This does include status. As well as increasing melee damage, which is how we activate the Energized Nequil. Usually that activates the frogs below. I wonder if it did. Oh yes, I could show the pig as well. I really wasn't aware that that guy was there. Test the difference between Challenger, Medic, Alchemist, Explorer. Yes, Challenger is better. If you're going to be up close. If you're not going to be up close, then anything else works. Medic and Alchemist all have both have the same, the same damage. Uh, Explorer is not... It's like you can use it. It's not bad or good for something like this. I think it does increase all damage, so... But if you're going to be meleeing, which is how I set this up, because of Tainted Blade, then you want to be up close anyway. Every time I see you hit one of those balls, this reminds me, uh, when do we get a gray health build? Ah, yes. Gray health build. <laughs> Maybe when they're viable. I mean, they freaking suck. <laughs> Alchemist is never bad. Al Al Alchemist is a very good buff. Um, it provides a lot of things other than its buffs is the deal. Challenger is mainly for damage and defense, usually. All right, Ritualist class. We're almost there. Almost there. All right, ready? I'm going to show you where the... 
ritualist class is. There's a checkpoint right here. This is the second mini checkpoint in the area. After you get after you get done with the boss. After the first boss, you want to get to the second mini checkpoint. And you want to go to where you see this dead sea serpent thing. That's right here. It's always here. And you're going to jump off this onto this boat right here. Come all the way over here. Go in here, actually. Now what you gotta do is kill that witch and the pig and the item is behind her. Or, you can wait. Yeah, dark dark pack is pretty trash. It is useless, dude. It's so bad. Just give her a minute. I don't think I have to get closer. Maybe I do. I don't remember. There we go. I think you just have to aggro it. And then it dies in one hit. I think you just have to aggro it. But then when you kill it, you'll get a mutator. And then the class item is right here. For the ritualist class. So our two trailer looks good. I'm ready for it. Heck yeah, David. Looks fantastic, man. It looks fantastic. This is the class, and then if you... Oh, I think you just have to walk up here. You just have to not kill the pig before. And then it'll give you the... Uh, the mutators. Well, I don't remember what mutator it is, though. Yeah, I think even if you made a gray health build, there would be no reason to take Dark Pact. I cannot think of a single use for it. So even do reduces gray health regenerate. It's only viable if you want to have gray health 100 percent of the time. But then why not just use the bitter memento? No one is coming out. No, it'll be a while though. Probably end of the year, if that. Anyway, this is my stash build for whoever's asking about stash builds. With my energizing neck clue. The trait that lets you wear heavier armor doesn't let you wear, like, the heaviest, but you just called strong back. It gives you an extra 15 in dodge weight threshold. That's the max it goes to. You don't get more than that, but it gives you a little bit more leeway. I solo currently, but start up a co-op playthrough soon. Multiplayer is tricky. Uh, I would recommend starting Handler. And going into Gunslinger as a secondary class for your f if you're going to start. Handler is really, really powerful in co-op because it can let the dog revive your teammates for you, which is just really nice. And Gunslinger will greatly improve the amount of ammo that your whole team has. So if you take both, you can be a really good support for your team while getting an incredible amount of range damage. 
Eventually, you'll move out of that when you make builds later on. But like for a first first beginning playthrough, new character starting out, that would be really good. This weapon right here is only on because I don't have a secondary equipped for this. Yeah, you could add Corrupted Root Pistol to this, too. I have not done that one yet. We're, we're finishing up Corrupted uh, Meridian. Someone wanted to see it, so I figured I'd do more. I wanted to test on Winter King. And then we'll do... We've actually got a couple more to test as well. We have plenty of time. But yeah, I've not used Corrupted Rune Pistol yet. Terrain's being goofy right there. Usually I would run Nebula in this right now. I don't have Nebula at the current moment because I turned it into the Corrupted version. But usually I would have Corrupted... Uh, I, would, I would usually have Nebula equipped. When, like, shots from these mobs are, like, one-hit one, in, one hit kill, yes, they're very strong. They have incredibly, incredibly high damage melee attacks. Bruin. Bruin will actually be a pretty good, uh... It'll be alright. There's better builds for Bruin, but it, it'll, it'll do fine. I can make it work. I can make it work. What was that? Audio was weird there. Sounded like there was an enemy on I me, mean, but there was not. Hey, you hate the Bruin? A lot of people hate Bruin. You know what's funny? The first day Bruin came out, I did the DLC with a guy named Hadriel. He's the guy who gave me the initial idea for the Root Doctor build. Um, and I played through the DLC the first time with him. Me and him got to the Bruin. We were doing the DLC for the first time with a melee only build. I mean, we were using mods and stuff for support. But it was a melee mainly build. And... We beat it in three tries in Apocalypse easy because Bruin is a stamina fight especially the first couple times you fight him the biggest trouble you're going to have is that you're going to run out of stamina fast and you don't know why that's like the first problem you run into there's more but that's the first one and so with the bisected ring that I always run for my melee builds it negated almost what 50% of the difficulty of that boss fight and so we thought he was actually really awesome and not too bad and then we watched some other people having issues with him and we we're like oh <laughs> maybe the stamina was a, a helpful thing like bold jameson the first time i went and watched his stream he was streaming it for the first time and he was running his spore bloom swap but he has a lot of trouble with the brewing because he just kept running out of stamina um the second problem you run into with Bruin is that all of his attacks will still hit you even if you dodge, if you dodge backwards. This isn't always the case, but the timing is very specific on your dodge backwards. 
So what you want to do is dodge forwards towards him, and then you have much more leeway. So that helps a lot. And then the third problem you have, which is unavoidable, is the spears. The spears are unfortunately often a bit RNG based. Sometimes they just kind of get you when they really shouldn't. There are strategies to deal with the spears, but they're not always perfect. But yeah, I just thought that was funny. We thought he was really easy the first time. And everybody was like, oh, it's so tough. I hate this boss. And we're like, why? And then we realized we had infinite stamina. And we we're like, oh, well, that made it way easier. And also, we're running Goal Serum. It makes him ten times easier. Ten times easier. Goal Serum, 60 seconds of negative 50% stamina cost. Game changer for Bruin. The entrance to this fight often doesn't let me use my mods. See, you can actually dodge early. me off a little bit here. That's it. Bruins annoying about steel katana. Okay, okay. I told you, Bruin is, Bruin is a gimmick, basically. I mean, he's not a gimmick, but he is. The whole idea is dodge forward towards him, and you need to manage your stamina. Once you have those two out, the only thing you worry about is the spears, and you can kind of maneuver those a little bit. He's a very, very hard fight. Um, but once you have those two aspects down, he is so much easier. And that's why I like him quite a bit, is uh, after I mastered him, he's just really fun to fight, because you just roll past him. I will say this, though. Fitness is a trait that you have that makes you roll longer, like your rolls are longer, you just dodge further, is very good against Bruin. I believe I have that equipped. It makes it very easy to dodge his attacks. You have a lot more leeway. Without it, you have to make some more precise dodges past him. Waiting for the cube gun? Yeah, you know I'm delaying. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, man? Uh, what are you talking about? I thought we already ran the cube gun. What? Were you not here for that sorrow? Did you miss that? Gunslinger and Hunter are always a go-to. Gunslinger, Hunter, Gunslinger, Challenger, Gunslinger, Handler are the three to pair with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I gotta be done for the day, guys. Sorry I didn't get to it. 
My bad. I was gonna try it, but... I... Just don't have the time to use it, man. Yeah, look at this all the street. I definitely remember running this sorrow. I mean, I don't know. Either I'm crazy or you're crazy, and I'd like to think it's you. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there he is. I don't see you ain't living that down. Fair enough, fair enough. Save the best for last. This is this is facts. You're right. The cube gun is just too good. I'm just I'm just uh Honestly it's a skill issue. That's what everybody says, right? It's a skill issue. The cube gun's actually S tier, which is we're all having skill issues with it. I think these are facts, honestly. We just gotta find out what to do with it, and then it will perform well, okay? It's been confirmed by the devs. They put it in the game for a reason, alright? That's all I'm trying to say. In the game for a reason. Now, they also put Anguish in the game for a reason, and it sucked for the longest time, so I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, everything's viable. Some are just more viable than others. So true. Well, that's what happened. Helix was bouncing off of that pot. I didn't see that. I really like this purple glow effect. It's fun. It means nothing, but it's fun. How did I not aggro the other guy? Yeah, Corrupted Meridian might actually be the best one, though. I think I like Corrupted Savior more, but th this thing is so insane, it's not even funny. It's not even funny. Well, I guess Sorrow t still technically does more damage. Does it have as much ease of use, though? I would say no. Like, in general, the Corrupted Meridian, you just kind of can use the mod whenever you want. With Corrupted Sorrow and Nebula, you both have to use them specifically. Like, Sorrow is way more usable than Nebula. But, even that one, you gotta get them 10 bolts out. And like we saw with Nightweaver, anytime she goes in the wall, it's gone. And I think it was the same with the Red Prince. Every time he leaves the fire phase, those are all gone. New visual effects and next patch cosmetics, yeah. That must be. It's the pre, uh, the pre, pre DLC. Blossom does look pretty cool. Got a lot of very visually appeal appealing areas, especially the DLC it looks very good.
My mod didn't activate. It froze me for half a second. I shot it off, but it, it didn't uh, it didn't go off. I think I wasn't aimed down slides fast enough. I think if we do this right, we can maybe avoid his phase, but I'm not sure. I, like, was halfway down zooming, and so I clicked the button, and I thought I'd shot the mod off, and then I didn't, so I went to reshoot it, and by that time, he'd already lasered me. That's a bummer. He got me on that one. He owned me. I deserved that. That was... That was a very fair death. I don't know how to do it. I act. I hit the hammer twice, but I think I did it too fast. Hardy and thick skin is pretty rough. I can't quite do enough damage to avoid that. Corrupted Meridian! She's a monster! She's a beast. Alright, we're done with that gun. That gun's uh, S tier, clearly. So, what do we have left? Oof. Big oof on that one. I need a weak spot boss. So I can use Corrupted Merciless. Um, and I need a... I don't even know. What do you even use this on? I gotta figure something out. Moments like that make me wish OTK's hammer had a hitbox on death animation? That would be so mean. Definitely 1 and 2 are best form uh, from the original batch. Yeah. For sure. Love your streams. Keep up the hard work. Thanks, Juan. Appreciate that, man. Alright, well, what do we want to do now? Because I, I need a new... I need a new boss. Uh, I'm trying to think of what weapon I want to use first. Technically, I could go for Corrupted Deceit. I know how to do the build, but I don't know who to use it against. Talratha, maybe? Talratha's a very, very good Corrupted Deceit build. But what about the other bosses? I could do it. I could pull it off. Let's go Corrupted Deceit. Lost for Phelan. I could do Phelan after this. I'll do Phelan for... Corrupted Rune Pistol, maybe? I'm not even sure. Yes, this is, uh... This is the footage that I'm recording for my Corrupted Gun tier list. So, the idea of today is I'm going to use every single Corrupted Gun and get the footage. I already know how they all play. Um, the problem was I wanted to also try and rank them with... See what you guys thought, too. Because this is a hard list to rank. Because, like, there's really, really good options. And there's really, really terrible options. So. 
And it's going to be very hard to rank them. Uncorrupted Nebula, if you don't get that. Yes, uh, true. I need to not get eaten. Bosses I know the least mechanics are the Fei Lin, Fei Rin bosses. First off, never do the Dark One. There, there's no reason to ever do the Dark One other than once. It's a way worse fight. You can't see anything. Because here's the thing. Both Fei Lin and Fei Rin are the exact same. Everything about their fights are the exact same, other than minor differences. So, for example, the orbs spawn in a little bit differently. A couple of their melee attacks are slightly different. But the idea behind everything is the exact same. Um, the main difference, and why I never do the Dark Realm, is you cannot differentiate between any of the colors. Everything in that fight is gray, silver, and glass. And so all of it looks the exact same. And so when he goes to his last phase where he teleports away, goes invisible where you can't hit him, I can never tell where he's at. I lose him every time. Versus the golden phase, or the light phase, where it's still easy to lose him, but at least you could tell what's going on. There's a sword here, there's orbs here, you know. It's much more easy to see what's going on in that fight. You and your lighting problems? I do have lighting problems sometimes. I, some of my fights are very weird with the lighting problems. That is true. What's up, turtle? What was the the one? It was the custodian's eye. The lighting is just way off. All right, if we get a hatchery, this is gonna be really rough. I have an idea though. If we get a hatchery, I will build a build specifically to use corrupted deceit on him, even though it is a terrible idea. Oh, I guess you do need to do them twice. That's true. Yes, I will try to fight Fai Lin and I will explain the mechanics. You're going to have to remind me when I get there, though. But I will do my best to do that. He's a tricky one. He's actually probably one of the harder bosses in the game. I would maybe... I don't know about top five, but he's up there. He, he's pretty tough. He is a very challenging boss. I think I got Abomination, which is even better. Lab farm working well? Sick. Yeah, I was gonna say, that that method should work pretty darn good. I didn't even think about that until Sorrow mentioned it. There's a lot of stuff in this game I just completely forget about. Because if I don't use it too much, which is that right there. I use it a couple of times, but not very often. So if you go to the Labyrinth, you, you get the World Stone, right? The very first World Stone. If you go up the left stairs... There will be a couple small cube enemies that you kill, and then there will be a large one. If you kill the large one, it's a 100% drop rate for a Luminite Crystal, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's 100% drop rate. And so you can just farm out Luminite Crystals very, very quickly. And either use them to upgrade or sell them, because they sell for, I think, a thousand. You can get a lot of scrap pretty quick that way. If you really need it. Wait, is this Aberration? Oh, I haven't fought this guy in forever. He kind of sucks. He kind of sucks a little bit. I was going to try and stagger him, and uh, he did not stagger one time. There we go.
I was trying to just eat a hit or two, stagger him, and then I would heal and then just beat the tar out of him, and then he just never staggered for the first half of the fight. If we're ever trying to get this boss, I have to realize I didn't get the ring behind the door he unlocks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the door up here? Is that what you're talking about? Is that what you're talking about, Jefferson? This door right here? Where is it at? In order to get this, you have to spawn the aberration and walk into this hallway. I believe all of these doors open with the aberration is active and the bots that are inside attack you and then you can grab it, I think. That's another one I haven't done in a while, but I, I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. And if you die, the aberration stays there so you can redo it and whatnot. I'm pretty sure. Sara said that's correct. Alright, sweet. That's a ghosty boy. Ghosty Boy is dead. Done it for randoms like 50 times. Oh, have you? I got you. Well, that makes sense why you remember it, huh? Just trying to find the boss. Aha! There he is. Okay, you ready? This is gonna be a tricky one. I have to create a deceit build. Corrupted deceit build. Instantaneously. And to get it to work, because there was kind of some weirdness with it earlier. Alright, do I have a free loadout? This is Corrupted Nebula. Yes, this one right here. We'll do Hunter. Gunslinger. We'll do... We don't need Butcher's Fetish. That's the biggest change. I just returned to the game after playing for a bit. Yeah, no problem, dude. Um, you know what? I've got an idea. This might actually work. I, I never used it like this, but it could be a good idea. Maybe a bit redundant, but... All right, deceit. Where are you, buddy? Corrupted deceit. We may need mod regen. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. So we'll take that off and run. And try running this. See if it works. Where is it? Ah. I'm going to have to change all of these to ranged. Range crit chance, range crit damage, weak spot damage. I'll run the other setup. Where are you, buddy? There you are. 
What do we got for traits? I need regrowth, so that's a no-go. The swiftest, fitness, and the last thing that I want is flashcaster. Actually, corrupted rune pistol could be good here. Now that I think about it. Oh, hold shift. I ah, know, I forget. Oh, you were telling Jefferson, gotcha. Yeah, if you want to insert all of your traits at the same time, you get to hold shift on PC. And then click it. I did not know that for the longest time. That scene might break that. See, better than deceit now. Gotta hit his brain, can hard his brain. I've never seen that good a tracking on that attack. Seems like a good one for a boss that has, like, big weak spot. This gun is, uh, for those who don't know, this is Corrupted Deceit. So, the problem with Corrupted Deceit for the longest time is that Deceit was better in every single way. I don't care what anybody will tell you. There are several content creators that thought Corrupted Deceit was better. I disagree wholeheartedly. The reason because of that was because of one amulet and paired up with Favor and Sigil would give you unlimited mod regen and more damage than Corrupted Deceit could reach, okay? Now, after the recent patch, they modified mod regen to the point where Favor and Sigil got nerfed. And so, as a consequence, original Deceit got nerfed and now cannot regen mod energy as fast. The thing is, the benefit of Corrupted Deceit is that it has less mod requirements. Which means it just makes up for all the downsides of Deceit now. And so it's just better. It does less damage than the original Deceit build could do, but it's just better. I think Sequence Shot's pretty good on it too. But the thing about Deceit and Corrupted Deceit, both of them, is that they create their own weak spots. So you actually don't even need a weak spot. I'll show you on Talrotha. Abomination's a bad test because he 
takes less damage when you hit his armor, no matter what. He's a boss that has an armor mechanic. Sheen, what are your thoughts on Corrupted Cube Gun? It is a worthless pile of crap right now. No joke. It's worthless right now. It's a piece of garbage. Does not benefit a single build. Also, it doesn't work correctly. So whenever it's fixed, it might actually work. It might be good. <laughs> yeah, I'm still going to use it. It just doesn't work right now. The bullets stop penetrating enemies. Uh, because they won't, they won't damage an enemy if two cubes are hitting the same enemy at the same time. So half of the bullets that you shoot at an enemy don't do any damage, basically. That's how I understand it. No, this is the wrong one. I actually really, really like how it fires. It's a very cool gun. I like the idea. The mod? Pointless. Uh, it's a pretty stupid mod. But the gun itself is very cool. It's just not good right now. Yeah, don't, don't even waste the corrupted shards. Not worth it, for sure. Not worth it. Only people who need to grab it are content creators making goofy weird stuff with it. <laughs> That's about it. Other than that is a non-essential item. I hope we get the eye. The eyeball will be much easier to use Deceit on. Uh, corrupted Deceit. Corrupted C will be very difficult to get Astropath. That weapons mod does not really work well for agile bosses. Not really working too great. Come on, give me Spectrum. Give it to me. I'm not gonna look. I'll do it. Come on, give me something good. Yes! Let's go! The RNG is in my favor. It's all about the it's all about the preparation. If you don't you don't look at it, you don't think about it. Well, I was thinking about it, but you get the point. I willed it and it was so. The facts. You're welcome. I did. I manifested my own reality. I like. I like how that's phrased. My thing about Corrupted Deceit is I feel like it's... I feel like it's easy A tier. It's not S tier. Because, again, Deceit was S tier. It's... It no longer is. Corrupted Deceit cannot be S tier because its mod is so finicky. I would... I think it's an A. I would not put it any lower than A. But it's definitely not S. Granny got all the corrupted sh weapons in like a day. Dang, that's impressive. Naruto usually have some decent RNG when it comes to getting the right bosses. I'll get the, the opposite boss I didn't get last time. Sometimes. Every once in a while, though, I get... The Astropath four times in a row and it irritates me. Yeah. 
Rune Pistol actually works pretty well in this build, too. I mean, 10% more damage. I feel like Corrupted Rune Pistol is A, too. Like, it's not S, because it doesn't do... A... The only thing it does for a lot of builds is just provide damage. Kill Aberrations to leave the shards in the ground? Nice. Here we go, boys. You ready for this? About to go down. If he doesn't die in four seconds, we're in trouble. <laughs> when he summons his little guys, we're in serious trouble for this guy. Ah, uh, I could do it. I'm gonna try something though. I'm gonna try a sequence shot instead. I it'll, for a while it was better to run that, but I don't know if it is anymore. No, I'm not. Secret shot. It's not good there. Nope. Secret shot got changed. I don't think it's as good for this anymore. I mean, it might be. Hard to tell. what I mean? It, it's the new deceit. That did not go well. I tried reloading like four times. It wouldn't let me. I tried reloading so many times, or getting my ammo box so many times, and then I just kept getting stopped at the last second. Yeah, I mean, I will say this. I will say this. With this specific setup, it does less damage than original Deceit, but feels very similar. So, I'm actually kind of okay with it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I like battery or supercharge better. Supercharge might be, might be way better for the shots. You might get in more. We could try it. I mean, we got Talrotha left, so. The annoying thing about it is that Deceit always worked. This gun is not going to work on things like Annihilation, where he moves and then he just added the sword mod and then it just it does no benefit for you. His favorite sigil really help? Yeah. I think so. It gives enough mod regen, I believe. We could test that too if you want. The lodestone ring? What even is that?
Increases damage dealt to eliminated enemies. Oh. Why? Does the sword mod illuminate enemies? I think that only works with that crown, doesn't it? That shouldn't work. If anything, I'd go... Ring of Flawed Beauty, I think. Crown and flashlight. Flashlight counts? Really? That counts as eliminating the enemy? That's weird. I never even tried to use that ring, so <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I saw 5% and I said, yep, that's too low. Don't need that. It's really stupid, actually. If they wanted it to be an essential item, like, a, at least a usable item, they should have made it 20%. The 20% damage increase, but you have to illuminate the enemy. That would be worth it. A 5% means nothing. I think it's just, like, a fun... haha -ha item type thing. Illuminated enemy for, like, the most part, as far as I know, or I knew, was that crown. You had to wear that uh, lodestone crown, and then it would light him up. I didn't know the flashlight worked. What did I say the other day about the soundtrack? It goes away so quick. It's absolute fire in that specific location. I'll be honest right now. I feel pretty cool. I did not expect him to show up. I was not prepared for him to show up. But when he showed up, I wasted his freaking face, dude. How many times did I even shoot him? Like four times? That was entertaining. Flashlight does work, just don't know the range. Gotcha. I mean, anything's gotta be better than the helmet, right? The helmet's like, what, five meters? A hey, uh, fetid wounds on the runic pistol kind of goes hard. Fetid wounds on anything is good, though. Kind of a weird mutator for them to add, because clearly it was going to be better than almost any other mutator in the game. When is adding corrosion to get 10% more damage not a good thing, you know? The answer is never. I was about to say, if he sees me, that's actual hacks. He did see me. Weird. 
The enemy's right before him, didn't he? I don't think so. I think it only counts as 5%. Or, uh, no, corrosion. Uh, sorry, I was thinking of something else. Corrosion is only a 10% bonus, no matter how many stacks you have. If the enemy has acid on them, they take 10% more damage. Stacks are irrelevant. What's up, Tran? How you doing, man? I give this gun an A still, I think. Uh, tough thing. I feel like both corru Corrupted Rune Pistol and Corrupted Deceit are both A. They feel like that's a good spot for me. Also, Talratha is about to get literally dropped. You guys said you wanted me to try something else, though, didn't you? Ring of Flood Beauty? And... Instead of battery, we can run... Supercharger. Make it shoot faster. What's up, hole? Spider Man, you hop back on? Cool. Love the sound of the corrupted rune pistol. It's so clunky. Or chunky? It is. It is. It's like. Do, 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 do. But it shoots energy blasts. So it's like, why does it sound like that? So you have found I dig it too. Better than the original. The original was kind of goofy. I actually like the original style of fire. It just wasn't a good gun. Still isn't. Which one would you play first? I mean, I would play Hour 2 first, obviously, but I'll, their roguelite one uh, is the only one that I know anything about. There's a third game they have. I, They didn't talk about it at all. All I know is Hour 2 and that roguelite game. Which I will play. It sounds cool. That's every boss with empathy. Yeah, I saw that coming. A, a pretty bad set of events there. I was, I needed to dodge one more time, and I started to attack. I was hoping that he wouldn't roll as far as he did, and he just rolled right to the good position. Yeah, you actually don't need favor and sigil. Weird. Yeah, Wither Bloom. That one looks really good. Lost in Prayer, I don't know anything about. The Wither Bloom one looks really cool, though. I don't know which one was the Roguelite, is the problem. Never the biggest fan of Gunslinger, so when I did this build a while ago, I used Challenger. I I agree. I think it's a personal preference. I personally don't like Challenger with a gun like the seat. I just don't. Not sure why. Yeah, this thing is crazy good. Uh, it looks like we don't actually need... How much crit chance do we have, though? We have five... Might have enough crit chance to run something else is the thing. Maybe not. I like that quite a bit. That might be my new uh, deceit build. You can't use it against these though. It just doesn't work.
It actually lasts long enough to where it can give you the mod energy back pretty quickly. As long as you have supercharger on there. Yeah. See what I mean? That... This was a really bad change in my mind. I just think it was a bad change. They they needed to to keep Faerun's sigil to the point where it could regen Deceit's mod. Deceit now is a useless gun because I'm getting very similar damage numbers and it's more it's easier to use this way. They literally ruined Deceit with that change. I know it was unintentional. There's no way they meant that to happen. But it was a bad change. It might be the worst of the new uh, patch. All right, well, that's Corrupted Deceit. What do we have next? We've got Corrupted Merciless, which requires specific bosses. So until we get those specific bosses, let's run... Shouldn't have to reload like original Deceit? I mean, I don't... If I activate the mod, it... Uh... If I activate the mod, it reloads the gun. But the problem is you have to use... You know what I mean? Like, you have to shoot enough bullets and then reload again so you eventually do have to reload let's use yeah excuse me um we'll try and do a yesha run and get mother mind and the ravager because i know i used this gun on ravager before up until then we'll mess with corrupted aphelion i think depends on bosses you can bring it back right after you hit the enemy Yes, you can. Uh, you can indeed, if you do it correctly. You have to leave it on the boss. Basically, what you have to do is you have to leave it on the enemy long enough to get it to where when you pull it back, you have enough time to fully regen it. It, it is a thing you can do. It's just very tough to get the timing correct. And I like to leave it on a little bit longer for some reason. Uh, when I just did that, I was using Supercharger, yes. I think Supercharger is better. A battery is really good for high damage, but I think because of how Corrupt Deceit works, I think that Supercharger is just better. You want it to fire really fast, which is what that lets it do. Alright, peeps, I gotta use the restroom, and then we will test, um, the next two Corrupted Weapons. But I gotta use the restroom real quick, so I will be right back. Give me a couple of minutes. that perfect timing on the music right there oh. how good i am man 
What's up, Tran? You asked if I bought Dragon's Dogma 2? No, I have not bought it. I, I'll buy it the day before it comes out. Oh, this place is up. I am getting it, but I, I always wait to buy the games I play till the day before. ENC with a Felion can work really well. Just kill you with at any range. Wait, why? Oh, does it apply fire DOT to you? Mm. Why would that activate ENC on you, though? Weird. Very odd. Didn't know about that. Dragon Saga comes out, what, 22nd or 24th? One of those two. Oh, it hurts a lot? Yeah, yeah, true. I let him hit me. How dare I. How dare I let him touch me? What are the odds that we get Mother Mind? I'm, I'm just thinking in my head right now. Like, they're pretty low, right? They gotta be pretty darn low. I don't know what I'm excited for Dragon's Dog. <laughs> that's to be released in 12 days. No, I will buy it when it comes out. Uh, I can't wait for a sale. As a content creator who is actually going to create content for the game, I have to buy it when it comes out. I don't have that option to not. Don't have that option, unfortunately. I want to play it anyway, so I don't mind. But I get waiting for a sale, I really do. Two weeks. Two weeks. I mean, a little under two weeks, I guess. Well, Keula, I cannot use that build on. I could try and use Corrupted Aphelion. Maybe. Cube Gun could actually maybe do something. Of all of the fights, I feel somewhat comfortable using Cube Gun and Keula. That's real iffy, though. That's real iffy though. How hard do we think this dungeon is gonna be? I don't think I used status last time I went through it. Yeah, I definitely did not. Stupid ninja. Well, I don't even know what you gotta call these guys. Like, what? Ninja gazelles, I guess? That's kind of what they look like. 5,000 damage. Why does it crit so often? That's my thing. Almost every single time it activates, it crits. Weird. Ugh. Yawning, man. I'm not even tired. Just yawning over and over again. You can you probably want a boss that has no weak spots. Okay, it was good. This is very true. 
I think I can make it work. I think I can make it work. Because Kalo doesn't have as much health either. So if I need some leeway, I feel like I can do it. I hit everybody. Everybody in the world just got annihilated by them. It'd be good since the AoE travel cubes can make her hit her tentacles more than once. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I can make it work. We had that build set up somewhat the other day where you're using some. No way that didn't hit. That blocked by a wall? Alright, we gotta enter the fight and die because I have to recreate a build. Pretty cube gun. Corrupted cube gun, that is. Ha! They think I'm gonna use elemental damage? That's funny. She dropped me fast. One hit. Just cut me in half. All right, let's see. Hmm, yes. I believe we decided Gunslinger was, what, worthless? Here's, on, here's my idea. We're gonna run dog with hunter. Dog hunter, and then we're gonna run all crit stuff. I mean, if we don't crit, this thing's gonna do no damage. So we gotta have crit stuff, I think. And what? We'll do crit on that, and then atonement fold as well. With I think I needed that ring, didn't I? There's a ring. Overloaded. Micro compressor. Yeah, Dragon's Dogma is quite an old game at this point. And you need ingenuity and micro compressor because they did not test this gun at all when they made it. We're gonna rock LMG, I think. Actually, we'll just go Plasma Cutter, because it's fun. What do I want, guys? Flashcaster? I don't think so. We don't need ammo. We could go healing. Do that right there. Yeah, I do need healing anyway. I have the, the ring on. Okay. Melee stuff, which means we need to run... Crit. Crit. And... Re I, yeah, range damage should work. Should work. But work? That would have been a good one. I didn't think about it. I did not think about it. You ready? It's gonna be awesome. It's 
It's gonna be really good. Gun is clearly not working correctly. I think I was closer to her than usual, and the hitbox hit me later than it should have. Like, it it kills the boss, but this is one of the lowest health bosses in the game. This is terrible damage. What's up, Danny? How's it going? It's the easiest boss in the game health-wise, and it's this bad. Like, it just works, barely. Why'd she even do that? Did they give it no damage because it has infinite ammo? Something does feel very off about this damage. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. All 
I imagine Helldivers 2 will be now, for something at least. I just don't understand it. Like, what is its purpose? What is this thing? It doesn't crit every time. It does not crit every time. But it feels like it should crit more often than it does. Uh, I need to check its stats, actually. It has no crit chance on the actual gun itself. Or a weak spot. It has neither. It is not even a gun. This is not a weapon. It's an anomaly. Can confirm. Conjure a 5 meter anomalous cube room. Oh, here we go. When firing weapons that overheat, automatically generates missing reserve ammo per second. Wait, what? This is too confusing. There's two... They didn't... It's like one massive sentence. Conjures a cube, which grants allies an increase of heat, reduce heat generation per round when firing weapons that overheat by 15%, and automatically generates missing reserve ammo per second. It... is not supposed to be used as a gun. It's way worse than normal cube gun, yes. Normal cube gun is quite good. This gun is literally supposed to be used to give you ammo back. Meaning, you're not supposed to use it as a gun. You're supposed to use it as support. For your other gun. Which is stupid. I, I have no idea who designed this weapon. I... I don't think they understand how people are playing the game. No one's playing the game that way. No one is worried about ammo. I'm, I'm very confused about this. Yes, yeah, so there's not a single build in the entire game. I can't think of any build that would even be made in the future that would even want this. It needs a crit chance. If it can't hit weak spots, it needs a crit chance. But they gave it no crit chance. Like, what kind of... What kind of balance is that, bro? The only benefit is infinite ammo. But the regular cube gun already had infinite ammo. Amount of ammo. Hey, buddy, pop your mod so I can run all the way there. Stand in it for 20 seconds to get my ammo back. It's very efficient. I think it's the new strategy, actually. Not only that, but it kills your dog. This is why I switched off a dog, I remember now. The orbs that you're shooting, or the cubes, actively damage your dog, watch. That is why I took the dog off. Because he is worthless. Hmm. I mean, we don't need him anyway, but... I don't know, guys. I don't know. There's not a single class that, like, improves this. That's the problem. That no class just works with this. I mean, we could go Gunslinger. It doesn't work at all either. It's like, what the heck is this... weird thing that we have here? Oh, it doesn't reach in the turret either? That sucks. I 
I don't get it. Next patch, they're, come, they're gonna come out and be like, It was bugged! It was supposed to be doing 50 times damage! And we're gonna be like, Okay, did you change its mod? This is like the summoner class all over again. Something that exists in the game that does not make any sense to exist in the game and is completely worthless. That's what this is. This is the summoner prime perk all over again. I'm a little baffled. It's quite the conundrum, I would say. This game local co-op? This game cannot local co-op. This is uh, online co-op only. Hell Diver is too better than the first one? Yes, by far. Just because it's more fun. The first one was really, really good too. And it's more fleshed out because it's been out for a long time, but this one's more fun. Or uh, Hell Divers 2 is more fun. It's just got a more interesting uh, play style because it's third person. And an Archon Explorer build with it. Plop all my stationary buffs and expect people to walk in and get all the buffs. Nice, nice. I mean, if you really, really think that your plasma cutter build sucks because you have too much heat generation, I guess. I mean, it helps, but... Hoping for hour two. What's up, Ray? We are getting an hour two. Did you see the trailer? We are indeed getting an hour two. Gun bums me out, man. Like, look at the seat generation. Does that seem that bad to you? I mean, that's what the band on, too. It almost runs out of ammo anyway. You need to stop. It just doesn't add up, dude. I need to know the thought process behind it. So I can understand. Just, I just want to know. I just want to know why you exist. Please tell me. I feel like if it went through walls, that would, that would be better. Because the original Cube Guns mod does go through walls, which this is basically based off of. Also, if it helps while you're inside the cube, you can't see anything. Everything is red. Okay, so this or uh, Corrupted Meridian. I think this beats Corrupted Meridian, honestly. Corrupted Meridian needs a buff. It's too weak. So uh, I can't one shot a boss with it. So I can't one shot a boss with it. And this this is too strong. Clearly, doing way too much damage. Problem is, I really do want to like it. Like, it's really cool, and it just is, is a big pile of garbage. You guys ready? You guys ready? Cube, nice. It doesn't even block anything. 
It should block our range damage. Corrupted cube gun definitely needs some love. Using amplitude to buff the size of the cube room and then using plasma cutter inside seems to work. I am going to go ahead and say yes. That sounds like a viable strategy. I'm also going to respond with you don't need that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't need that. Like, the plasma cutter's heat generation isn't that bad of a thing. I mean, LMG, maybe. We could test it with the LMG, see if it affects it. Uh, when I get back to the range, I'll do that. Because the LMG actually has a pretty aggressive heat generation. The problem is, most of the time, people are going to use a plasma cutter, and its heat generation is minimal. Also, since its mod reduces it, it just... I don't- I think this- the idea behind the gun is fine. It's that we don't have enough heat generation weapons for this to be... ...anything. It, it just doesn't matter. We would need, like, two or three more heat generation weapons to be like, Okay, well now I- I got these guns that I can't use. Especially if they were more aggressive. Like, the way the- the Corrupted Cube Gun is, it's so aggressive... ...that its mod actually does benefit itself. in terms of heat generation. But then its mod also doesn't benefit itself by not regening its own ammo because it has infinite ammo. And then every other gun in the game's heat generation is perfectly fine. You don't need this, so. I think the idea is, is definitely cool and at least somewhat somewhat usable. But then in the current state of the game, it's just not worth it. I have no idea what categories are even in the Game Awards. I love the fire mode. That's the problem. I really like this fire mode. If it did double the amount of crit that it does, it needs a crit modifier. Currently, it's kind of like a blanket slate. It just has nothing going for it. No weak spot, no crit, none of that stuff. Wait, hold ever so? Yes, you can. Game playable with a GTX 1650? I have no idea. I'm I'm not familiar with that, but I'm I imagine it would. You can lower the settings to potato and play on most oh, things. How much does a mod cost? a thousand too. this everything about this gun just does not make any sense if it needs to be a support item it should not be a thousand mod requirement oh my word this this weapon is just so poorly balanced it's insane it's absolutely insane we thought anguish was bad when it came out this is far worse Tried to run the spirit healer. I guess spirit healer is kind of a cool idea if you're going full support. Because let's think about it. If we're if we're wanting to regen mods, right? The fastest way to regen mods is with feedback and harmonizer. Harmonizer we could technically use. Um 
We have to use very specific mods. Feedback is unusable because the mod itself doesn't deal any damage. So it's not going to regen anything. Spirit healer is usable other than the mod requirements a little too high. We could try corrosive uh, fetid wounds. I don't feel like fetid would be that good though. Whenever you take it off... Let's say I take this off uh, and I put on a different mutator. Anytime you do that, it's heat generation becomes so aggressive that it's barely usable. Maybe that's how they want you to use it, though? Maybe they want you to only shoot five shots? Switch. That does give it some use. I mean, we're more or less just using fetid wounds, but... That does give it more crit chance. Which is at least valuable. You don't have to spam it as much as I was. So you could definitely take off the mutator. Battery? Yeah, I can't waste spot again. Fetid is good. Fetid is good. It actually does okay damage. It does passable damage with fetid wounds. And then I can actually make use of its mod as well. So this feels slightly better. But then again, we're also just exploiting Fetid, which you could do with any other gun. Let's see, though. We got the... Uh, good old Legion. Let's see what happens. The whole idea of heat generation is kind of weird because there just really isn't a lot of times where heat generation benefits you. The thing that annoys me the most is the box from the mod ends and there's like two second delay before you can regen mod power for it again. Oh really? I didn't even notice. Yeah, you're right. Might actually be the worst weapon in the entire game. What the heck? If they want to use it like this, the box should at least follow you around. Like the original cube gun. It's almost like they looked at the cube gun and said, This is great. What if it sucked? Because every positive that the cube gun has, they took it and gave this a negative for it. Every single one. It makes no sense. Hmm. 
It still overheats pretty quick. You just can't stay in this box. That's the whole point, and you just can't do it. Because the thing with Legion is usually you would you would stand at this corner and you'd shoot him and he wouldn't be able to hit you, but because the cubes hit the wall, I have to stand out here to where he'd be able to hit me. Still overheated it. I'm baffled right now, dude. This is the worst gun in the game. It actually just does nothing. What's up, Limpy? Amplitude makes it better or bigger. I guess that'd be something, but that's it. That's enough testing for the cube gun. That is not worth anything. That is a uh, F tier all the way. That is not worth using ever. I mean, I already knew that, but the more I use it, the more I'm like, yo, this thing's bad. Here we go. For a corrupted gun, does it make sense? Maybe the infinite ammo for an early build when you're first starting out? Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like, for an early build, okay, maybe that's not a bad idea, because you don't have the rings to help with the heat generation, and you don't have and you don't have enough ammo. So you're that'll fix both your problems. Well, guess what? No new player is getting the corrupted weapon, so. And also, a regular cube gun does exactly that anyway other than the heat generation
Like I said, I... It's gonna get fixed. They'll do something to it, because it's so bad, it's not even... It's not even a gun at this point. It's just a liability. But... I just would like to know what the thought process was, because it's really interesting to see that they... Someone playtested it and said, I like this, and I think it is good enough. So I'm wondering what... How they used it. Because clearly they used it a different way than I did. Know if they'll add more corrupted weapons soon? No, they won't add any for a while. They just added the... The five new ones recently, last week. I was just come in using a support build and say you used it. Yeah, true. I used it. Woo. Totally. Nah, it's fine. I need a Ravager for the corrupted. Uh... Corrupted, merciless, anyway. I'm hoping to run aberrations here after the event ended. I haven't come across one all week. I had two today. But I don't see very many usually either. I did see two of them today, though. Oh, that was Sometimes when I do that, my brain works too fast, and I don't click the buttons fast enough, and so then I'm, I skip one, and I have to go double-check. Look at that. The heat generation is just so aggressive. Even... Watch. No, that yeah, that's what it's off. I mean, that's how many shots you get with nothing. Five total shots. Five total shots with max crit is enough to kill barely a single enemy. And that is a very small enemy. So far, one of our best range builds has been uh, the Crypt of Deceit, when that kind of just destroyed. I did not expect that. Alright, well, the good news is most of this build stays the same. You took one shot and the game crashed? That's funny. Game's like, no, dude, don't be doing this. This is a mistake. You know it. All right. Um, Ring of Flawed Beauty is actually fine here. I've got to run Abrasive with probably Akari. No, I don't remember if I used battery or not. I think I was using battery. Now that I think about it, Bola Weaver would go pretty hard on this. Increase fire rate of this weapon after using a mod. Increase the mod generation. No, because it's a duration based mod. I take that back. Use B. Sorry. Momentum wouldn't be that good. Uh, technically, Fetid Wounds would be okay. It does bleed. I'm kind of liking the idea of using Fetid Wounds. That's what, 10% extra crit chance with 10% more damage? I like that. We'll use this again. Actually, if we use Harmonizer... Get that mod back faster. That'd be really good. What do I have for traits was? Fitness? That'll work. How you rate Dragon's Dogma 1? I don't know. Probably... 9 out of 10, somewhere around there. 8 out of 10, maybe.
Are right, we ready for this? I don't know if this skill is the right skill for what I'm doing. Bet it seems pretty good here. That's real crappy. See what I'm saying though? He does it every time. The weapon's good, but it's a lot of reloading. And it's another one that only works on a couple of bosses. And it doesn't even work that well, because it's too easy to miss. Thought I could kill him. Moved his head. I thought for sure I'd get him in that last shot, but I got cocky. Got real greedy on that one. I usually don't get greedy there, but I really wanted to get him. The game said, not today. The problem is, is its usability is quite low, and there just aren't enough situations where this benefits you over something else. It's too many bosses that are going to screw you up. And there's a couple that you could uh, you could do this with. Most, I mean, agile enemies move every time you're about to shoot them, so that becomes problematic here. Basically, how this gonna works is... In its main fire form, you get three bullets, and that's it. But if you use its mod, for however long the duration of the mod is, as long as you hit three weak spots in a row, it will reload for you. Or instantly. Miss one weak spot, and it stops happening. It's got really high weak spot damage. And it also inflicts bleed automatically. So you want to use Abrasive Whetstone because it already inflicts bleed. Um, with no other mutator or nothing. So it's very good that way. But look, I missed one time and I still have to reload, so... <laughs> I got him back that time. It's an okay gun. The, the problem is, when it's good... 
any time that it is good, there's other stuff that's better. And that really is the issue. Especially when you have something like Merciless, which you have to give up for this. And Merciless is far easier to use. Far easier. And automatically does bleed on basic primary shots. I think this is like... I don't know. I'd probably go C tier. I would say A tier in terms of damage and power, and then C tier in terms of usability and uses. Like, there's three bosses in the game you don't want to use this on. You don't really want to... I mean, Annihilation would be good for. Ravager, it's what I usually fight with. Um, and possibly Corruptor, but that's it. There's like three, four bosses in the game that this works on in total. It's got to be C tier for sure. It's got to be. It's like Nebula in a way, where it just as if there's no weak spot, it's just already useless. And if there is one, it just kind of feels off a little bit. Nebula was feeling the same way earlier. Remember, we were trying to use it, and it just it it messes up at the wrong time when you don't want it to, and then that's when you take damage. It's just inconvenient. Well, do I want to fight another boss with the Corrupted? Or no? I need to shoot something with the Rune Pistol. That's what I really need to do. But what? What time is it? Okay. Rune Pistol. What do I need to do with you, buddy? I ha- Oh, I have Corrupted Aphelion. I forgot. Corrupted Aphelion is a mod build every time, right? Let's make a mod build with that. I could probably modify a previous loadout here. I'm pretty sure we usually use it with Detonation Trigger. Let me just replace this with this and run. Feedback? Feedback's actually better for duration-based mods now. Generates 20% of single charge value as passive mod power for 10 seconds. Mod damage generates 10% of damage dealt as mod power. So Harmonizer might be better? Just to increase its damage? Maybe not. Maybe it is still better to run feedback. We could try Energize Necklace. I want. I'll see what it does. It might work. <laughs> might work. I don't know what to pair it with though. Ooh, Regular Sorrow is pretty fire. Regular Sorrow. We'll upgrade it because I think it's back to level one. Regular Sorrow does count as explosion damage. So long. As well as I need to buy the Nebula and I believe I'm missing another gun as well. What you got? Cube gun. Because I ended up crafting those ones. Yeah. Hopefully I have enough iron. I haven't spent any in a long time. I should have plenty. Yeah, I got plenty of iron. What about galvanized? Oh, I have more galvanized than anything else. You saw that coming. So Alright, I finally have all my guns back up to plus 10. Let's test this on the firing range. It should be able to work. Time to fully regen it. Maybe because it hit more than one enemy. Do I want amplitude with this? Yeah, 
Yeah, Sorrow's really good now. Its ability to get its mod regen back while running Archon is really, really quick. Not applying a burn TOT, though. Did they change that? Really? Does not count as explosive damage anymore. I don't know if it, it got changed a while ago or what. I, it's been a while. We could technically pair this with Anguish, I guess. I could try Starshot. The problem is, this is a really big mod, and I kind of need... I need to regen faster than anything else. <sighs> this might work. Oh no, I took off detonation trigger. Oh, that's that's why I wasn't doing it. Well, that adds up. There we go. That's quite a bit better. It's not a lot of this is a, this is one of these weapons where it's just better crit. It's the same as corrupted sorrow. It's just better if you do crit because of how it works. But this will be fine. Um Feylin Feyrin maybe? I think I was supposed to do that last time. Didn't someone say they wanted me to do Feylin Feyrin and I forgot. Oh, well, I'll do it now. Oh, yeah, I was going to explain the mechanics. Good point. <laughs> that was a while ago. All right. Let's see if we get this gun to do anything. The build is familiar. We just ran the build itself. The, the majority of it. So it all should work well. Off to a pretty good start. Was oh, this the Void Heart build? It's funny. That is off to a pretty good start. So the Aphelion missed all of the enemies, did not hit a single one, and then I was not able to shoot before I got insta killed. I tried to get off the elevator because I was like, I don't want to walk, I don't want to wait on the elevator again, but it didn't happen. Okay, it does regen itself with feedback, it seems. So maybe Star Shot is a better idea. We'll have to try it and see. Well, that is working. I don't know how well it's working, but I did get it to work. Is this going to be good for Feyren? I have no idea. 
Most of the stuff, most of the corrupted weapons are doable against Faerun. It has this issue where it's hitting me more than it's hitting the enemy. It's not a very good mod. I don't think the Aphelion or the Corrupted Aphelion has good mods. I think they're both pretty bad. The problem is, is when you go anything explosion, it's tricky. Because we already have so many good explosive mods. That one like this, where it is good, it's got a lot of area of effect. Very, very much so in the horizontal department. It's going to hit a lot of stuff across the entire screen. You're going to run into trouble against single targets. I mean, it has... The, pro the problem is, like, every explosion in the game is able to do that once you have amplitude. So, is that really a benefit? I don't know. The other thing is you have to shoot it half the time. Those seem to be just a pretty significant damage. Very, I mean, I mean, maybe I could shoot it at the ground right under the feet. That could work. Let me try it with this guy. Alright, that might work a little bit better. It does still full, it's fully regens its own mod without stunning a little bit. I'm very confused by this patch, dude. This patch is so weird, man. They nerfed a bunch... They nerfed, like, weird items and then massively buffed feedback to the point where it doesn't matter that what they nerfed because feedback makes up for it. It's a little confusing. The problem I feel with both of the mods is they travel too slowly to be explosions. Yes, versus something like Corrupted Meridian that instantly shoots out and blows up multiple times. I agree. It's not that I don't like the new patch, it's just that it's very odd. They, it seems like they wanted to change things up, but they really didn't. They just made feedback even better. I wonder if they'll nerf feedback in the future. Feedback seems more required than it should be. Although there really aren't that many mods for... Or that many mutators for mods, so maybe it is something they wanted. It'd be. <clears throat> that could be. What you want to bet we get the Huntress? Good chance. Either Huntress... We've already had an Orphanage today, so I bet Huntress. Huntress is kind of weird with a build like this. Should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, it's Huntress.
What's up, Rose? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you. What strategy are you running? <laughs> That's fine. They are unique, are they not? <laughs> Oh, hey. He really is just they travel too slow, you know? not bad, it's just they travel slow enough to be a hindrance to you. But that really isn't ideal. At least you can still regen it pretty quick, because that was kind of the only benefit of this gun. I have no idea if I hit anything. I don't think I did. You know what I wish, though? I wish the primary fire was better. Because I really do like the primary fire. If you set it up for a crit build... It just does so mediocre. It's not that it does bad. It's fine. It's passable. But it just doesn't do that good. Very meh. Well, let's see how the fight against her actually goes. What's up, A? Is it possible to kill the Huntress before she reaches her garden? I don't think so. Me and Chaos became... We came very, very close one time with a dual Spectral Blade build with uh, four times Boar. We got really close and still weren't able to pull it off. As soon as you get to a certain threshold, she starts to leave. And then most of the time, you don't have enough damage. Even if you do, it seems like she just gets away. Unless you had, like, a Spore Bloom build. I bet a Spore Bloom build might be able to. If you're able to stun her... ...and then shotgun swap fast enough, you might be able to get her. But well, that can be tough to do. Starshot's definitely far superior. I feel like this weapon is pretty middle ground, too. You feel like it's a C tier. It's just okay. It's not bad, but there's just so many better options. Especially for ad clear, it just doesn't seem to be that good because it's way too hard to hit the enemies with the actual balls itself. Really what you're using it for is the mod regen in your other gun. What's up, Cladicalism? How's it going, bro? How's it going? I feel like Feylin will be the best test. Because Feylin's a very... I don't want to say he's very mobile, but he's pretty mobile. Gosh darn it, there's so many right now. I think I got both. Nope, see, I always miss one. It really only takes out one target. For something that's supposed to be so massive, it's a very single target uh, mod. Oh, okay. That's the third aberration today, by the way. Where is he? Oh, there you are. Somebody got Hexer. Hexer and minions is really crappy. This boss, or this aberration always gets Hexer. Almost every single time I fight him. I have no relics. So I can't beat this guy. That sucks.
I did not realize I had no relics. I've been chugging them, I guess. The problem with this aberration, too, is that he never... He doesn't move. Not really. I mean, he will a little bit, but... See, he's pretty far back. I think he's up on that hill. Playing Fortnite Lego? Cool. My brother played that. He liked it. Um, Where'd he go? Where did he go? I think he disappeared. I think he's just gone. I'm trying to figure out where my relics went. Oh, uh, did I not rest? I don't think I rested at the last checkpoint. That has to be what it is. That aberration, every single time he shows up, always has minions, and he's always so easy to just get shock on you. It's crazy. New sub? Awesome. Glad you're here. As an alternate kill reward, the affiliate just doesn't seem good enough. It's average, in my opinion. I agree. I think that the corrupted version of it is very, very similar. Not necessarily in how it works, but in how it performs. Both of them are about the same. They just don't do hardly anything different. Doesn't even do that much damage. Like, Corrupted Meridian beats this all day. You've not been double... Double hitting lately. I don't know why. It might do more damage if you land it directly. As soon as I said she hasn't been doing it, she did it. What a punk. The weird thing is, is that at this point, it is just usable as a mod. Like, you don't even need a secondary gun. It seems to regen itself as long as you hit the enemy. Even one enemy. Because it hits itself so many times. Glad that's over. Ever seen this game before? It's a pretty good, uh, pretty fun game. You don't have gauntlets on, and the reason behind it? Uh, yes. I have on... The bandit gloves, actually. So the reason for this is Crimson Guard armor is one of the more fashionable sets in the game. But the problem is, if you wear the full set, it is heavy. Which, nobody likes that. So if you just wear the bandit gloves, you're just under the heavy. You get a medium dodge. And you get to use the cool fashion. So I always equip that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what I always do with that one. Uh, I usually, if I want to run Challenger, I won't even run this set. I'll just run Bruiser because, you know, I mean, that's better armor anyway. So this is just some of the best fashion that I can get while also having decent defense. Gosh darn these hallways. It's a very tough build to use like this. I 
I would like to see a comparison between this mod and the original guns mod to see which is actually better. Just can't hit the enemy. It keeps hitting objects. Okay, that got me and them. Can the red orb damage you? Usually, yes. Um, I have on the... Kinship trait. So that it doesn't deal hardly any damage to me. But yes, it will damage me. Watch. See, I took some, some damage. The kinship trait is saving me. But if you don't have that trait on, it will instantly kill you. Cool, I guess. I mean, it's a pretty cool effect. Kind of hit behind walls ish, maybe. Just a little bit. If we get Sunken Witch, I'd be eager to try it against her. If we get the. Uh. Wendell? That might actually be a good fight, weirdly enough. I think we might get Gwendol. We'll see, though. Oh, it also moves. I forgot about this. Okay, so this mod is kind of cool. Uh, there is one unique benefit to it, and that it will move enemies. Sometimes. It has a lot of impact. Right there. So I can kind of get enemies away from me. But often it's very inconsistent. Sometimes pulls them onto you, which you don't really want. That is not something you really want. If you get Bruin, I will be in trouble. Okay, Cotton's killed. Alright, that's fine. Like I said, I don't really want Cotton's kill, but it, it'll work. Probably better than Sunken Witch. She would have been a pain in the butt. Just get rid of all that so I could see. <laughs> that was a massive explosion for no reason. One of the most ineffective builds of all time for this area. And I'm going to run it anyway. See right there, it moved him pretty far away. I feel like its damage is somewhat inconsistent. Maybe it's range-wise? Like, sometimes it doesn't even feel like I have on amplitude. <laughs> Crash your game for sure? That's funny. All the fire effect. My question is, if you don't shoot the orbs, does it have less range? And then if you do shoot the orbs, does it have more range? Because that's kind of what it seems like to me. I might need to read the description again, because I don't- I haven't checked it in a while. The heck out the way. Seems like that could be the case. I think this is a dead end. Nope. It definitely seems to hit more often if I hit it right there. Interesting. I think we could test it pretty well in the boss. Hitting it is a bigger explosion, does more damage? Okay, that's what I figured. I think still the weird thing is that it's its main use is going to be just regening other mods. It doesn't do a near as good a job as it used to. Obviously because of the Stone of Malevolence nerf, but... 
You actually might be able to throw on Stone Noble Levelance and get the same effect out of it, as long as you run feedback. Yeah, definitely, because you can tell when I don't shoot it, it just doesn't really have the same effect. What is with the aberrations today? Do I feel like I'm in the event? Are we serious? Cubes can hit you from there? That's nuts. I got a plan. You ready? I don't think the Magister can get up here. So unless cubes can hit me, which of course cubes can, because it's straight up overpowered. I don't know why cubes is in the game. <laughs> I should have known. I should have darn known it. Why is cubes in the game? Can we uh, can we answer that question? Just straight up broken ability that these random aberrations can get. It's awesome. Has to be the most unbalanced enemy ability in the entire game. He said fair and balanced. You're right, you're right. Skill issue. Skill issue, guys. Skill issue. <laughs> the giant wall coming towards me that does all my health. It's a skill issue. I'll, I'll be sure to... Make sure the devs know it's a legit... It's a legit fix. I like it. I'm just not good enough. I need to keep, get good, man. Makes it worse uh, that your cubes don't even come close. No, you know, the worst thing is that I'm totally above the enemy and somehow still he got me because he's a punk. I'm not liking this gun very much. The thing is, Starshot instantly kills whatever, right? This kind of tickles them a little bit. I mean, it does a lot of fire damage. These guys are very, very resistant to fire damage. So that is making a huge... This one does more blasts as well as fire damage. That probably is the major difference, but... Doesn't feel quite right. Love the content. Keep it up, bro. Thanks for the five dollar donation, man. Glad to hear it, dude. Will do. Funny that the um, the dog class. If you think about this logically, right? The dog class gives you the ability to take a giant nuke to the face and just go, eh. Like, what about a dog <laughs> has that ability? It just doesn't make anything. Hey, it's because of the class itself. I get that, but it's like, uh, what about a dog is going to give that to you? Round two. I see. Must have been dead, Nate. Yeah. It's one of the hardest aberrations in the game, and I got him twice in a row. This is seriously one of the hardest aberrations in the game. Because he randomly spits and insta-kills you. And I keep getting it. What is the problem? Dude, stop showing this guy up. It's an insta-kill. Yeah, I don't think I have on... Uh... I do have on Fortify. Yeah, it just does more damage than almost anything in the game. It does an incredible amount of damage. It doesn't help that I have my mod thing on, so I actually was taking more too. You know what? I'm I'm this close. You know what? I am I'm doing it. I'm putting on the OP build. I'm sick of this dungeon, dude. They they did it to me. They angered me. I'm done. Everybody's gonna die now. 
been disrespected twice in a row by the same stupid enemy. Crazy. I've never even seen that many aberrations. Let alone two in a row. Nuts. I was playing this, I remember scrubbing it up real hard with Medic and Summoner. Pretty cool. Yeah, Medic and Summoner is very, very fun. You can do a lot of unique things. I mean, Root Doctor is obviously the, the more... The most tanky version of it, but you can do all kinds of stuff like buff your summons to heal you and kind of just use them as your main source of damage. It's pretty cool. Pull out the freaking laser sword. I tried not to use it, but they brought it up. Literally, it was funny that it was the same aberration twice in a row, too. It wasn't a different aberration. It was the same guy. The same exact guy. Let's see if we get him again. If we do, it's not good, because I can't corrode him. He's immune to corrosion. With the Hephali in his primary for this book? I mean, I could. I actually could. We can see if it does anything. Pretty sure the aberration show up in the same spot both times, too. I can't confirm that, but I'm like 80% sure. If he shows up for a third time, I'm going to be flabbergasted, dude. There's no way. It's taking forever to regen that with that Archon. Oh, I got it back. Okay, let's see what it does. I don't think I have kinship, though. That is a major issue. Eh? Oh, they're immune to fire, so it doesn't even matter. That was it, guys. I was at the end of the dungeon both times. That's not aberration. That's why he's spawning in. And he's the, um... He's the elite for this area, so they spawned in that aberration instead. That has to be it. Out of here, man. All right, what build were we running with that? It was the that nation trigger burn destroyer. No, not that one. That one might be better though. Now that I think about it, does it, it crits pretty well, doesn't it? Let's try this one. We, we used the other one for a little bit. Or no, this is the. No, that's not the only one. This one. Yeah, because I could throw on Blasting. Yeah, this might be the same build. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. But I do know I need just equip Feedback and the Harmonizer on the other gun. We'll do Star Shot again just because it actually works. You could run a lot of things, though. Yeah, he's Gandalfing you at the exit for sure, dude. That was crazy. That was the weirdest experience of this. This dungeon is pretty hard in general, though. I think it's pretty tough. Yeah. Boss really loves to hug this corner, and I'm not sure why.
Also, since I started running this build, all of the bosses are getting hardy. Cool. Oh, it's out of bullets. That's another downside of this gun. It uses the bullets so you can run out of ammo. It didn't even do it that time. With the way mod energy is set up now, Corrupted Meridian is just so much better. It's more consistent, easier to use, and deals more damage. So I would say... I actually might move this down to D. This this might be a D tier weapon. It's pretty bad. It is, it's pretty bad. What about regular Aphelion, though? Is there any advantage to running regular Aphelion over this? That's the real question. I feel like both of them are really bad. <laughs> Obviously, Cube Gun is the lowest, so it can't get any worse than that. Uh, I don't like the looks of this. That's what a complete worthless weapon looks like, so we know we can get up from there. This thing actually at least does something, so it's not that bad. They even have a blasting cap. I, just, I don't get it. It might do pretty good against Phelan, though. He can be kind of weird against blast damage. Sometimes he's really easy to deal with. Mainly because it, it deals a ton of damage instantly, and his last phase is instant burst damage you need to do. I lost it. Every time they do that move right there, I lose it. I think I know where it's at, but I have no idea. The one card folds on top of the other. You know, I somehow always get it. I have the best luck with this. I mean, I guess it's a 50-50 chance, so not too bad. Maybe you should check out that mural again. Well, we can do side boss. What's side boss going to be? Bruin would be tough. Bruin would be very, very tough. Red Prince would be very, very tough. And... Magister would actually be okay with this build, but I hate him, so he would be tough too. None of those sound like good options. Let's see. Palace Courtyard. I think my phone died. Yeah, my phone died. Maybe Helix would be better. I mean, Helix would actually be pretty good for this fight because of the orbs. But I think at one point we used Helix and we said that it was kind of weird in this fight too. I don't remember. It's been a bit since I uh, tried that one weird build we were doing. I can't even remember what we were running with that. Just got to get to the door or figure it out. My favorite video game of all time is uh, Halo Reach. Well, this isn't looking good. Both in the matchmaking and in the uh, campaign. Gameplay. Fun stuff. They're very aggressive. I think that's why they're very difficult as well. It's just they, they're constantly moving towards you. And you, the only way to avoid their attacks is to get away from them. Which makes it very hard to avoid their, you know, 
attacks and start pressing you constantly. It's also not really easy to use because of stuff like this, you know. Kind of a wacky mod more than anything else. Yeah, I know a lot of people like Red Dead 2. I never played it, though. I never played Payday 2, either. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people like Red Dead 2. My uncle plays Red Dead 2. The thing is, it crits quite a bit, but the amount of crit that it does is only 700, which is really not a lot, all things considered. 785 is the max I've seen. What's up, attentional? Come on, guys. Let's hope for a good one. Red Prince. I'd be fine with. I feel like I asked for that. I feel like I asked for that. We got Magister. What did I do to deserve this? I truly don't know. I'm gonna go this way. I feel like this is the shortcut. Okay, Helldiver's gonna download tonight. Not sure about content for it yet, but at least I can play it. If you join my Discord, send me a DM. I can uh, try and play with you. I don't know when I'll be off, but I'm, I may be up playing later tonight. We'll see. This is much more fun with friends. The truth. It's a very fun game. It's also a live service game, so there's actually quite a bit to make content on for. Which is cool. See what I mean though? Like, it has potential for crit, and then you use it, and you realize that they dumbed down the crit modifier for it, so it's just worse. Which kind of makes sense, because it would be really insane if it had a ton of crit. Like, really insane. Okay, this is it. I think I took the long way. I'm not sure yet. This dungeon is always... There's only two paths in this dungeon. And then if you go the wrong way, it takes twice as long. Opinion on the Outward 2 trailer? It looks amazing. It looks like everything we want and more. Very excited to get some new areas because it, it's basically Outward gameplay, but with more stuff, new stuff, and new areas. And it's literally all I want. So. What's up, Chica? Yeah, dude. What's going on? I've had an aberration every few minutes. Like every dungeon. This is kind of crazy. I mean, I don't mind. Necessarily. I kind of mind. A little bit.
pushes me back more than the boss. But yeah, the trailer was amazing. It looked awesome. Lots of cool stuff to be excited for. Yeah, I hit 10 shards and the game's like, here's more that you can't use. I've gotten so much today that I probably could actually almost have another corrupted weapon by now. You know, if I needed one. Kind of weird, huh? Kind of weird. I heard him. Where is he at? No way he's around this corner. Remember earlier when I got killed here? Yeah. So kind of mad about that. Alright, well, here's Magister with explosions. This should be good, but I, I don't know. This fight's 50-50. You never know with the good old green behemoth. The acidic monster of death. I don't know. Nightmarish ghoul of doom. Pretty good. I was like, I hope that hits, because otherwise I'm in trouble. The whole gimmick of you having to activate it, it just... It makes it not hit at the time. It's not really what you want. Because you got to dodge and attack. It's only benefit is unlimited modern. Energy. The gimmick gets old fast. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it it's a gimmick weapon, and it, I agree, it gets old pretty fast. I would agree with that statement. It's it just gets a little old. It's not that it's even boring or anything. It's just that there's some easier options to use and this one uh it doesn't it doesn't quite hit that itch you have of an explosive massive power build where versus corrupted meridian where when you hit something it just goes boom and just nails it so hard. It gets those nice cluster bomb explosions. Feels really, really solid. They kind of fit with the theme of Shahala, but really, other than that, both of these Aphelian weapons just don't don't really do it for me. I think both of them have too little ammo to be used as guns. They they needed way more ammo, and. As mods, obviously they have that, wh however much mod potential you like out of it.
I would have rather used them as guns. I mean, if we take a look at the stats, it's got a 5% crit chance, right? That sounds okay. If you look at the regular Aphelion, it has a 10% crit chance. This one needed a 10% crit chance as well, and they dumbed it down. And gave it one less ammo. It's a very odd choice what they did with that one. So I was trying to use ENC with it. You have to wait five seconds for it. Come off cooldown. I guess that makes sense, yeah. Oh boy, let's see how this goes. Tell us. <laughs> This actually does move him, which is interesting. Yeah, make it makes it pretty good for his fight overall. It'll really mess with his movement. Interesting. <laughs> Just all of a sudden broke there. I couldn't see. I got stud locked by his uh, animation. I couldn't see. Also, that sword, bad RNG in that sword. It's one in a really bad location. It just kind of sucks. I, I've been trying to justify this whole time. It just kind of sucks. It has some interesting spread and uses, but it just... Do something else, I think. Someone's just getting away, man. Thing is, it does move him, but doesn't really move him to your benefit. 
As in, him moving in general just doesn't really do anything for you. I got a really good shot off there. That was nice. That's very weird damage. Basically, if you have to you have to shoot it. If you don't shoot it, it just doesn't work. But if you do shoot it, it can do massive damage. It's interesting. Uh, I dare say it's kind of fun because you have to try and figure out what angle to throw it to get the most damage, but at the same time, it's a little too much effort. I don't know. I'd probably go D tier with that one. It feels pretty bad. Overall. Alright, we used the Corrupted Merciless once. I don't. We don't really need to use that much more. There's not really anything you can use that on. Corrupted Deceit actually was really good. That might end up in S tier now. It's really good. Um, we ran this one. We ran this one as well. So I think the only thing we have left is Corrupted Rune Pistol. What have we not fought? We fought pretty much all of the side bosses today. A good weak spot boss would be pretty nice right about now. We've got a lot of Legion. Not even necessarily. Alright, we'll do a rune pistol build, I guess. We'll try it on... I'm not sure. One true king? It's pretty big. I need a big weak spot. That's the thing. I need a pretty big weak spot. Our two! Heck yeah, soup! Excited is awesome, dude. It's awesome. Very excited as well. You shot one of your orbs as it was in front of you. Yeah, it's a little goofy. If I do Corruptor, I guarantee myself a weak spot. We could do Talratha second phase. Or alt kill. Ah, you're right. Corruptor could be a good idea for that. Because of the birds. Good point. Good point. I should do my best. Did I say to do that? I had this issue today. This is going to sound real weird. Because I, it, it, it's just kind of a weird thing to do. But I never have this issue, but lately today, every time I take my hands off my keyboard and I put them back, I keep putting them on E, F, and S instead of W, A, and D. I don't know why I'm doing it. It happens every time. I'm like, why am I not moving? Uh, I don't know. I moved my keyboard slightly, so it's slightly to the left, and it's just throwing me off just the slightest bit. Like I said, gotta sound weird, but I've been doing it. Actually, you know what? We can run Corrupted Rune Pistol on anything. It's just a damage increase, so should be fine. Then we get to the boss, we'll do... Depending on what boss we get, we'll do the extra weak spot damage from, I think, Hunter and probably Gunslinger. We could try Challenger, but it doesn't really... I, I think Gunslinger would be better. Usually it does feel better for that. Yeah. 
I've only fought the Corruptor once today. I think we fought Ravager twice. Oh, you know what we'll do after this? We'll take a look at the wiki, and we can check what items I do and do not have. Here they come. Maybe I can chase one or two down. At least so I know. I'm pretty sure I have all the DLC stuff. I worked pretty hard to get all of that pretty early on. Hour 2 is 50 years from the first one, right? So most of the NPCs there are either ordered it. Yes, it is 50 years from the first one. Um, Chica, you weren't here when I, I talked about that stuff. Okay, so GM did a, a live stream where he talked about some stuff. And I learned a lot of cool information. All right. Number one. The entire game will be 100% uh, uh, voiced this time. Howard one was... Remember how they didn't have all the voices? It, people didn't like that? Well, they're fully voice acting this one. All the stories are going to be more fleshed out, which is really cool. The game takes place in Tremontaine, Haboob. The other one... That is up there that's not the pirate town. And then one other one place that's not on the RI map. So all three are on the top of the map other than one, which is just off. Which is pretty cool. Dave Guardian has a missing tab. Might be less painful than checking with me. Or wiki. That could be. True. And what were some of the other ones? I wrote I wrote them all down. There's like a whole bunch of information he gave out. Some cool stuff though. Oh, uh, the Immaculates from the first game. He stated very clearly that they will now be trying to integrate themselves into human society. So we could see regular Immaculates wandering around towns and stuff. Which is kind of crazy. Rap music. That, that, that can't be. Is here. Dude, if this is, it's gonna be the chantry, isn't it? I mean, let me look at it. See if I missed anything that I was gonna tell you. Oh, there's no mounts, but there are uh, mules. The the mounts that is in the video. It's not actually a mount. It's a mule, which I thought was awesome. You can carry more stuff, which is super cool. I've been advocating for that since I started my channel. <laughs> I have a lot of items, but I can't get the Nightweaver's Grudge to save my life. Any tips? Uh, yes. You might already know them, but yes, Nightweaver is very difficult to get. The ideal way to do it, especially if you have the DLC. If you don't have the DLC, you could start with either, but I would recommend starting with Lawsom. Roll your world to make sure you get Nightweaver. Because there's three different rolls of Lawsom. It's going to be way too difficult to randomly get that. Beat. I think beat everything up to the Labyrinth. And then in the Labyrinth, you want to finish that up and go to Yasha. And then you want to look for the dungeon. Try and find the dungeon for the key. And if it's not there, then you reset. That way you guarantee yourself at least the Nightweaver. And then the dungeon itself is the only thing you're looking for. I think that's the best way to do it. I don't know how else you would do it. Is that 75 seconds? What the heck? Look at this. 75 seconds on my status. Timekeepers plus that shouldn't be that much. Wish we had an interaction with the friendly Immaculate from the first game. Yeah, but I think he's dead. I think he was the Dreamer Immaculate from the Unique Arena. It 
It would be cool if he had to come back, but I, I don't think they will because I think he's probably dead. Unless it's like not canon or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> canon. For some reason the elite boss who drops the key won't spawn. It's a specific dungeon. If you get that dungeon, it's guaranteed to be there. I think. Like, 80% sure? I, I don't know. I haven't done it in a while. I'd have to check the wiki real quick to see. I don't I don't remember what elite you need to kill him. Yeah, I think you just find it in the Levent. I believe. A transmog and remnant? I agree. I agree. Transmog is one of these things that feels like could belong in any game, and it's just not in most games. Isn't that weird? Give me the Dreamer Halberd, one of my favorites in the game. I mean, you know it's my number one, dude. You know. It's my number one. I just die and then I can make the build, I guess. Yep, you know it's my number one weapon in the game. I think it's by far the easiest way to beat the game. Ritual's Miasma max cooldown 9 seconds is very fun. The true end game of every game is fashion. Facts. Absolute facts, my guy. Oh, Fetid is really good here. Feel like the Outriders transmog, not like Destiny 2. Yeah, I I never I hated Destiny 2's transmog system. I don't know why. I mean, it works, but it just it's very annoying. Very very annoying. I don't remember Outward Outriders transmog system though. I didn't play that game after the disastrous launch. I know they did a lot to it to fix it, but I did not play it after the disastrous launch that it had. I don't even know if it had transmog when it first came out. I can't remember. You just unlocked everything for transmog once you unlocked it. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's the way to do it for sure. Of course, you got party.
Ammo box. Did not. I, I heard it. It came from the left side. That's the problem. That attack came from the left. The sound came from the left side, but then the attack came from the right. Really threw me off. Usually like bullet weaver, but I don't know if that was a good one here. This gun is very much a a weak spot gun. It does not perform really at all unless you hit weak spots. What's up, Billy Bob? Hour two, heck yeah! Do you mind doing a hunter's spear build, or could you just use the world's edge build you run and swap out melee weapon? Yeah, I can do that. Yep, you could do that. Start playing Remnant two when the first DLC came out. I haven't stopped since. Just loving the game. I wish I played the first one. First one is worth a go. The frustrating thing is that uh, this is one of these games where the sequel is not a bad game. It is a very, very good game. Or the, not the sequel. The first game is a very, very good game. But it is worse in every way to the sequel. Which is a good thing considering it is a good game. It's just that they improved on almost every aspect from the first game. So, if you go back and try and play the first one, you'll notice that you miss a lot of the quality of life stuff that's in in the sequel. If you've never played it, though, I highly recommend it. There's some very cool bosses and some fun moments. Back when it first came out, me and my brother grinded the heck out of that game. Had a lot of fun. Did that? Did my melee not proc the energized neck oil? It didn't look like it did. Weird. This thing does, like, no acid damage. I mean, it looks like only the ranged ones do anyway. Charge melee? Oh, I gotta charge it. I see. So, yeah, only the throne does. Interesting, because I don't think the Huntress throws the spear at you. Hmm. It definitely feels a lot better. I don't even think I have attack speed. That's the thing. Before, if you didn't have attack speed, it was literally unusable.
Should do massive leak spot damage. They start uh, from the ashes, and I get what you mean. Just can't stop playing Remnant 2. Very good game. Uh, it's definitely one of the favorites I've ever played. They did a lot of things that just make this game very, very fun. It's kind of how I feel about Helldivers 2 as well. It's that there's not really... Kind of both games, you're not really playing for the story. There, there really isn't a story in, in that sense. You're not really particularly playing it for any reason other than the fact that you could just mess with a bunch of different weird stuff. Just a bunch of different weird stuff. Try new things all the time. Basically, both games, every time you hop in the game, you could do something different. Up to a point, obviously. But you could do something different. And that's why it's so fun. When you hop in that day, you really don't know what you're getting yourself into. Over 315 hours in Remnant 2, so addicting. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. How many do I have? I can check Steam after this and double check. I think I have 850-ish. Both uh, games are examples of great gameplay loops with a strong lore of story that makes it fun to play. Yes, exactly. It's all about the gameplay, man. All about the gameplay. I'll be honest, for me, that's how Dragon's Dogma 2 was as well. Is Dragon's Dogma 2 has a cool story, but in reality... I feel like the way most people played it, the story doesn't mean much, really, other than... What the heck is happening to my heart? Once you once you play through the game one time, you go, oh, the story really didn't matter that much. It was all about killing big monsters and having a good time doing it. Outward, on the other hand, which is the first game I covered, that one is heavily, heavily story oriented. Yeah, without the story, that game means much less. But in all of the games that I've covered on my channel, gameplay is king. If the, the gameplay is always extremely fun, no matter what you do, you can at least customize the combat system to your liking and really just delve into it quite a bit. That's why I don't like AAA games that much anymore. I mean, uh, Souls games, I don't even know. I don't think they're AAA. I think they're AA. All Souls games I like quite a bit. Uh, I don't ever cover hardly any of them, but I, I love the Souls games. They're fantastic. Most AAA games just... They're, they're too bare bones in terms of the gameplay. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter quite as much. Okay, this is it. Now I'm running the face. Remnant 2 is more forgiving. Started playing Remnant 1 and I can't even complete the first world. Just unforgiving and hard. Remnant from the Ashes is definitely harder. Uh, I would 100% agree with that. Definitely. Especially bosses. Uh, trying to complete Apocalypse on that game is incredibly difficult. In fact, most Apocalypse runs require that you have... I wouldn't say require, but most people who beat Apocalypse in that game have every potion in the game active at the same time or at least as many as you can get it's it really is the truth it's a very tough game and due to the focus on having more ads than anything else it can be very very difficult to just deal with stuff sometimes no idea what i want here um I guess I could keep it the same. I have Dragon's Dogma 2 pre-ordered, and I have a feeling it'll take over my uh, time. But again, I didn't play the first one either. Yeah, first one is... 
is literally just it's the gameplay. Like this the story and the quests, they're okay. It's not like they're bad. It's just that the gameplay is so unbelievably good, that's all you care about. That's all you care about. Pretty good about dodging that lately. No. Did I just do that? That is... <laughs> kind of funny, actually. <laughs> ah, I rolled right off the edge, dude. I thought I had more room. Ugh. Whoops. <laughs> I thought I had more room. I clearly did not. Head that to the blooper reel? Yeah. The whoops. You're a jerk for that, bro. And he knows it, too. I didn't realize that I have the mod active, so all that was a waste. What's up, bro? Doesn't do quite enough damage for me to eliminate the uh, boss quick enough, but. I mean, sidearms really aren't supposed to be your main weapon, but... I hate these freaking butterflies, dude. So stupid. There's way too many of them, this thing. There's so many of them, dude.
That was a lot harder than I originally thought it was going to be. Just imagine if that was hardcore. That'd be such a frustrating hardcore death. I I'm not going to lie, that would be a very frustrating hardcore death. I'd be very irritated. Those games of story is there, but really more in the background. You can choose whether or not to pay attention to it. Yeah, again, gameplay is gameplay is and always will be king. Always will be. All you gotta do is have good gameplay. People will at least play it and enjoy it. Alright, well. We need one more boss. Let's hope we get Mother Mind, because that's the only one we'll be able to reliably get any damage on. The Huntress Spear is fine. It just does way lower damage than World's Edge. If I get... Actually, if I get Mother Mind, I might test the Spear. The Spear would be pretty decent for Mother Mind. It has a lot of weak spot damage. You could actually be a pretty nasty... Invader spear build with that. Maybe I'll try it now that the spear got fixed. It could do some massive damage, I know that much. Alright, where are we going this time? The right side? Dang it, it's the not the map button. The weird thing is, is I really do think that Challenger World Edge melee combat might be some of the most fun combat in this game. Most fun combat. The best combat. Not all the time. There's some really good stuff, but it is often some of the most fun I have. Just swinging a big sword. Who knew? Found out a ring today, or found out today that there's a ring that doubles all damage. Uh, there's a ring that doubles all status damage. Yes. Well, no. Well, let me think. Not necessarily the case either. There's a ring that doubles your last use status damage. And there is a ring that doubles all damage. Ring that doubles all damage. Talk about Burn of Destroyer at 15% all damage? I don't know of a ring that doubles all damage. It's a freaking stupid shrewd again. I hate this guy. I hate him so much. You know what I'll do? I'll use a spear. I'm that kind of a guy. Why is his damage so low? It irritates me. It does throw a lot faster, though. A lot faster. That was all damage you take. Mm. I don't know that one either. I probably do, but I'm not thinking of it. Get wrecked. That is Sparkfire. Sparkfire is always a blast. It will never not be fun. End of story. Oh, yeah. Warren Admiral's ring. Forgot about that. I 
I beat the game wearing that, and it was one of the worst runs I ever had. I had a two-hour fight against the Red Prince. Not a good time. Really is a run sometimes, you know? Like, it, the build depends on a lot. Like, a weird build can really mess you up and things like that. But sometimes it's just the run. You get a weird boss, he's got a weird fix, you're not ready for him, it just... Very interesting to see that. With all my playthroughs through the game, it's just like, every once in a while you hit that one boss with the build you're using just doesn't feel quite right. Doesn't feel quite right. That was weird. Did anyone else see that? I was holding my gun in my hand, unable to use it. Its animation is still slower than Krellax. That's the crazy thing. And it, it just don't work as well, dude. Ah, it does such crazy weak spot damage, though. I'm telling you, if we had Mother Mind, this would have been an awesome test, but. Nope. Ah, it instantly blows them all up. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, come on. I thought he was dead. He did die. Is it going to count? Yes, it counted. That's like, uh, it's not the best way to beat a boss, but I did beat him. I'm going to count it. Am I proud of that? Maybe not. Maybe not proud of that. But it's the win that counts. That's, that's really all that counts. All right, how many corrupted weapons are there? Let's count. We used all of them today. One, two, three, four, five. There are five main hand corrupted weapons. And one, two, three, four, five. So there's five and five, which is ten. I can do math. Number ten. Cube gun. This thing is the worst gun in the game. It is truly garbage. Absolutely horrible. Number nine. I'm going to go ahead and go with the Corrupted Aphelion. It's not great. It's just not great. Doesn't feel that good. Number eight. I'm going to go with Corrupted Merciless. Also, I, it's a great weapon. It's just very situational. It only works in certain cases. And that's when a boss has a weak spot. And even then, some bosses are just so hard to keep hitting it over and over. It don't work that well. So, number eight is going to Corrupt and Merciless. Number seven is going to, weirdly enough, I'm going to, people are not going to like this one. Corrupted Nebula. I don't think it's that good. I don't think it's that good. Personally. It is fine. Everything this can do, Sorrow does better. And this only works on weak spots, which is four bosses that it feels great against. Just doesn't feel that good. I mean, it's insanely powerful, but... Nah. What was that, seven? I'm gonna lose track here. Number six, I'm gonna go with... 
uh, Corrupted Arbalist. It's not bad. It's actually very, very good. It's just, it lacks a little bit of power, and it makes up for that in terms of its ability to track the enemies really, really well and have multiple bullets, so you could just keep doing that. And then the mod is actually quite good at giving you multiple explosions in a row. Bandit on it is really, really nice. Came uh, across a mini boss with a modifier clone. Got beat up by myself. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. That was rough. So that'd be number six for me, I think. It's not a bad one. It's still pretty good. It's probably going to be about B tier, actually. Uh, everything up. Is, there's a lot of really high tier weapons here. After that, I'm going to go with uh, Corrupted Rune Pistol for number five. It's not bad in any way. It's A tier. It's very, very good. It's a powerful mod, but the majority of the time that you're using this gun, you're not using it for its damage. You are using it for the damage buff and then just letting it sit there. It does do really good damage on its own, but I think there's better options for just some support and things like that. Very good, but uh, it gets beat out, I think. Number four, I think, is what we're at. Maybe. If I end up at number one and there's nothing left. Number four for me is going to go with Corrupted Deceit. It is an S-tier weapon. I'm going to move it down to A-tier, though. Because it's annoying as crap. The mod does not work on certain bosses. I'm going to go with A-tier. It is a really, really good weapon. It is the Deceit we now have that we used to have. And quite a bit faster. Very high weak spot damage. It's incredibly good. But that mod is so inconvenient sometimes. I mean, it's a lot better now. They fixed quite a bit of its issues. But it's just not quite as good as the original's Deceit loop build. It was way better. So, still great though. Number three. Number three for me is going to probably be... It's just tough. These, all three of these ones are S tier. Which one's what? It's between Corrupted Sorrow, Corrupted Meridian, and Corrupted Savior. That's really what it's between. I'm going to go with, I think, one of these two. I'm going to say Corrupted Meridian. It's the best explosive option we have. Definitely. It's the best explosive option we have. Mod is very, very easy to regen with feedback. Um, it's mod has an insane range with amplitude. It's very, very good. And it's fun. It has this little cluster effect. It feels fun to use. It sounds good. I like it quite a bit. I like it quite a bit. And it's basically just a way better version of Meridian. So I would go with number three for that one. Number two, I would give that to Corrupted Savior. Um, there's only one way to use this gun to make it insanely good, and that's just max out crit for it, which you can do with other weapons, so it can get beat out potentially, but it is insanely fun, and with the way I use it, it's got such a fast reload that it just feels really, really good. Really, really good. And, I don't know, it's just nice to have this gun back from the first game. It's just so insanely powerful. You could just mow stuff down so easily. But this is another one that's going to suffer if you're not hitting weak spots. Not by much, but by a little bit. And then I think the most powerful corrupted weapon in the game, the number one, is Corrupted Sorrow. I, this thing is bonkers, dude. This thing is bonkers. It hits weak spot. As a mod. It hit weak spot as a mod. It makes no sense. It's way stronger than I thought. All you got to do is take off Gambler, run Zanias, and then you just aim up and just f nails them. I wonder if I can recreate it. It's just so good. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It feels kind of weird at first. Like, I was skeptical. I was like, man, eh, maybe Sorrow's better. But the more I've used it, the more I've tested on bosses, it just literally deals quarters of their health in one single hit quarters of their health and it still does good range damage if you pair it with hunter like we have here i can get a little bit let me see if i can do this
Yeah, there you go. All weak spot. Like, how crazy is that? 2,500 damage times 10. 2,000 damage times 10. And then with nothing boosted, it's 1,900. So with no buffs from our classes, it's still doing 19,000 damage. Is that not the most insane thing? Like, this is easily the best corrupted weapon. And it still does a thousand regular with the shots. It's incredibly powerful. And the mod regen is really, really fast. Very consistent. It's a mod that's actually quite easy to use. Not hard at all. I don't know, I love it. It's the number one by far. It's so easy. Like, Corrupted Savior is really good. That's why I was tossing up between them. But Corrupted Savior at least requires you to aim. You know? This is like, just point in the general area of the enemy. Hope you hit him and then just stick your face in the air and press the button. and just tracks the weak spot. It's crazy. I don't know. It's nuts. It is nuts. I am still extremely disappointed. What's weird is definitely the second batch that we got of Corrupted Weapons is way better than the first. Way better than the first. Because we have uh, Corrupted Nebula, insanely powerful. Game-breaking, almost. We've got Corrupted Cube Gun, which is terrible, so that's the exception. Corrupted Sorrow, which is amazing. Corrupted Arbalist, which is very usable and amazing. Corrupted Savior, which is very usable and amazing. This is really good. And then if we look at the previous ones, it's like Corrupted Deceit is really good, but it's annoying. Uh, Corrupted, this thing's awful. Corrupted Felion is awful. This is okay at best. At best, that's okay. Meridian is fantastic. What's weird is the first set of items we got, both of the handguns are the best. Actually, most of the Corrupted, out of all the Corrupted handguns, the, or Corrupted weapons, the handguns are better than most. They're very good. It just baffles me that the cube gun is better than the... Okay, let's take a look at this. The cube gun is actually just straight up better than the corrupted cube gun. If we look at the stats alone, the cube gun gets a 5% critical chance and and an 85% weak spot damage bonus. That sounds like it sucks because most weapons get really good weak spot bonus, right? But if you compare it to its brother, this one gets zero weak spot bonus because it can't even hit weak spots. And this one has infinite ammo. Both of them do, but... Shit, need more ammo. How am I out of ammo in an infinite ammo gun? You want to explain that to me? I'm going to go reset, I guess. That's funny. You switch guns when out of ammo, the cube gun doesn't regen its own ammo. That's funny. Uh, look at the overheat. The overheat is not bad, and all you got to do is you throw on this one mutator. This is it. You throw on one mutator, it fixes the overheat. Completely. You can shoot it for a long time and not overheat. And it's basically an SMG. Then you have a mod that's extremely powerful. Blocks projectiles, which is really good. You can shoot it out, deal damage. Large range. Very large range. Does excellent damage, right? A very soft... Not... Not amazing, but a very solid gun, right? You just got to get used to the whole don't shoot too far away. That's it. Then we go to its corrupted version with, mind you, the same exact mutator that we just had on the cube gun that made it very usable. And it becomes completely unusable. It overheats way too fast. The mod is kind of cool. Well, amplitude does make this bigger. Whoa. That's a lot bigger. It's a very, very cool gun. It just lacks a lot of damage. Because if you take away something's weak spot, it needs to be able to crit. And they didn't give it any crit. And this mod just doesn't benefit, doesn't benefit anything. I don't know. Very weird. It's easily one of the worst downgrades of anything. I thought corrupt. I thought the seat wasn't great, but then, no, this one's way terrible. Way terrible.
Aphelion are both on the same level, so it's like, yeah, whatever. All right, let's see what uh, what items I have. I can should I double check the wiki, or should I do guardian save? I could do either one. I'll have to I'll have to eventually do guardian save. I don't know if I want to do that right now. I just want to look at the wiki real quick, and I want to go through it and make sure I I because I, I know what items I do and don't have. We just briefly touch on it. Let's see if there's anything I don't notice. I think I have. Navigator's Pendant, I do not have. In order to get Navigator's Pendant, it can be found in a rood. The final boss is Talrotha. Walking to him before the fight, choose to live forever while wearing the rusted Navigator's Pendant. This way, you'll fight him in the metaphysical form, which is... You get rewarded with that Pendant. And then I have to go back and get the other Pendant. So that is one I'm missing. Because I had it at... I thought I had it at one point. Apparently I didn't. That should be it, though. Na Rusted Navigator's Pendant. I have every other necklace in the game. Because I eventually did get the core booster. That's what I'm thinking. Ring-wise, I don't know. I have to actually do save Guardian for rings. Because there's so many rings, dude. <laughs> There's an insane number of rings. It's nutty, bro. I do have all the DLC rings, though. I know for a fact. Except for... Wait a minute. Maybe I'm missing this one. Lighthouse Keeper's Ring. Uh, nope, I have that one. Okay. I've never used that. I didn't even know that was a thing. Did I play Remnant 2? Yeah, definitely. It's a great game. I would highly recommend it. So that is all of the DLC ones, then. And all of the base ones I should have as well. Actually, Blackout Ring I might not have. Yeah, I don't think I have this one. Yeah, this was the other one from Narud that I didn't get. This is a ring that can be found from the Broken Cable event in Narud. After dealing 20% of weapons, total magazine base damage increase reload speed by 3%. Stacks five times. Not very good, but I do need it. Like I said, just odds and ends items that are just... I would never use. I don't think I have Burden of the Warlock either. No, I do have Burden of the Warlock. Should have all the burden rings, actually. The frivolous band? I should have the frivolous band. Should. Let me check. Yep, right here. So I have that one. Oh, here we go. Ring of Retribution is another one I don't have. Like I said, I know him by picture. I, I can tell you if I don't have it or not. he be found in Lawson, feeding the Drea's anklet. At the Nightweaver's web. What is that? There's an anklet I need. And then I gotta give it to the night all the Nightweaver's web stuff. Like I said, I never did hardly any of those. I didn't care. I was like, that's that's not enjoyable. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm missing a total of three items. Two of them are gonna be a pain to get. No, Metal Driver I'm also missing. Found in the Vault of the Formless. Metal Driver. There's no chance I have this. L? Okay. I don't even know if I have any M's. Yes, I do not have the Metal Driver. It's a quest item. This is where you pick up the House of Lympha Glyph. Look at the lower vault wall. Vault of the what? Oh, I know what this is. This is the weird, uh... Where the rupture cannon spawns. Found in the second hidden passage. Hey, I had no idea that was a thing. So it looks like I'm missing three. Looking through the rest of the mirrors. See if I'm missing any. I'll hunt them down eventually. It's not that important. They're all pretty terrible, so. 
But yeah, so I'm missing a total of three items in the game, it looks like. What's up, design? That is what it seems. Well, we officially ranked all corrupted weapons. I can make that video now. Honestly, the results did not surprise me that much. I feel like they pretty much were uh, accurate to what I thought. How many hours do you have in the game? Let me check Steam. I think someone asked me that earlier. Total in this game? I have 822 hours. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I was headed up to 850. 822 hours in this game. Doing full runs will get you up there pretty quickly. Every full run I do is two to four hours. Well, three to four hours, basically. And I was doing a full run... I was doing five... Six full runs a week. When I was live streaming Remnant 2 every time. For about two months-ish. And so I racked up a ton of hours of doing that. Favorite Corrupted Weapon? Uh, it's definitely the Corrupted Sorrow. It's insanely good. Can roll a Nerud Adventure for at least three of those things. The two amulets and maybe one of the rings you said. Alright, see. Love your content builds. Glad to hear it, man. Yeah, I, I might take you up. If you end up finding one, Sorrow, I might take you up on that offer. If not, I can, uh, I can grind them out myself, too. I can grind them out myself, too. It's no worries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to have to be it for me today. That's eight hours, and I'm a little tired today. Woke up early, I guess. I don't know. So, I mean, that's going to have to be it for me, but uh, we'll probably play Helldivers on Tuesday uh, while I work on my tier list because the new... Does the new thing come out on Tuesday? No, today's Saturday. The new War Bond will come out soon, and I'll need to get on... I'll need to finish that up before Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out, so... I think uh, we'll probably play that Tuesday, check out the mechs some more, and then play the Warband on Thursday. So, that's the uh, the plan. Other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks for the donations, Dave. We had a couple of them. Appreciate it. You guys are epic. And, oh yeah, the Outward trailer. Fantastic. I'm working on my uh, overview of it. It's, it's freaking amazing. I'm very, very excited. The more I watch it, though, the more angry I get that I can't play it. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited to play it. Looks incredible. Definitely one of my uh, games I cannot wait for. Hey, you have a good night, Sorrow. Get you later, Jared. See you guys. Alrighty, that's it for me. Have a good night, everybody. Take care of yourselves. I'm out of here.